Are you doing like stainless inserts for slide to frame fit or anything like that? There or? was some proprietary stuff that you had to do. Okay. So we won't share that okay. because to be able to do it, but there was some there was some wizardry that had to, to okay. go in to make two pieces of rock fit. Fit and work with the pressures and the 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 amount of energy that's being imparted onto them without them shattering and was with them a, working repeatedly. Was that a rig set up for a first shot or was that a Oh human? yeah, that, that was done on a ransom rest. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So it, it was <laughs> like, happen? well, they, they come, they got down to it and they had it and everyone's behind a shield and they pull it and, oh, it, it worked and it's still there. And they do it again and they do it again and it, it, it kept shooting. They say, okay. And then after at a certain point, they go, that's enough. You well, know, well, the we're nice good. would be different if he was working there. At the oh, time. He would, oh, oh, yeah, listen, no, he, I wouldn't. Well, it, was, listen, it was, it was, a, it was a Mama didn't raid no bitch, son. I'd have been in that thing. Let me shoot that piece of Death Star, son. I, <laughs> it, was, it, was left, thing. it was a left and right. We would have made him dual wield it. Well, you wouldn't yeah. have had to made me. I'd have volunteered. Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Ah, uh, welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. Today's guest is a firearms photographer, sales and marketing guru, guys, head of VP sales, whatever. Like we're just guys. Yeah, 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 we're just, just guys. dudes, man. Yeah, we're just dudes who like guns. We are From, dudes, though. That that's our what well, is it pronouns? Mostly. Yeah. So you identify as I, dudes. I identify as dude. Okay. With that hat, you better. Jack Ingram, yeah. you like that? Yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. A lot of people, that's the other skull bandit, son. I know. Badass. Yeah, that, that hat's just <laughs> leaking manliness. It's yes. older than me. <laughs> I love it. The uh, He was actually conceived with his daddy wearing that hat. With his daddy wearing that hat. That's, that, that's, the, the, that's that, the lucky hat. Is, is that like over the top where, when the, the conceiving part happens? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You turn it around back. It was the back of an 87 Monte Carlo Aero Coupe. The <laughs> fact that y'all are, <laughs> fact that y'all are missing, you don't, you don't have to even do the deed wearing that hat. I bet she got pregnant just by looking just at it. Just by looking at it. As soon as he walked into the bar, oh, shit. Is that Jack Ingram? Six months pregnant. Yeah. I'm. Uh, so two companies, kind of the same, but different. Cabot custom guns. Yes. Alchemy custom weaponry. Right. Yep. And I, I nailed it. You did. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty hot. Uh, Nicely done, Josh. So for well, I mean, we'll probably get too drunk and forget. So give us the Instagrams. Give us the websites. Where can people find you all? Well, um, we got at. Alchemy 1911, and I have a personal Instagram that you know, nobody cares. No one wants to but see, but that's that. all right. You know, no, if you want to see him in short that. gym shorts and you know, that'd be old 1776 all, duck. That, that, is, that is that is 1776 duck. It's pretty fun. It got me my job, so you know, it's, I'm pretty happy about that. Go check it out. Yeah, and, and you then, put some car shit on there too. Oh yeah, well I'm obsessed with my car. So, and then what's it's Instagram it's for simple. Cabot? Cabot Guns, plural. Cabot Guns, Cabot Guns. We're Everywhere. simple people. We're simple people with simple yeah. needs. We just need Damascus steel 1911s and hot rods. Oh, yeah. Two. Those, and those throw some together. bourbon in there, and that's yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Covered all the bases. I just got to carry Nick home, you know. That's why I go to the gym, really, is just to be able to carry him home. That's why I moved up to an XL. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Well, we've been hanging out. It feels like we've been, like, doing this shit already for a couple hours. We've been looking at some cool shit, and we decided we had to start, like, recording because it was getting into a lot, yeah. a lot of oh, cool right, shit. Yeah. So we've got a lot to cover. I know we've all got a lot of questions and there's a lot of shit you want to tell us about. Before we get into the, the nitty gritty, tell us each about y'all's background. How the fuck did you get where you're at right now? Well, Nick, you go first, you know. No, you know what? Age before beauty. All right, well, fine. So I, I have a background in marketing in general. And uh, when I moved from California, which... Boo. Yeah, I know. Boo, California for gun culture. But it's amazing to see how... Oh, not gun culture, but gun laws. Gun culture really <laughs> is strong. In California, even though they have unbelievably restrictive laws out there, but guns, hot rods, really cool stuff. It really was Southern California. That's where it was. I mean, Armalite. Yeah. You know, in, in Costa Mesa, I lived the city over Newport Beach and then Irvine. And that's where Armalite was back in the day. But I uh, lived in California, sales and marketing background, and then moved to Texas and said, you know what? I don't want to work with a company that doesn't speak to me, that doesn't do things that I can't be myself. Because if if you know me, I'm pretty politically incorrect. So I was like, a gun company is a good place for me and started a marketing firm. And then literally Inst uh, Cabot Guns reached out to me through Instagram to my marketing firm's page and said, hey, can you help us with a little bit of stuff? 
This was in 2018, and one thing that led to another. And within six months, I was pretty much full time director of sales and marketing for him, going all out. And then uh, found this guy on Instagram, and things went a little more crazy. Hmm. Slid into his DMs and it was well, all well. It was the other way around. Yeah, there was there was some DM <laughs> sliding, but he was. I didn't he, have my pants on. Yeah. <laughs> you sure that was Instagram? That wasn't like Grinder or some other kind of like. You know, well, well, you know, you know. Popular, <laughs> <laughs> well, and now you. Well, no, nah, yeah. I, now me. How do I? Yeah. Well, I'm a whole lot less professional. I've also not been alive as long as Nick. Uh, so I'm only 25. I just graduated uh, college at Illinois University, uh, ever in Hickory, North Carolina. And uh, I originally Hickory. Oh yeah, Hickory Motor Speedway. Great uh, birthplace of NASCAR stars is what we what we call it there. But originally, when I was growing up, you know, my dad uh, he owns a t-shirt shop, and I grew up. Uh, his main thing was racing t-shirts. So I grew up at short tracks. Grew up at dirt tracks and uh, loved racing. My dad was a pit crewman back in the 80s. Um, he was also, you know, doing... At that time, you could have a regular job mm. and pit crew. It wasn't... You know, there weren't engineers and there weren't, you know, these people like they have now. You know, you kind of did... You, if you had a full-time pit crew, you were a serious driver, you know. And so, he was a pit crewman and I always grew up... I grew up with NASCAR when I was a, when I was younger and kind of in, in high school. I worked on a little uh, short track team and I thought, man, I love racing i love nascar i wanted to be a pit crewman and then i kind of found out that that's like a collegiate sport you know they take a lot of collegiate athletes and i'm obviously not a collegiate athlete so <laughs> i kind of switched in there and i didn't really know what i was doing and i've always liked guns but you know i really didn't come from a gun household i mean they weren't anti-gun by any means you know they just you know we live where we live you know crime rate is so low i mean you, you might use them for hunting but really up until recently carrying a gun for self-defense really wasn't something people thought about just because it's, you know, a small town mm -hmm. deal. And, uh, went to college and, you know, I really didn't know what I was going to do. And, and when I got old enough to buy guns, <laughs> which was only a few years ago, uh, <laughs> I started buying guns and I really liked them. I've always enjoyed them. The first gun I ever fired was a Colt, uh, 1991 A1, um, which at the time I thought, man, there's no gun better than that. Uh, that was a little not true. And uh, there, there are many guns better than that. But, uh, you know, I, I love the gun, love the platform. Uh, I've kind of fell in love with it. Started, I really actually started, my Instagram wasn't like a, a planned thing. You know, I just kind of took pictures of guns and made very, very, very politically incorrect captions. And that kind of gained some traction. I don't do it quite as much just because it's kind of overdone at this point. You know, I just kind of talk mm -hmm. about the guns. And I've, I've become a little bit more professional with it. But... I uh, got hooked up, really got into 1911s, really took a lot of time to, to learn the platform, study the platform, and uh, did some writing for a couple magazines when I was in college, uh, which was probably pretty cool. Um, did a lot of contract photography for some of the really, really big companies in the industry, uh, specifically focusing on the 1911 because they wanted um, marketing materials that appealed to younger folks. And a lot of gun companies were just taking the same pictures of 1911s, kind of just setting them up in that very um, studio-esque. And I was kind of putting good-looking girls, but not not necessarily, you know, undressed girls in with these guns and kind of showing them in that light and younger folks because, you know, all sell, my buddies. Sell the lifestyle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of got the attention of, of several different companies. One of them was Alchemy and Cabot. And um, as we talked about earlier off, off camera, you know, I – I worked out a deal and actually bought a Alchemy prior to actually working. I was working for a small gun company in, in town called U.S. Optics and Zero Delta. And uh, they, you know, I, I guess he liked me enough. And, he, uh, you know, a position came open. And now I'm doing the sales, marketing, customer service, photography, videography, and social media for Alchemy. Nice. And it's pretty, awesome. It's pretty rad. And male model. And the male, yes, well. well this mustache, you know, got to pay some bills. Dude, the male modeling, that, that, that caught my eye right away. I jumped out, I stalked you out on the stage. <laughs> I'll and tell I'm you like, what. I'm like, this dude looks Take pretty, that as a compliment. Like, this dude anybody... looks pretty cool. You're like, you got your low rider, you're like, oh, solo yeah. pants, you got the Pete, look going yeah. on. I'm like, this dude's this fucking pretty bad. I love it, yeah. Dude. No, I'm, I'm into it. You know, I've always liked cars. I've always liked guns. It's kind of one of those things. Uh, you know, you get into the, get into the, I guess we'll call it manly hobbies. But you know what really sucks is they're all expensive. Well, sure. Are. Yeah. I mean, why? Why do they have to be so dang anything expensive? good? Anything good costs money. I know. I know. And I just, you know, I, I've gotten, you know, especially for my age, I have some pretty badass guns. And I'm very lucky that my Instagram has opened that opportunity to have some badass guns. But 
man, you know, you get you get plenty of guns, and like we talked about, uh, when guns are your job and your hobby, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. So that's where my car comes in. So you got to have a little bit of release. Now oh, yeah. tell us about Cabot Guns, the company, because one, I've I've been a fan for quite some time. Obviously, it's a little out of my mm-hmm. personal price range, but what I've always loved, I relate it to the car thing. Is it seems Cabot's always been like <clears throat> they definitely beat to their own drum, oh, yeah. yes, right, and they're gonna do they're gonna not only gonna they do the wildest and craziest, they're gonna do it at the highest level and make no excuses about it which we like because we try to think that we do the same thing, you know? Um, it's not yeah, following anybody. Yeah, I the shop here. You're definitely following following that beat of your own drum. Well, I like appreciate there, There's it. a lot of really cool stuff going on. But Cabot, so the, the founder of Cabot, Rob Yankin, when he was looking at starting the company, he just had a passion for the 1911. So he, he loved the 1911. He loves everything Americana. He loves just how things need to be made in America and made properly. So when the company was started, this was when custom 1911s were, they were expensive, but they weren't really seen as a luxury item. It was something that, you know, old boys, they wanted enthusiasts. to get enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, they wanted to get a gun that they could go run and beat up. And he's like, well, there has to be a, there's there's luxury shotgun makers, okay? Mm-hmm. That, are, that are over in Europe and they're very, you know, they make very nice shotguns, but you know, they have a certain air of Europeanness to them. Well, and God, I, hate I yeah, yeah. We, we're not, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go Don't there. Get we, me we started some, on European. We have some okay. very good European just, customers on the cabbage side. On this, um, with the autotopia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, oh. and so he was looking at the, the 1911 and saying, "This is the perfect platform to exude American greatness and the the American greatness of manufacturing." So it, we sourced, but we source our steel domestically. So going all the way down to like the billet 416, it has to be domestic sourced billet and that has to go into our machines and made to our guns to our specs very highly tuned very finely done with you know we use the term aerospace you know tolerances which really just means tolerances that have to be held repeatedly every single time to make a firearm and when that started back in you know uh, 2011 um, it was not a time where you'd see four five six thousand dollar 1911s so people looked at it and they scoffed they go that's never going to work out but the quality of guns that was going out, the finish, the fit, it just started to win people around. And really, Cabot became a name when uh, in, in 2016 when we released the Meteorite guns. So this was when really people started to look at us because we said, well, we're making all these parts. And people don't realize just how the sausage is made in the 1911 industry or the gun industry in general. So how can we show off the fact that we actually are making these guns from the ground up and do it with some amazing material? So... We sourced a, you know, a single meteorite. And Where do you go about? Is that eBay? No, that's not eBay. There's, there's not meteorite. <laughs> made. No, so, so meteorite. Large meteorite. Large meteorite. Well, so meteorite is, is sold by the ounce, and it's also it goes up. <clears throat> you got to know uh, a guy. You, you know, got to know, you, you know a guy. Yeah, you got to know a guy. He's got, he's got, he's got, a, yeah, he's got a baggie. You know, yeah. you got a dime bag of meteorite. That's one of those there. guys calling. What's the radio show uh, when they call in? The East of the Rockies or whatever. When remember the, they call in for the UFOs or whatever. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is oh, Don yeah. calling yeah, in East Don, of the Rockies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we get we have people call us all the time to try to sell us meteorite, but you have to also get it tested to make sure that it is actual meteorite from a specific area. All that. So there's space. There, Space, yes, outer space. Well, yeah, but I mean, they want to make sure it's from space. Well, yes, yes, we, we, that, that is a we got, major requirement. Yes, for it to be a meteorite, it's got to come for this. It, you don't want it to be one of them Boeing bombs. Oh, like yeah, yeah like yeah, Joe, Joe Deere. It was that ain't a meteorite. Yeah, that ain't, that, yeah, that, that ain't no meteorite. Tape. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. one of them Boeing bombs. So yeah, I mean, just making those guns set set the market on fire to people going, oh, okay, you can't, you can take. A 1911. You can make it an, an amazing machine, but to make it a piece of art, to make it something that is more than just the sum of its parts, that's where Cabot comes in. And so we're not afraid to try things. We released a gun that had pieces of uh, lunar material in it. We called it Moonshot. It had pieces of the moon put into the gun, welded onto the gun. So how do you know it actually came from the moon? You can test you it. Do you believe in the moon landing? Uh, there's yeah. a sticker on it. There's oh, a sticker on it. It says Mako or yeah, yeah exactly. H O N L moon. Yes. <laughs> it came from the moon landing set. The moon landing set. Yeah, yeah. no, we <laughs> still don't know if that's a conspiracy. But that's right? that's got to be a. I mean, that takes some balls from from a lot of different people in, inside the organization because you're not again beating your own, own drum. You're not following a price point. You're not looking at like, oh, we could do this if we could just be right in here. It's like. 
build we're it, making it, build it, and then at the end of it, be like, "Fuck, we had that much in it." Well, I guess we got to charge this much, right? And yeah, well, yes. yeah, I mean, when you, when you, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, that's, that's 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 pretty much how it goes. They go, well, "What's the business plan?" We're like, "See thing, make thing, sell thing." Like it's yeah. it's pretty that's similar to how yeah, we exactly, cool. yeah, yeah. And and you know, it's it, it's really tough to to look at the numbers on that, uh, but just to talk about the meteorite itself, I mean, that was a. A, a very expensive rock to buy. I mean, what's we're talking. A, uh, I mean, I don't want people to try backing that out of like the, the retail price here. But what's a meteorite cost? Uh, it, it depends. The larger it is, the more expensive it is per a ounce. A football size meteorite would cost. Uh, it, it depends. It depends on where it's from. If it, is it a Gibeon meteorite? Like what? Where did Those it are land? The good ones, right? Those are the good <laughs> ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah. ain't cut. They're, well, they're, it, it depends because because different impacts okay. have different sizes of meteorites different areas that they come from so i mean me meteorites pretty expensive the, the the rock was was north of six figures just, oh, can just you, for the rock itself can you x-ray that and know if you full solid or have any cavities yes that yeah so they they did they 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 did do some ultrasonic work on it but you still don't know for certain because some of the material that's in there they really don't they still don't really know what it is it, it's not necessarily it's on the periodic table i suppose but they don't really know. It's mostly iron and some rock, but it's space rock. So you can't see through all of it. And cutting into it, just the first cut, is this thing going to break into pieces? And then you go through the whole process of making the guns, and then you got to shoot them. Are you doing, like, stainless inserts for slide to frame fit or anything like that? There or? was some proprietary stuff that you had to do. Okay. So we won't share that okay. because to be able to do it. But there was some there was some wizardry that had to, to okay. go in to make two pieces of rock fit fit and work with the pressures and the 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 amount of energy that's being imparted onto them without them shattering and was with that them a, working repeatedly was that a rig set up for a first shot or was that a oh human? yeah that, that was done on a ransom rest <laughs> okay, yeah yeah so it, it was <laughs> like well they, they come they got down to it and they had it and everyone's behind a shield and they pull it and oh it, it worked and it's still there and they do it again and they do it again and it, it kept shooting they say okay and then after at a certain point they go that's enough you know, well, well, we're then good. Would be different if he was working there. At the oh, he would, oh, oh, yeah. Listen, no, he, I wouldn't. Well, it, was, it was. A, it was. A Mama left. didn't raid no bitch, son. I'd have been in that thing. Let me shoot that piece of Death Star, son. I <laughs> it, was, it, was left, thing. it was a left and right. We would have made him dual wield it. I, well, you wouldn't yeah. have had to made me. I'd have volunteered. But here, you know, the, the nice thing about that is uh, the forty five ACP is actually a really low pressure round, and the nineteen eleven itself was designed as a low pressure round, which is why you still don't see a big adoption into the ten millimeter spec um just because 10 millimeter if loaded properly and you're not basically shooting water you know essentially repackaged 40 caliber which is what a lot of people well, you, shoot. you don't mind pissing people off oh no if you oh, 10 those, millimeter people i, I promise yeah. you if that's you like carry, mopar guys well, 10 millimeter guys no no no, no, no. Ten mil mopar nope. guys are cool yeah 10 millimeter guys man <laughs> 10 millimeter guys are not cool okay dodge charger daytona <laughs> the 69 guys. charger daytona is badass a 10 millimeter is not nah. Okay, <laughs> but you know what? In like the the forty caliber is awful, so don't even we'll, yeah, we'll not even talk about that. But um, you know the really nice thing about being able to do these crazy stuff is that the the forty five and the pistol itself was designed for a lower pressure round. So the steel itself is actually not quite as hard as I think people think it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in fact, fact, getting too hard is right. Yeah, not it, normally getting, a problem. Yeah, but in the is. gun world, right, right, it's it brittle. Right, you know, and, you know, I'm young, so a lot of times I happen to have that problem. You know, a lot of testosterone. I also carry 1911, which well, boosts that as well. <laughs> congratulations. You know, this fucker's going to pop. Could, listen, I, mean, I, could, I, could, I could weave an Indian blanket with the hair on my ass, you know what I'm saying? So that's just from carrying a 1911. I tell everyone all the time, if you want to impress the ladies, that's how you do it. But You weave an Indian blanket on your ass? No, the 1911. I mean, I bet they would be impressed by that, you know. Uh, but no, it's uh, the 1911 is a great pistol, and like I said, because it is designed for those low low chamber uh, pressures or low pressures in general, it it really works well with working with materials Odd that materials. aren't uh, well aren't of this world. Well, we don't know. So <laughs> it, the, the meteorite the meteorite guns that gets you some national press, obviously yep. that because I remember seeing them fucking mm. everywhere. I remember right. I remember the mounts. I remember yep. the whole deal. It was on cover of i don't know how many magazines yep. it was write-ups on everything so at that point that's great everybody's starting to know about you right but then what do you do what do you do well that's when uh damascus steel really started to become the medium of choice because damascus steel has been around for you know millennia but being able to take the damascus steels that we have now finding the right blacksmiths the right artisans and the right stories that go behind it and building guns out of that 
that's really become our niche, along with working with amazing engravers, master engravers, Figa master engravers. So engraved guns. And people don't realize, though, like we make regular guns, like just out of steel, regular steel, not Damascus steel. So we have a lot of those, too, that we push into. But Damascus really is what we're known for now, working with different patterns, different types, different blacksmiths. I mean, we made this year we released a, a, a limited edition set of four guns called the California 1911. It's not available in California because California sucks. Right. Um, but uh, those were made from Damascus billets that were pattern welded with steel from the Golden Gate Bridge, the cables hmm. from the Golden Gate Bridge. We had a blacksmith. Robert Eggerling that took that. This guy's 87 years old in the woods of Pennsylvania, does everything by hand. He's got this amazing setup. He's the master of all Damascus. In fact, you know, this isn't a plug, but go to our YouTube channel and we have a whole, uh, you know, biopic, or biopic. Is it biopic or biopic? I'm not, I'm asking the wrong I'm guy. Yeah, 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 you, you call it a submariner. So <laughs> that's the wrong person. I'm, I'm not the right person. Yeah, Bio, right. English is hard. Biopics. biopics. Yeah, 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 biopics. That's how you say it. That's, I think. That, I, that, that ought to be. Either if it way. ain't, that's how it should yeah, be. Tomato, Climate. tomato. But we have a whole video on him and because he's the master of all Damascus steel. And he was able to take the steel from the Golden Gate Bridge and then forge it into a billet to where the steel actually made an image of the Golden Gate Bridge. And that's actually pattern welded into the billet on the, the, the slide. And the caulking serrations are that it's in the grips and it's on the trigger pad. And the ability to be able to do that and then us to turn it into a that's gun, cool. it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's, I mean, no bullshit. It takes, it takes somebody at the top to say, this is what we're doing. Cause I guarantee you there's, yeah. there's bean counters being like, all right now. So what do you think we're going to be able to sell this for? Well, m- the motherfuckers ROI like projection. we have no idea. So unfortunately, how long sometimes it's take that's in- me <laughs> in sales and marketing. I'm looking at it and, and Rob, I, I get Rob Bianc and the founder of the company, all, all the credit on this. Cause he comes to me with some ideas. I'm like, that. I don't know how we're going to sell that. I don't know what we're going to sell it for. I don't even know how much it's going to cost. And I'm sitting there like, well, we'll just build it. And then we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how we, f- and I, I want to say we put more into it, but the reality is like, how do we feel this fits in with what we've done before? And there's a, a very long list of people that want to buy the pistols that we produce. Cause everything is by the time it makes to the general market, it's already been purchased either mm-hmm on commission, but we're actually doing less commission work. We're doing a lot more of our own stuff because when it comes to Damascus steel and these, these, these projects, we don't know what it's going to look like. So it's really hard to go to a customer that says, I have an idea and I say, we don't know what it's going to look like. Or in some cases, that's a very bad idea. So, you know, just do what you want (laughs) to do. So, so the the best thing is when they come to us and they say, here's a budget, do what you want to do, or even better, there is no budget. I just have this idea and then go from there. Those are the best ones. Those are the best ones. Those are the best ones because then you can get super creative. And and we have guys that just want to be surprised when they open. Is that where that box. came yes, from over your shoulder? I'm looking at it. With yes, you. yes. So th- this was a, a custom commission. So this was engraved. You can by, go ahead and grab it and bring it. All right, down. I'm going to grab it. Everything's been cleared, but I'm just not going to clear this here because this is a customer gun. So this is a custom commission and it is the Phoenix. And it is fully engraved by uh, Jonathan Quill, a master engraver. And if you look at the top, all of this was inlaid and engraved with special, uh, a special process to get the gold to be actually adhered and, and engraved onto the pistol, onto the image. And there's different colors in the gold from... A Can we pre- show it on the Oh, on yeah, the go camera? Ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I've up never there. seen anything quite oh, like yeah, that. So, so whatever you, you do, don't rack it because it is a customer's gun. We want to make sure that he's the first person that gets to do that. So no, no desk pop. Then. No desk pops. I mean, we can, we desk. Hey, I've got stuff. If you want a desk, pop. if you want a desk you, pop, we we'll do some desk happen. pops. But this, this is a customer's gun that we're going to be d- delivering shortly. That is the and, Phoenix. And if you look at the picture, so the picture is essentially like the life cycle of the Phoenix, and you can see the Phoenix rising out uh, towards the muzzle. And, you know, that is a proprietary finish. You know, everything goes has an idea that goes into it. We don't do anything kind of randomly yep. when it comes to this sort of thing. Everything has a purpose. Um, and, and one big insane. thing that we've kind of been known for, uh, if you look there, you know, traditionally on 1911, you'll see. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> traditionally on the 1911, if you look here, you'll see like these cock inserations. Well, we, you know, cock inserations are awesome. Like you'll, you'll, uh, You'll, obviously, when we talk about alchemy, I'm, I'm very pro cock considerations. Yes. But the cool thing about doing this cocking button is it actually takes uh, it allows the artist more surface area of the gun to yep. to play with. Now, this gun in particular did not really need that, but there are some guns where 
the entire gun is including the grips because we'll do like steel grips and they yep. will engrave the grips as well like uh for instance dante's inferno which is mm -hmm. one of my favorites um but you know we we really want to give the artist the 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 most basic canvas and then we of course have to go back in and uh and and really tune you know bring everything together and bring it home but uh, you know that's one of the signature things for us is those cocking buttons um which just give you a something to rack the slide with but allow, allows the art to still take shape well one of the cool things is, is the customer gave us the the idea and the engraver that he wanted us to use and then the grips here i'm, I'm looking at my phone because it's a japanese word it's shusugi ban which right. is oh yeah that's a burnt wood yeah, yeah burnt wood it. okay yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to look it up every single yeah. time y'all know japanese oh yeah 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 y'all y'all should do this <laughs> it's, now it's, it's very dude. it's very uh very popular in architectural and furniture making well it is so so what happened was the the case maker um, he wanted to have the case done in that style so that is what the burnt wood on the bottom of this case is done well we went and took the grips and we're able to emulate that these aren't actual wood grips we were able to emulate that finish yeah on the grips so that the grips match the case. And that's the whole thing is being able to take these, these elements and not have them be random, have them be tied together through the whole project. What is the rest of the finish on the... It, it's a proprietary finish, so it's a proprietary patina. It's badass. Patina. It's badass. Yeah. Yeah, it's badass. Yeah, it's, well, it's, you get yeah. like a little bit of that color case hardened, but yep. not yeah, like all it, the so color. It, it's oh, stainless steel. So the, whole, the gun is stainless steel and then obviously gold. Um, so it is a proprietary stainless steel patina. It's a, a quick aging process that, that we do. And there's a lot of so different cool. colors that can be done. So the engraver happened to do it on this one. But there's a lot of different things that you can do to really bring out colors and tie the whole thing together. So at what point through all this, I mean, we've gone through the Cabot thing, everything's rolling. How did alchemy come about? Well, alchemy... You want to, you want to, tell I mean, you can get, you can get me, you I'll, can get I'll me lead, up to, up lead to the plate, it. son. So, I'll, yeah. I'll take her from there. So, <laughs> so, so Cabot, uh, moved production to Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's why we we're able to drive here today. Um, and, and they needed somebody that had a lot of, uh, knowledge and history in the 1911. And so they brought Rob Shawland on board. Who's a, a gunsmith that's been around for a long time. Very uh, not, not super long. He's not that old. He's going to watch this. Um, no, but you are kind of old. <laughs> and uh, he he's he's got a lot of knowledge, so they brought him on board to to just work on the next evolution. Because even though we're working in amazing materials that are super rare, we also want to make sure that the gun is the best gun that it can possibly be. And so, working on making sure that everything's to to spec, to tolerance, all that, and, and building the next generation of gun. Well, he was building guns under the moniker Alchemy Custom Weaponry, but doing it the normal custom way, where people send you a spring a Springfield mill spec or a Colt. And they're having to do custom stuff. So when do you do some welding on it, do, do some welding on it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So so he came in and they said, well, let's bring mm -hmm. your brand in, but make it a standalone brand where we're actually making the guns not on. I don't want to say de not defective parts, but on sub because that's not the idea, but on parts that you have to weld on to get to fit. You don't want to take things that are undersized. Yes. Weld, add material to it right. to fit. You're going to machine oversize exactly. take material away. Yep. To fit that's exactly fit. The, the idea. So doing that, but also have a unique aesthetic. So the unique aesthetic and the the simplicity, but that, you know, you want it to be custom, but not look crazy custom, like everything that's done nowadays. You have a lot of, you know, cocking serrations that are everywhere all over the gun, have it be clean. And that was the aesthetic that we went with. Uh, and then, you know, Eli can talk about that aesthetic, but that's where Alchemy Custom Weaponry was launched from to be able to provide that, 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 that gun that a lot of people would reach for Mm -hmm. but have it be built on parts that from the get-go are ready to rock and roll. It makes perfect fucking sense, and it's it's what resonates with us. It's why I've really liked it's Alchemy. It's like a spec chest. It's like, it's like, yes. and it's yeah. like a Survivor yeah. Series. Right. We were, oh, exactly. Yeah. We, exactly. Were looking at, we were looking at the cars, and we were taking the LS, and you know, we're yep. doing a top mount, and we're making it look, thing, and that's what they're doing. They're they're keeping that classic 1911 look of especially all the different iterations, yep. those those iconic ones, and you got the two-tone, you got the government, you got the Fed, you got the... Yep. And, but making it with good shit, making it perform. So that, again, I mean, I'm not trying to geek out, but that's like what we do. So that's so there's fucking cool. There's a lot. Of, there's see. a lot of similarities. Walking through the shop here oh, and, yeah. and looking at all that, we're just sitting there going, "God, this is this is the car version of us." That's that's the greatest cool. fucking compliment. No, we we, get, we yeah we we saw that stuff, and and you know, you and I were talking about this like with your spec series. 
and, and I mentioned, you know, we we, we talk, and I love old stuff. Old stuff's just cooler, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The women look better. The cars look better. Yeah. Everything was better, okay? <laughs> and I look at that, and I look at all these junk cars. I just have zero interest in new cars. Zero, okay? Yeah. There, there might be something every once in a while that comes out that's kind of neat, but for, you know, if you compare that to something else from back in the day, I'm almost always going to pick that. But just like with older cars, older guns also have their own their own kind of you know quirks. And even when you look at old custom guns, so like for instance, Kings that start out in California, actually, mm-hmm. um, they are great guns, but they had to build them on base Colt guns, which Colt really took a different approach to building guns post World War II. Um, Pre World War II, the way they were building guns was very much how we were building them now. They were they were a little bit I mean, they were still trying to pump out guns, right? But there was a lot more hand fitting because the human labor was cheaper than the machine labor. Well, after we, I mean, think about what the United States did. You'd think that'd be the exact opposite. Well, it is now. It is now. But, you know, uh, back in the day, the human labor was cheaper than the machine labor. But think about the revolution our country went through during World War II, basically arming up to supply multiple countries. We didn't just supply ourselves. I mean, we were sending Lynn lease 1911s over to, you know, those English assholes. Uh, <laughs> so they could fight for a while. And then yeah, we got involved and, in, in, you know, shut that thing down, shut that yeah. party down, you know. And, um, <laughs> it's one of those things where, you know, they decided, okay, well, we can make a gun fairly inexpensive. You know, I've, I, I always laugh because I've got several classic guns. I've got a Remington Rand 1943 that's a, virtually untouched. It's a, wow. it's a museum piece. And, you know, people be, oh, you know, things, not guns were made so much better back then. And, and some were, but let me tell you what wasn't. Yeah, military issued firearms. <laughs> yeah. uh, they were made for a purpose. They needed to fire. Everything else after that was was a luxury. Well, they didn't really have to worry about customer service. If it, no. went, if it went bad on the battlefield, yeah, nobody you, was. Yeah, your customer was dead. Yeah, yeah. your customer's dead. And, and we we definitely don't want that to happen. And so, um, you know, we definitely take a lot of pride in taking the look that everyone loves and giving it the performance that everyone loves, you know, and it's one of those things. It's like, it's like that Cadillac y'all got back there. That Cadillac will always be cool. Yep. Okay? Yep. I, I that Cadillac will always be bitching. Yeah. It's very similar to this 1911. You know, a lot of our uh, competitors, and we we actually we use that term loosely. We're actually extremely good friends with a lot of people in our industry. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, I've done a lot of work prior to working here uh, with Alchemy with other companies. So I'm very close in that industry and, you know, they're doing good things, but, and they've definitely found their niche, but we've kind of decided, Hey, listen, like a 1911 from, you know, 1924, 1916, that's always going to be cool. Yep. You know, a classic 1911 will always look cool and you can spend $4,000, you know, being an asshole and tricking out a Glock, but you'll never be cool. Yep. I don't care how, <laughs> I don't, I don't, you'll never be cool. So I'm not, a, I'm not a huge gun guy. I got a, pretty decent gun collection i'm into guns and jo- i look to josh to help curate my collection because he knows his shit right but the very first thing i bought was a 1911 damn right. oh that's that's real cool. that bought, was your first gun first gun and i bought a pair of them stainless because i thought I'm, i want to make them like cartel looking guns you know well, yeah. well hold, on. Did, hold on did it come with a wheelbarrow for the big old balls you, got? <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying so. but that's what i bought i bought a pair of colt uh stainless oh yeah oh yeah and it, it just resonated with me because I'm, I'm probably a lot like you. I just dig old stuff and I just, I like the history of it. The simplicity of it looked cool to me. And a Glock just, to me, it just looked like a plastic, like piece of shit. I mean, the, damn I, right. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, he's my he, new best he, friend. He, 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 he can come know, hang out. He can come hang out with us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, and it, it also looks like, I mean, nothing wrong. They're, they serve a purpose. They're a tool, yeah. right? But yep. if it's a, if it's a, ooh, I want to get excited about this purchase. It looks like something anybody can have. A, a Glock does, or any other polymer guns. I mean, it's great. Go out and trick some out, and go shoot. And there's a race gun. That's why you, everybody has so many guns, is because they all serve a different purpose. But when it comes to like our cars or like our chassis, when it comes time to like, ooh, I've got to, I got to spend some money on something I want, yeah. not just to. It's not just a tool. It ends you know? up being a nineteen. Yeah. I've never spent big money on a shovel, right? <laughs> I've spent money on a shovel to dig a fucking hole or whatever it is, yeah. you know. And so if you need that. Unless that, you've unless you've ever had a shovel handle break, well, yeah, yeah. Then then you spent right. some more money on a shovel. Right. I've dig, dug some ditches in my life. So. No, you know it's it's definitely you know and and Alchemy really resonated with me as we mentioned. You know I had I owned Alchemy before 
um, actually working for the company. And uh, at the time, it was the nicest gun I, I own. And, uh, and and I say that, but the nicest gun I own is still an Alchemy. It's just one of our limited edition guns that we have. Oh, um, oh yeah. yeah. And actually, and actually, it's the prototype. So that's that's pretty that's pretty gangster. So uh, you know, it it is cool. But you know, it's just one of these things where you you look at the gun and you you have an emotional reaction. You know, and I try to tell people when we get into the into the shop, and you know, sometimes you know how business is. You know, we you start crunching numbers, you start looking. I'm like, listen, you you. Yes, we should absolutely look at numbers. We should all, all that's always important from a business. But you got to understand this is an emotional purchase. Okay. When you're, when you're dropping three, four, five thousand dollars on a gun like this, uh, it's an emotional purchase. And these guns speak to people. And, and, you know, we've, we've talked about Cabot and, you know, I work, I do work for Cabot. I do a lot of stuff for Cabot, but Alchemy is kind of my baby. Mm -hmm. And I take a lot of pride in our company and what we do and what we make. Uh, and he can tell you that I might, might be too prideful. <laughs> I might be you too get, prideful. There's no, no, there's no <laughs> such thing if it drives you. Right. Your, drive your work he, ethic. He, he has so like sometimes i just have to tell him hey you remember like you have to breathe sometimes yeah he, he gets so he amped up, up. It, yeah we amped up and worked up but in a good way and i mean what a blessing that we have that you remember being 24 though don't you i remember being 24 yeah, yeah that was a long i mean time it was a long time ago yeah. like dinosaurs roamed the earth so it's funny though because he he came out of the womb looking like he was 45 so <laughs> so you know like he's got this 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 mustache and this beard i'm 39 and well before yeah. i started carrying 1911 i look like you <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it no, I, it's funny you know you and, go, and that's really the thing about these guns and 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 really you know with alchemy we hand build and and uh, as we talk i'm not here to, to sell you on alchemy i'm here because y'all are cool dudes y'all do bitching stuff i love cars as you know uh, yeah. i'm a big car guy i've got a 63 galaxy 500 that's literally like my baby uh it's funny my chick um one night I was out working on it really late who hasn't been there. And she goes, you know, you love that car more than me. And I'm a really bad liar. And it's not that I didn't, but I hesitated. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, oh, and I went, no, I mean, I, yeah, I love you, but that car is bitching. <laughs> you know, I mean, that I car, love you. That car will always look good. That, you know, you know, I, I, Ooh, I, have, yeah. I have said that. <laughs> I have said that one time and I've decided that maybe that's not the, the route to good, go. Does but, it? No, it isn't. But, you know, and the cool thing is with, with alchemy, and the reason that I'm so drawn to it is I've always appreciated the human, and I'll connect this to my car because, you know, it was car podcast, and um, I've always appreciated human art, um, and and that's what this is. You know, with with Cabot, there is a ton of CNC machine that goes in, and it's it's of the utmost level of perfection, right? But when you buy Cabot, there is so much that goes into making those guns perfect, and there is some human touch in those. There are. You can't. You just can't build a 1911 without it. You're not right. But with Alchemy, we we have a manual mill. That is the most machine. We have a few buffing wheels and things like that. But hmm. most of that gun is made by hand, is built by hand, That's pushing awesome. a file. You know, the people are bleeding on them. They're sweating on them. And you know what those people are? Americans. Americans bleeding on them, sweating on them. That's all American steel in that gun. And it's it's a it's a labor of love and it's pride, but it's it's art that's functional. And, you know, and I tell people all the time, you know, when they get our guns and there's some, there's some variances, like they'll buy one or two guns and keep in mind, these are all hand built guns. And they'll say, well, this gun has this and this gun has that. Why is that? And I'm like, buddy, these ain't stamped out of a machine. They're built by a human. Yep. And maybe that human had a bad day. Maybe he had a really good day. Maybe he came in and, and all of the human emotions are put into that gun when they're building it. And it's something you just can't get from a machine. And you know what else a machine can't do is it feels. Mm -hmm. And what I've got is a group of amazing gunsmiths that feel, that have emotions, that have connections, that have touch, smell, all their senses putting into that gun so that when you handle it, you're feeling right. everything. And we can impart that human connection into our guns to you because a handgun is an extremely emotional and personal purchase. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a handgun for self-defense, which these guns are absolutely, if you put this gun in, the, in a safe and you tell me, I will make fun of you. Right. And you, I, as you should, and I'm not afraid to, you know, I have a lot of customers. Oh, you know, it's so beautiful. Put, put it in a holster. Okay. Don't, don't do that to this gun. You're insulting my gunsmiths that spent hours and, and it is not, let me tell you right now, I took a time-lapse video before we came of a, of a cut of a, one of my gunsmiths fitting a grip safety. And it is so long, you know, because it takes, I mean, they're doing it all by hand. You know, he's got to fit, he's got to draw on it with some magic marker to see where he's getting interference. It's a ton of work, so don't put 
my gunsmith's art that he's made reliable, functional, accurate for you to protect your life with. Don't put it in a, in a safe. Right. It's meant to be in a hole. Y'all hand checkering all this? No, actually, that's one of the few things <laughs> that's done by a machine. Um, just because machine checkering, you, I'm, unless you're just at the end level of yeah. it, you cannot hand checkering is well, that's really. Why I was difficult. asking you. I was looking at how good that was. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah no, there no. are there are certain things that that you know the T100 or T1000. I don't know what the Terminator was. Can do a little better than humans. Well, that that's one of them. Well, and you know that, and and it also checkering is. It, you also have to kind of give and take on the time that it takes to build these yeah. pistols. Again, we're we're working we're working in a price point, so alchemies are significantly cheaper than um, than cabots. But we're working in a price point. We're working, you know, with certain things, and uh, you know, it, the byproduct is that checkering is really the the only machine act, machine aspect of of the gun. But uh, you know, with that being said, it is really nice. It's really thought out checkering. Um, I actually wish that it was way more aggressive, but I'm also you know. I, you know, I'd, he's he's an anomaly. I am an, he's anomaly, an anomaly, right? right. You know, a lot of people. He wants thirty six grit wrapped around the. the I, oh no, no, he he want he wants what he wants seventeen LPI. Fif, fifteen he wants 15 LPI lines so lines per inch checkering. So just so you know, the lower the lines per inch, the sharper the point and that the you're bigger get, the bigger the point. So that right there is what twenty five. That is twenty five. The comfort carry checkering is twenty five right. in the middle, and you know the really nice thing about that checkering is it, it it's only the the horizontals on the on the curve of the gun. Mm -hmm. So when it's in a holster, and I carry appendix, which a lot of our older Kydex or leather Kydex and you honestly, put. I'm oh yeah, no, I'm twenty five, man. Carry, I can get yeah, away we carry, with that. We carry our guns, Kydex appendix. Now I got now wow. like now well, like my, we're 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 you know we're these are these are working guns for us. They're beautiful, but. Now, we work them. That's there are, awesome. There are that's guns. Awesome. There are guns that I just don't believe should be in in Kydex. Like my um, Combat Limited is a two to uh, twenty five gun run, um, meant to emulate the Packmeyer Combat Special. It, it was one of the first projects that I got brought on for, and uh, that's about as good as it gets right there. Yeah, and everything about and that's hard chrome, baby. That's hard chrome. chrome. Like that gun. Yeah, Which, it's, you know, chrome. it's good. Everything. Mm -hmm. That's actually my carry gun. Is it? Oh yeah. Yeah, I had to clear it yeah, before he, we brought it in. What's, oh, yeah. What's the price point on something like that? So that gun with the hard, hard chrome is expensive, uh, and it's an old finish, so like there's some nuances of it that a lot of n newer customers aren't uh, accustomed to. Well, and there, there's also some environmental concerns that Greta Thunberg has made it a little more difficult to do <laughs> hard chrome. So it, it, right. it, it, oh, it's yeah, one yeah, of those yeah. finishes that's yeah. it's just like chroming in general, like chrome parts on cars yeah. in Europe. That's it. Can't do you it. can't do it no more in Europe. So well, you know, and so to answer your question, I do have a comment about her about Greta. Uh, but to answer your question, that gun right there is probably about forty three hundred bucks, and that's that that has everything but an ambidextrous safety, which I I should have done. And I always preach to people if you're going to carry a gun, an ambidextrous safety is actually a really really good thing. In case you have to explain go to your offhand, explain to me what that is. Just so about. if you look at the Quantico high cap right there to at your right there, you can pick it up if you want. You know, it ain't gonna bite you. Um, it, that ambidextrous safety, the, the thumb safety on the side, on both you sides. see it's on both sides yep. on the back of the front. So you're going to carry that gun cocked and locked. So you're going to okay. have the, the round in the chamber, you're going to have the hammer back and have the safety on. And so, you know, it's one of these things, like I do a drill called the Hackathorn standard, um, invented by Ken Hackathorn, who's a, a Mr. 1911. He's who I inspired to be mustache and all. Uh, and I he's got, back in PI. you can uh, keep, well, it. he's also awesome. I see but, some of your, your Instagram page with the floral shirts. Oh yeah. yeah. Hackathorn though, man. Ha Hack's pretty, uh, you know, it's funny enough. I, I went up and, and we were talking to hack and he's, he's actually got an alchemy and he loves it. But, um, you know, there's a drill in the Hackathorn standard where you, uh, have to do a weak hand pickup. And it is like the worst part of the drill. I, in all honesty, like I usually shoot, um, I usually shoot pretty well my Hackathorn standard. But I, if I drop a, uh, a, a stage of that, it's going to be that one because you essentially have the gun laying on the ground and you have the butt away from your your weak hand. You'll have your hand in the back. Typically, I try to tell people when they do it with me to grab your belt on the back so that you literally will not use your your dominant hand. And you essentially have to pick up the gun kind, almost kind of backwards. And then get on target, and you're going to shoot three targets um, in the A zone. And the issue with a single-sided safety, which just for safety and concerns, I'm not going to get it out and show you, but is you're going to essentially have to break your grip to manipulate the safety. Uh, you know, and I think aesthetically, the the single-sided safety is is phenomenal. But you know, it would be much better if I could pick up the gun and manipulate it as I would if it was. But if you've hand. already drawn. Correct. And no, then you yes. lose your yeah. gun and have to go to your off hand. It probably is safety off. Right. 
a hundred percent. It's just because I've, one of I've heard things, that yeah. I've heard that argument before, and I look at him like it, it, it's a drill it's that a, if you've yeah. gotten to that point, if you live like yeah. angels are around, well, you, right. you know, and, <laughs> like you're I've, good to go. I've lost been, my dominant sh- hand. Yes. Now I've found somebody else's unholstered weapon right. that is safe, and well, I have to. And it happens to be a 1911. The, and, yeah, those those the, drills. The confluence what, of events to get there. Yeah, but I get still, what you're saying. It, it, it's good. I mean, it's like shooting rifle, shooting your your rifle offhand, and manipulating a rifle offhand. Like if you get to that point, yeah, that's not a good day. And drills no, are really it, just set up to put you. Drills are set up to put you in really bad situations to see if you can manipulate well, your way out of it. Yeah. And they're also as drills are set up strictly for an ego check. Oh yeah, yeah. They, yes. Because they, they as soon as you they start are. punching holes, and you're like, "Oh, this is so fucking awesome." Yeah. I'm, just, I'm I'm actually the most badass shooter I know. And then you go to do a drill, or you go to offhand, or you do something that you're not comfortable with. And you're like, "Oh fuck." The I'm best not good thing at all. to do is to take a, a shooter that says, "Oh, I've been shooting forever. My daddy oh, taught yeah. me how to shoot." And then you take him out there, make a move. No, no. All you have to do is bring out a shot timer. Shot timer. You bring out all. a shot timer, and they fall to pieces, and they're they have the shittiest time. And their target looks even worse than it did because all those guys, they think they get good targets. And then you look at their target, you're like, that's really bad. And then yeah. they get you bring a shot timer, you introduce stress, life changes for you. I've taken a lot of people out that have said they've been shooting a long time. You introduce stress and they just go to shit. And, right. But it's great because they push. So I've brought so many people. It's probably been the same for you. Yeah. You bring people out to the range. You start doing drills. You start introducing you know stress into the situation. And then they go and they say... I'm not as good as I thought I was. They start actually going to take courses from people and they, well, and then they take the course and they realize I'm even worse than I thought I was at this course. And they push themselves and I go out and I shoot with them again. I've got a a neighbor that we've done this and we've, I've gone and shot with him after a year of, and he went and uh, did a Tony Cowden's course, uh, capable link, but he's, he's a great guy, great shooter. He did his course and he got a shot timer. He started doing all this work, took, you know, went back to back to where, before it was how how small how tight of a group can I get at seven yards on paper to now how quickly can I get my gun out and get shots on target and move and manipulate the gun and yeah. what happens in a year when you introduce stress and introduce a a, a par time it's a it's unbelievable what happens yeah. to people more people need to do that everybody needs to go out I, I try to do at least two courses a year just to get that you know get into different situations. Because that's the only get comfortable being uncomfortable. Get comfortable in being uncomfortable. Because if you got to use your gun, you're gonna be uncomfortable. Yeah, it's not. That's not a good day. So yeah, it's a terrible day. But but yeah, and these pistols are designed to be street carry guns. You know, I I I carry that gun, that gun right there. Uh, And I've got a few other. I actually have a Quantico high cap. Uh, That one isn't mine, but I do carry that one quite a bit. And you know, when you pull these guns out to people, people have this convoluted uh, you know expectation that a carry gun should be a cheap gun. Should be a gun that works, but oh, you know, if you if you have if, to use it, it's going to go into jail. Right, and, right, you know, right. the, the police are going to confiscate it. And and my my whole like you know opinion on that is don't be a bitch. <laughs> and now that's what you should be fucking carrying. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, a suppressed apocalypse. Suppressed Damascus. Yeah, that, that, gun. That's the apocalypse right there. Yeah, that's like a ten thousand dollar unit without the suppressor. And probably without the red dot, actually. It's no, with, with the red dot, right, yeah, right, yeah, around, yeah. right around 10K. Well, that's why I don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I've been drilling over that one for about a year now yeah. since you guys dropped it. Just love the linear Damascus on it. And it's fucking awesome. Well, it, it's, it's so a, funny because that... Warren Patina is killer. That yeah. gun, well, and that that finish, that that's a like a form of nitriding. It's a heat and chemical process. That's it's good unbelievably looking. durable. So that is a very durable gun. That gun's got thousands upon thousands of rounds on it. Really? That's, the, that's a demo gun. That's one of the first ones that we made. It's gone to multiple magazines so if you've seen a magazine with it in it it's probably that gun it goes and comes back <laughs> yeah. but it's it it gets shot a lot but that that pattern came from kind of a happy accident to where we were building a gun for a customer and we went to to etch the damascus because when you get damascus steel you people don't realize you can't really see the pattern until you put it into the acid bath yeah. and etch it and we have a very long process of, of etching there's masking there's all kinds of stuff you got to do because you don't want you don't want the acid to touch certain parts, but we went to to etch it, and the pattern was supposed to be one way, and it turns out that the billet had it sideways. So when we did it, it was kind of a happy accident to have that pattern that way and finished it in that vintage classic finish, and it, it turned out amazing. And so we initially planned on, uh, we did a, a first release of 20 pistols 
and that was sold out immediately. And then it very quickly became our our, our flagship gun, the yeah. flagship gun, the apocalypse. And then we followed it up with Serenity. And then there's a, a lot of other things coming down the pike when it comes to Damascus steel. But Well, and the nice thing about it is, you know, under one roof, you have two completely different philosophies for building the same gun. You know, we, we've talked about Cabot is a pursuit of perfection. You know, we want those guns to be perfect. We want those guns to be machined perfect. And with Alchemy, you know, we have a little bit of that. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Hit, hit me oh, right yeah, down you here. Gotta, that stuff, that was... You're getting Nick talkative. So well, that that had a nose on it. That oh went, when God, I had a nose. <laughs> God, you're. This, this is, is oil and whiskey. This isn't Eli talks it's about all, whatever he wants to talk whiskey. about. Yeah. We've been saving this bottle. This lived on the shelf all through the. Oh entire, damn! This is yeah. a man's pour all right through here. Through the entire yeah. first season. Look at that. Yeah. This yeah. is a Top rare. Meal. That's a rare well, bottle right there. Well, but, you're uh, talking about alchemy. I mean, honestly, that's where my was my next question was going. So we're following this in you know in order. Great idea you know, understand why it started and all that. How are you marketing that company? Yeah. <laughs> at the, at, now and at its infancy, you know, yeah. again, not against, but alongside, um, I mean, I, obviously we do a lot of similar things and, you know, yeah. with, with a, a lower price point and spec built with the same standards. I get, I get all of that kind of stuff, but then, Oh, you're also having to go to a whole new audience. You're having to go out there and well, say, hey. Yeah. yeah. So before Eli came on and, and I was doing the marketing for both. So I was the sales and marketing guy for, for both brands and, and juggling all this. It's how do you create two, two separate and distinct identities that people can find out are, are under one roof. And it's really coming down to saying, you know, Cabot is the, the thing that people aspire to that you don't think you can get, but you can. I mean, you can order a cab. It's just going to take a while. It's going to cost a little bit of money. But then when you have the alchemy side, it was it was a little more rough. Oh, it yeah. was it was more rough, and that made it a lot more fun. It's way more fun. It, it, and I, I should say, you know, it's it's it is more fun. I was going to try to like walk that back, but it's a lot of fun to where when I when we do stuff for alchemy, like we never have to second guess. We just go. Whatever comes to our mind, we're just going to say that shit. It's not that we have to second guess. There is no second guess. There is no second guess. Like, it, it comes to mind. There is no brain mouth filter. We think it. We say it. It yeah. goes out there. Is and that because it, the, of the customer, the difference in the customer base? Well, it's, or it's the fact there's no. We've developed the customer base to be ready for it. We got a lot of pushback in the beginning to where people were saying, well, you know, we want something that's more professional. And they were used to, you know, older, stodgier marketing that was mm-hmm. very fixed in one way and when we were like no like if you if you call us and complain and it's a really funny complaint we're gonna put that <laughs> on our instagram if you call if you if you call from there was a guy in california that, that emailed one time this was really funny and so this is before eli came in he emails he goes i'm about to place an order for one of your guns but it, it there is no way i'm gonna pay at the time it was thirty two hundred dollars for, oh, for one for one of your primes so I, I i need a discount code in order to order and I saw where he was from, and I was like, well, we don't even offer guns in California, but I'm going to have some fun. I go, oh, yes, sir. And so what I did is I went onto the website, and I made a discount code with his last name. They gave him one cent off. I said, here <laughs> you buy it. Oh, no, 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 no. This gets even better. He goes, probably explore you know, no, no, he, he, I sent him, oh, here's your discount code, sir. Thank you so much. We're so looking forward to your order. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Nick. I think, I think there's been a mistake. There's no way a one cent discount is going to be enough for me. I was like, oh my goodness, sir. I'm so yeah, sorry. Too. There, 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 must, there must have been, there must have been an issue, sir. Let me, let me take care of this for you. And so I updated it to 10 cents and he goes, Hey, Nick, are you messing with me? Cause now it's only 10 cents off. I would I, never think of that. Oh no. He, he goes, now it's only 10 cents off. I go, well, sir, first off you're in California. We do not, we, we are not allowed to sell guns in California. Number two, even if you weren't, we don't sell guns to pompous, pretentious assholes like you. <laughs> and I said, thank you so much for your time. And then I left it. Well, then he calls the corporate line and he call. I see his number come in. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. It's gonna be a complaint. He, no, he, yo, he's going to make a complaint. But I love our CEO. He backs he backs us every yep. single time. So yep. I, 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 I hit the decline button on it. I called the CEO. I go, this guy's calling. Here's what I did. And oh, by the way, I've been posting about this whole thing on our Instagram <laughs> as it's going on. And I go, so here's what happened. Here's why he's complaining. Just be prepared. So he calls up and the CEO, he's very nice. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, yeah, we don't sell guns in California. He goes, well, yeah, that was kind of pretentious of you. And like, that's really funny. And then the guy's like, what? You, like, I, I'm calling to complain. Like, you should fire this guy. He's like, well, no, it's, it, it's really kind of funny. And then, <laughs> and then the guy's, well, 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 you tell Nick he's a dick and hangs up. 
And, and that has, and that has stuck. Nickname. I've nicked nick the, the dick. Nick, nick, the dick. nick the dick. But we were going to make T-shirts. You tell Nick he's a dick and, and hangs up. But that's that's how it really started was yeah. honestly that story. And I started posting it on our Instagram. And people were like, oh, like if we if we treat these guys the way we treat other companies, they're not going to be Being called out for it. We're going to get called out for it. And did that turn a lot of people off in the beginning? Not a lot, but it was the right people to turn off. Yeah. We were very happy to not have them be customers. Yeah. And then as it came along and then we brought Eli on board with his, you know, way of going about things and, you know, using, using words that, uh, you know, they're not bad <laughs> words. They're just words that, that people in the 1911, the, the, the elder generation, right. elder than me, uh, well, won't really appreciate. We're just like, you know, what? we're sticking behind this 100%. And it's become a brand that's, you know, I don't want to say it's anti-establishment. So it's, it's real Gen X, like the brand and that anti-establishment, like pushing back against how right. everything, how everything you think a, a gun company should be. We're not going to be that. Well, I don't know if you're really pushing back versus doing just doing what, we what you want to do you know what we're leaning in that's actually true yeah, yeah it's not a pushback it's a lean yeah. in because well, yeah. it's just they're just they just i mean the establishment or traditional you know yeah gun companies and marketing and the way they think they just do their thing the yeah. way they do it and it's like a big ship and it's difficult to steer and turn and, but it works for them right it, but we can't do that right and we, it, you you can't do that be the size that we are Right, we and, have to and make a do that. we have you have to make a splash. Mm-hmm. You have to do something for Cabot. It was building guns out of fucking meteorites. Okay, right. right. So for Alchemy, it has to be about the attitude for the brand cool. that people establish to. So that's what it is. Well, you said that you said at the beginning they you know those those brands live um, separately, but it would be fine if anybody knew the backstory and that they yeah. were under one yeah. roof. But don't at this point don't those brands feed off of each other? You know Not what? Re- they're they're way we- more independent. It's than so you would interesting. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Customers don't tie the two together. I, they, I they, mean, well, it's it's if you go to the Alchemy website, it's Alchemy by Cabot Guns. Yeah. And, and we Cabot owns Alchemy, but it it's two distinct it's, buyer profiles. But yeah. the fu- the funny thing is, we do have a lot of crossover, crossover in customers, and those those customers rock. They are the best. They are the best. Yeah. Because they understand it, they get it, they they get what's behind both of them. And they're just, they're all on board. Those are the customers that I got really love to work with. Do you get more guys that are starting in the alchemy line and then <laughs> graduating, graduating up? up or are the funny guys enough? That, no, they start, the, they most, start Cabot mostly they start at Cabot and I don't want to say they, they don't they, graduate down, yeah, but, they, no. but they, they, they have just a different perspective on but it. The guns are so different, you know, I, so I, you shoot them side by side. It's like, it's a 1911, but they, but they, perf- they have they, different, they have different personalities, different you know. personalities. Yep. In and, what way? Well, you know, when you have a really tight hand, when you have a hand fit gun, huh? there's going to be characteristics that are inconsistent throughout the gun. Yep. Or, and that throughout makes it guns, awesome. Right. So like I, you can handle every one of these guns. Like, did you feel the lockup on that 45 commander? Oh, yes. you did. Yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you felt the lockup there and then you felt mine. Yeah. Right. Which was really smooth, but it yeah. wasn't as hard to, to manipulate. Yeah. And that's sort of what's really cool is that every gun has almost its own story, almost its own path, its own personality. It's got a fingerprint. But the, and there's also positives and negatives to both of those every, setups. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. Right. There's the. Yes, but well, as an yeah. alchemy customer, and I don't want to say like, as an alchemy customer, you they understand when the gun's coming to them. You're, there's going to be it's going to be an alchemy, but you're there's going to be some surprises in it that just make it different from any other alchemy. You can get two. Prime, you know, you can get two Prime Elite 45s, but they're not identical. Even if you spec them out identical, they just, they're not always going to feel identical the to each other. The performance will be there. Performance mm-hmm. is there. But the, the, the feel feeling. will be a little bit different. Or something you can relate to in each of your gun, like mine does this and yes. this way. Well, you yeah, you'll, get you'll, used to it and you'll feel how it unlocks. You'll feel how, you know, the timing that is gun. different. That gun's that, fit. Nice. Yeah, that one. That, that one, one's fit that real one's nice. Awesome. I've I've got the original Quantico single stack, which pisses me off. Prototype that I pisses him it. off because this God, I I've like never that. shot a forty five that feels like this. Yeah, and it, I mean, it that might be a bonus for hitting a sales goal. Or something. No, it'll never be. He he can never sell enough guns to pry this from my. And I don't shoot yeah. it. I just own it. I have it so that he can't have it. Right. Yeah, because yeah, I do. I actually keep the majority of those. Like, you <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I keep the majority of the Alchemy marketing guns. He has some, but I keep the majority of them with me. And then, of course, I have my own. So I, I personally own several Alchemies, and I have a Cabot Rebellion that I that I personally own. Um, but you know, it, it's very you know, and, and we can talk. We can make the connection. 
the alchemy, you, you have that that sort of human, uh, I guess, imperfection. I, I hate using that word because people take that way too out of yeah. context, but you have that human imperfection. And I relate it to my car. So my low rider, right? So that car was painted about 20 years ago by a guy in California named uh, K-Daddy Customs. Okay, And when you look at that car, it was one of the first cars he ever really spent a lot of time on. I mean, it's, it's a it, absolutely gorgeous car. It's probably uh, the best gun here. Yeah, that one's awesome. Uh, well, 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 it's because you like the lockup. No, th- I'm, I'm sorry. Go on on about your oh, car. I, I, wa- I want to touch back yes. on that. I was just going to say, have a, we have you know, when say. you when you look at this car, it was it was hand painted. Um, it was very it's very uh, Larry Watson style. Um, crab claw flame scallops, um, yep. metal flake roof, um, pinstriping. But when you look at the pinstriping on the front, it's actually le- it leans a little bit to the driver side. <laughs> a little bit, right? And and almost no one notices it's that. But you know, handmade. but you, right, yes. it's it's handmade. And let me tell you something. I had someone that said, "Man, don't you hate that? Don't you know you could do that with a wrap?" And I was like, "I'm going to be oh, honest with oh, you. Bro. I'm so oh, insulted." Bro, fucking like I, we were at a, I was at a car show, and I was like, "I am so insulted that you would even bring that up because a wrap will never do what this does. You can see the brush strokes in that paint job, yep. and it is." It is one of my. I, I he was four o'clock carrying like an XD S, oh, wasn't he? He was probably. Oh well, <laughs> he was okay. So my first gun. gun was an XD, uh-huh. and you look I how he turned Kel- out. Yeah, I know. Look at how this turned out. But you know what? I got more hair on my butt, <laughs> on my ass than you do on your face. <laughs> like you say that like it's a good thing. Well, I'm not necessarily saying it's a good thing. It's a byproduct. But you say it like it it's is. A it's a byproduct. Of the you can way. shave just like he does. My ass? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Listen, that's too much work. <laughs> That's way too. Let me tell you right now. Yeah, th- there, there's, there's, there's so many mirrors and angles, and he ain't good with numbers over three. So yeah, that's Dale Earnhardt's yeah, number. Yeah, uh, yeah. We had Manscaped reach out to us. And as Did a, they really? As a spot, and it, it was it was a difficult one. We to, butchered uh, it. <laughs> you yeah. butchered it. You butchered yeah. the commercial. It was yeah, a difficult did. ad. Yeah, right in the Batwing. Area, really? Right? Yeah. It was. Well, dude, they. I mean, we got, we I, they have little, fantastic products. We went a little too far for them. <laughs> they make a ball shaver. Right? Yeah, how do you, how do you go too far? That's kind of what, what we are you talking about. You go too far, but you know, like, did you say taint? Uh, we did talk about taints. Yeah, yeah. That must, <laughs> it's a, it, that. It, 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 it taint right for them. Yeah, like taint. that wasn't right. But, <laughs> taint the one for them. <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, we, you know, going back the the alchemy pistols, man, they are just so badass, and and we really like like the marketing is. You, no other company would let me do what I do. I mean, I made an Instagram post one time that basically it said something to the effect of, and it's hilarious because I don't tell him about my Instagram post. No. A lot of companies you have to, you know, have those approved. approved. In advance. They are not approved. I literally will get out of the gym and be like, damn, I had a good deadlift day. I'm about to, I'm about to fuck shit up. You know what I'm saying on Instagram? He's about to post this and then I'm go, like, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bet, is bet this kind of, like, I'm going to be like, <laughs> is, is Nick going to get pissed off about this? Let's do it. Um, and I made one post where I had my buddy who is just jacked. I mean, he is a big dude, like deadlifts 800 pounds. Like he's a monster. Um, and so I had, I took a picture of him with one of our guns and I mean, he, he doesn't even have to look like he's trying to look big. He just is a big dude. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, carrying a 1911 will boost your testosterone, but look what it's done here. You know? And I said, no. And I essentially went on a a tangent that said that, you know, carrying a plastic gun lowers your sperm count. But really what's happening (laughs) is that. No, what you really said. Big polymer, big polymer. Okay. Big polymer is like the Glocks. They're actually a a conspiracy. They're a conclusion, a conglomerate of these companies, these big polymer companies that are trying to get people out of having 1911s. Right. And so what they do is they get these people to carry these, these young men, right to carry these plastic guns, lower their sperm count and reduce their, their health because they're working with big pharma. Okay. <laughs> so you get them sick by carrying these get weak ass. Pills. Yeah. They get them on this pill. No right? immune system, right. no muscles. And see, you know, I don't take no pills and I carry 19 You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, when I had COVID, I don't know if we can say that word, but when I had COVID, I was doing push ups, pacing around the room and I didn't need it. So you I, had COVID, huh? Here we well, go. no, no, no. We're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're not, I'm not there. trying to get on that, but you know, basically I told COVID, and, uh, I don't really know if I had it, but you know, the, the strips that I'm sure are, are designed to say you have it or you don't. Josh, did you have it? I, uh, I didn't need one. I had, I didn't must, get COVID. You must've been carrying a right, you, I think I rubbed a 1911 <laughs> all over me. Right. But no, I, and I'm not trying to get, you know, that, yeah. that whole Yeah. We're going to get the, but, we're, we're going to, we're going to get the little, you know, anti-health. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. False information. False sorry, information. Sorry about that. Yeah. I apologize. Have we got any of those yet? 
Uh, we did once when we yeah. said something about COVID back in the day. Well, you can cut good. that out if you want, but I'm you know, not. I mean, well, but you know, the the nineteen eleven, we we really lean into that. You're a man. No, what you actually said on this post is, uh, you know, we're not saying it's not going to make your balls bigger, but science is science, right? Oh yeah, I did talk about a bit. <laughs> yeah, I did and, talk and, about and so so I, so I was like, okay, so so apparently, and I I commented on it on my with my personal Instagram and said, so apparently, I have to tell you, we can't use the word balls. And then the next post, I posted a picture and I said, if you carry one, it was a picture of a 1911, obviously. And I said, if you carry one of these, you probably know which bathroom to use. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I basically made a connection. One time at a show, I made a connection between the... Uh, between, How'd that go over? Oh, dude, they love it. And I made a connection between <laughs> transgenderism, the rise of that, and people carrying polymer pistols. <laughs> and the science says, you know, Glock came out in the 80s. What has happened since? We've gone You've down never got called in the office. No, because no. he works in North Carolina. No one wants right, to go there. I, I do no one wants to most. go there. Like a <laughs> Zoom call him, like, or anything? Change the password. No, we did. We did have to talk to HR one time when he showed up on a Zoom call without a shirt. Oh like, yeah. So my parents have a house in the Keys. I work remote. I don't think about this. My parents have a house in the Keys, and I went down there to visit them, and I showed up on the Zoom call, and it's the on Duck Key on the like the background was the Atlantic Ocean. And I was oh, we didn't see that. All we saw I was, was just in, a mat of hair. Chip yeah, I was in. Hair. I was in the pool. They have a they have, we they have a table in the pool. I was in the pool on the Zoom call. Hey y'all, I'm, numbers are looking good this week, and they're like, "What are you doing?" I didn't tell them I was going there. Fucking pool. I was like, "What? I mean, this don't affect you. I'm selling guns, son. You know." Yeah, but we we we've got our you know, was, we have we have our office admin lady who's looking at you like getting all red and flush, and you know, HR had to have a talk, and so now we have a new rule: you have to have clothes on on yeah. our Zoom calls. That'd and be was, weird in the pool, though. Right. Was that? See, they don't. Think You'd be weird to have clothes <laughs> yeah, on in good. the pool. Well, then don't be in the pool. And see, that's yeah. the that's the right. joy of the of alchemy, right? Is it's just so off the cuff, you know? Like, it, yeah, of course, the alchemy marketing kid is in a pool in the keys, and I had I had that gun like laying up on the towel, like net right behind me, you know, <laughs> cock lock and ready to rock. Once just, again, no one was paying just attention because it saw was just a shark. It was just your. your I'd so your, shoot your, a shark. It was just your, you know, your chest hair and which is fact, and, and, and your nips were on too, like. That, you can't have nips on I mean, Zoom call. Would the dude. water break that? If if you were like four feet of water, you pop a oh, shark yeah, from no, the dock. It's it's yeah, that 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 round is going like eight hundred and fifty feet per second out of a five inch gun. That's four and a quarter. It water will it dramatically reduce the speed of that bullet. What's it take to get one of these flat trigger rail and this lockup? This is the best gun this year. We I'll, I'll we, we so so we do have to talk about the lockup, okay? right? Because so so the lockup on that gun so the 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 prototype first Quantico single stack right. that I've got has so much lockup that we don't bring it out at shows because what happens is people explain to me lockup real quick I got you here, here. help here. me out oh, help so me out Phil. Lockup, talk, so, to, talk to him right. when he's when he does the walk me through so and I'll be honest with you you know lockup is and let me talk, talk go ahead talk about the hood yeah. and the shroud go ahead. well well you know I mean there there's so much to get into. But the lockup essentially refers to how tight that barrel is when it's in battery. And the idea is that it will be tighter fit over, over a longer period of time, the, the harder fit it is. The accuracy if will be maintained. The yeah. fit if it starts out super, super tight, like, because it's going to wear, when you start pulling that back, feel the difference of that. Well, that barrel hood and all that, when it goes up into the slide, it's locked up. Yeah. yeah tighter well okay. there, there's th there's upper lugs and so there's upper lugs that's being pushed up into but anyway e eli will go i, I wanted to but he's got he's no got i mean it, it's really there's there's a lot to, that goes into barrel and a gun we actually have a video on on barreling but um you know and there there really isn't a wrong that's my carry gun so i'm, I'm happy that you do there really, really isn't like anything wrong with that that gun's a little bit more uh smooth to operate but uh over time a harder fit gun will be a little bit you know, it has a little bit more longevity, and um, and that that's up for debate. It I is, think. but yeah, but I don't think me, that's actually been for proven. Me, but yeah, a, a tight gun. So I I have a single or I have a, a a Quantico high cap hard chrome nine millimeter that's got a good amount of lockup. And the reason that I like that the the lockup is where the the upper lugs we just talked about that, but it, it it sets the timing right on the gun. It's like you know you got timing on in your car. Mm -hmm. The timing is set right to where the gun doesn't unlock prematurely yeah because mm -hmm. premature unlock that's bad premature like, premature you premature. don't want to be premature anything you want to have yeah premature. anything premature. Premature. well yeah yeah premature yeah premature. can i say that i i think so he just yeah. did i think well. there's something <laughs> but but it it sets the timing it's like you can feel the entire gun you can feel it unlocking you can feel it kind cycling. of in slow motion in slow motion yeah. and we're only talking a 20th of a second 
Okay. What? Well, less than a 20. It's almost like a radial late. delay blowback almost. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yes, which is exactly yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Well, well, oh yeah, he, we've you, talked you about just took this. the words out yeah. of yeah. Yeah. on your on your exactly. on your MP5. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So well, it's yeah, got a, sh- it's oh, got a ra- radial delay blowback, right? Yes. So that's basically the unlocking is different than just a straight blowback. Of, you have to actually unlock the bolt, mm-hmm. right, for it to come back. That's what yeah. smooths sure. out the action. And that's why nine millimeter AR15s suck. Well, right. Yeah. Well, because they're they're all direct. Yeah. Well, they do have some radial delay blowback bolt. They do have them. some. Yes, yeah. CMMG has yeah. has theirs, but direct blowback versus you know the 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 roller lock, the radial delay you blowback of the MT5. Yeah, the it, it just it it's the whole process of it unlocking, and then that the whole action is delayed and it's timed properly. That timing does so much and changes the entire recoil, the entire feel of a gun. So when you have a gun that has hard lockup or extra lockup it's going to just feel different even though it may be performing you know objectively the same the 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 cycle time is the same the accuracy is the same the trigger weight's the same the feel is a little bit the feel is different but there is a there is a big con from you know as i mentioned i do a lot of different things at alchemy and the big con is the customer service aspect so this is a great story um that you will absolutely love because and i and i and and when i'm going to preface this with i am not upset with our customer i would never be upset with one of our customers i am so pissed off at this gun shop i don't know who the gun shop is but whoever they are so i had a customer and he's from new jersey and he calls me and he's got this really really awesome new jersey accent you know a lot of people think southerners hate yankees i just like listening to them talk you, know. you, you from jersey where are you from oh yeah i'm from, <laughs> yeah, I'm from manhattan manhattan is that is that what place Dude, over i tell you what it's been so long since i've heard this accent it makes me feel so good well you know it's like bis- it's, like, fly it's like biscuits and gravy son you know it's, it's just great but you know i had a customer call me and he's he's distraught and he's calling me. He's like, man, like I'm gonna have to send my gun back. I, I can't even I can't even take it home from the gun store. And I'm like, I'm I had to like be like, hey, you know, had to put the southern charm on. Oh, you know, come on, calm down, come on, buddy, talk to me. Shut just just talk to me. And he said, well, the gun store won't let me take my gun home. They said it's unsafe. And I said, sir, can you give me your name? Can you let me look up your gun. Let me see what's going on. And he had a hard fit gun. And we don't do this anymore. And this is the biggest reason why. Um, but you know, he's he's. Uh, He's he's really upset. The gun store won't let me take home the gun. I, I you know, I'm upset. I'm gonna have to send it back. I've waited, you know, six or seven months. You know, he's upset. So he right. bought it from you. He said, "This is my FFL." Yeah, send yeah. It he's there, it, and yeah. he's going to pick it up. Right. So I said, "Well, tell me what happened." And he said, "Well, I went to go pick it up, and the gun store told me that it was broken." And I said, "Well, how?" And he said, "Well, they can't get it open." <laughs> and I went. Wow, well, that's not really broken. I just, you just got to shoot it, man. And he goes, no, 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 they, they, it won't open. They got this jack dude. He can't open it up. And I went, well, I don't care how jacked you are if you don't know how to open that gun. I mean, you, there's a certain way, like a really, like even that gun's not truly hard fit. Like right. a real hard fit gun, you kind of have to know how to work yep. it. Um, and I said, well, I, I, you know, uh, why? what are they saying is wrong? And this is no lie. This came from, and I said, let me ask you a question. I was like, they're not one of our dealers, are they? And I looked them up. They weren't. And uh, he's like, yeah, but they're X, Y, and Z custom 1911 dealer. And I went, okay, they should know how to handle 1911s. And he said, yeah, they told me that the gun will blow up if I shoot it like this. And I said, well, can you explain that to me? Because this is an extreme, he's a 45. I said, it's extremely low pressure round. I mean, I, am I saying that the gun can't blow up, you know, the world's a strange place. Just because that jack dude can't pull that slide right. back. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. said, but, I said, what are they saying? They're saying, well, he goes, well, the gases have no, you're going to love this, because I can tell that you know <laughs> a little bit about how guns operate. Uh, he said, the gases have nowhere to escape. Now, on a, on a normal gun, and I'm not trying to talk down to you, you know, yeah. I'm just trying to right. set, no, the, set the stage, right. you know. On a normal, like an AR-15. Where's the projectile going to go? Exactly. On an AR-15, right, There, the bullet goes out, there's a gas tube. Mm-hmm. The gases are caught. They go back in. They cycle the weapon. On 1911, it's recall operated. Okay, so the gun base gun locks based on the recall of the, of the round. All the gases go out the out the hole with the bullet. And so I said, "What, what do you mean it's going to blow up?" He goes, "Well, the gases will have nowhere to go. That's what the gun store's telling me." And I said, "The gun store told you the gases will have nowhere to go on a 1911?" He goes, "Yeah." And I was like. They're going out the 45 caliber size Same hole. place that bullet's going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the end of the gun. And he goes, really? And I said, buddy, I said, here, you got three ways of unlocking this pistol. And I'm about, I'm about to make you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, you walk up in there. 
and you're going to either, you're going to, and I wouldn't show this on camera, but one of the ways you work a hard fit gun is you either, you have to get it out of its lockup. So you either pop it from the front. So I want you to hold the gun, finger off the trigger, obviously. Um, and I want you to first pull the hammer back because you don't want to even have to worry about the mainspring giving you issues. So pull the hammer back, take the front, pop the, pop the gun open. Once that pop, you'll hear it. And once it pops open, then you can work the slide. The second way is you can go in from the front, you grab the top of the slide, you use the, the trigger guard as uh, leverage, and you pop it open. And the third way is to do that basically using the back of the, the gun and, and going over the top of the slide. You just pop it open. You have to get past the initial lockup. And I said, walk back in there, ask for your gun. And I said, pop it open. He got, he calls me back. Oh, I'm so excited. This gun's so well fit. I'm, I'm bringing it home. <laughs> you know, they said, they said they never seen anything like that. So much and, room for the gas now. Yeah. yeah there's I, so much room for the gas now. And I'm just, yeah, right, right. Yeah. The guy, they found the gas tube in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know, and, and there have been several cut cu like easy customer service things. I had a gun actually sent back. The customer would not shoot it because mm -hmm. he was like, there's something wrong, something wrong. He sent it back. I looked at it. I'm like, dude, this is just an absurdly excellent fit gun. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and people just aren't used to that because we live in the, in a polymer age. We will, we live in a, in an easy going gun age. You know, we are always looking for making guns easier to rack. And, and that's really the big thing is, uh, you know, dealing with the customer service aspect of, of, of uh, manufacturing an old world gun in a new world age. Hey everybody, it's Josh Henning here, co-host of the Ironclad Original Oil & Whiskey Podcast. In addition to producing podcasts like Oil & Whiskey, Change Agents with Andy Stump, Danger Close with Jack Carr and others, Ironclad also works with some of the world's biggest brands like Mechanics Wear, Under Armour, the Navy SEAL Foundation, Anthem, and a ton of others to create industry-leading custom film series, commercials, podcasts, and more. We can also get your message in front of an audience of millions by placing it on podcasts and series just like this one. To check out more about Ironclad and see how they can help evaluate your company, brand, or business, check out thisisironclad.com. It, it, it's, it, sorry, go ahead. But well, it, I guess my, I wanted to hit on this is from a, talking about the gun store. The gun stores as a whole, there's good and bad, right? <laughs> and could just the, be a bad sales guy. I didn't know. Well, the, and the thing right. I, we've, right. we we just Absolutely. talked to a guy the other day, whatever, and, you know, trying to buy a gun, and they just we we liken it to liquor and bourbon purchasing, unfortunately, because I can I can't even imagine the amount of questions that they have to deal with on a daily basis, and you do get jaded. You go to the liquor store, generally. There is some outliers, but generally liquor stores. You besides, got, you got Pappy. Gar yeah, you go in. You got, you got any Pappy? <laughs> and they're so tired of hearing it, and they're not. If you say, and then you well, say, "Hey, have you ever tried Pappy?" Like right. Pappy's, oh, Pappy's good. Yeah, but and then what well, you get, they they're not going to really give you recommendations. Oh well, if you like Pappy, right, or yeah. you're trying to find it, these are some. They're just done with it, right? And now, if you go to Garfield's Beverage Warehouse and Liquor Emporium. Any of their staff will obviously help you, of course. However, on the gun store side of things, you they do get jaded. It's kind of like they, you get a little bit of an attitude. The reason on 1911 specifically, I remember vividly probably 20 years ago, right? Going in. When he was five. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When he was, was when five, he was five I years was, old. I was 25. So, well. Anyway. Looking at you. Looking at, looking at you, trying <laughs> yeah, to get look, and, look at you. Dude. And I, you can't. You can't learn this type of stuff about fit on 1911 from magazines, from stuff. And I was consuming every bit of media I could about mm -hmm. guns, right? It was just, just like I did on car stuff. newspapers back then. Yeah, newspapers yeah. and, yeah, the telegrams. Cool. And you'd get it on the nightly news, the black <laughs> black and white. I remember going <laughs> After in. After howdy duty. <laughs> I've never seen black and white television that wasn't just an old program rerun. Just just wanted to throw that Me out neither. There. Fucking yeah, 20. Josh, <laughs> Josh got to witness that live. I'm watching Andy Griffith when <laughs> You are my history book. It. I remember going into a gun store and I remember looking at 1911. Really, I was just at that point, I was like, I just want one so bad. And looking at stuff, I remember racking one back, right? And be like, man, that's so smooth. It's so easy to smooth. And the, I remember the guy, older guy, super awesome. He's like, that's not a good thing. I'm like, what do you mean? It's so fucking smooth and all that stuff. And then he took me and I was looking at, I think it was a, I think I was looking at a, a 10 millimeter, like Delta Elite or something like that at point that point, because I was like, oh, it's so cool. And it's got the little red triangle and it's a that's actually a pretty red. It's a great gun, you pretty know, red gun, but yeah. And and I he's like, 
now let me take you over there. And I think he took me either, it was a Les Bear or Dan Wesson. It was something like that. He's like, yeah. yeah. And now, and I'm like, oh, it's like harder. He's like, and then he took the time. Again, I'm I'm young whippersnapper kid. He knew that I couldn't afford, but he took the time and he started, and he shows me back, right? He's like, you see this? And you see those rounded over in the corners, right? And you see how sharp this one is. Now, pull back or don't pull it back hard. Pull it back. Now, you see, you feel it starting to unlock. And just taking that time where from a mechanical standpoint, coming from a car standpoint, it started clicking. I'm like, oh, all right. So I started seeing the pieces in my head. And from then on out, I I understood not just 1911s, but I, I craved that technical knowledge of how they were put together on ARs, on anything else like that on a different level. Yeah. My point to all of that is from a gun standpoint, a gun store standpoint, it doesn't take that much time to, I get that, you know, if a guy, you come in and a guy's wanting to manhandle all the guns and he's doing like that and it probably We're gets old and you've been doing it. Do what? We're the automatic. Yeah, yeah, is this one automatic? We're, oh, yeah. we're at a big, what, big store down. Where's, where's your 911? Oh, that was fucking the guy, hilarious. This, this was a huge fucking store about like an hour and a half from this. I mean, it's probably 50,000 square foot, in right? In Illinois. Man. And they've got, yeah, in Illinois. And they've got thousands every, of ARs. thousands of ARs. And it, this guy started at the end, right? And he, like, can I see that one? Puts it down. Is this one automatic? No, sir, it's not automatic. We don't do an automatic. Next one. Is this one automatic? <laughs> and he literally, it's like, <laughs> Almost boom, gun, boom. Yeah. And the, finally the guy's well, like, the we don't have any automatic guns. Huh? Is that one automatic up there? No, that one. We don't, we don't sell fully automatic weapons at all. Any gun that you see is not fully automatic. And he's like, what's that? Well, that one looks like a fully automatic. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just> a- <laughs> yeah, I used to work in a gun store. When I, I was can't. In Im- I can't imagine. It's, it's, it's gun- awful. The gun I mean- store guys are tough. It, we talked about it when we had the North of Bourbon guy on here about when you go to a bar, like you go to a cocktail lounge or something. Yeah. And it's intimidating when you go up to order a drink. Mm. Whereas, like, you walk up and they're like, "Well, what would you like?" And you, uh, you know, you kind of like you, you like freak out a little bit. You're like, "I oh, just like, uh, you know, I don't know, like a bourbon and coke or something." And it's the same thing, I feel like, when you go to a fucking gun store. Because these dudes, they're so goddamn hardcore. You know, they've got <laughs> fucking guns <laughs> everywhere. And they're like, yeah. Not you. What, they're like, what do you need? And like, I, I'm just looking at, at this. And it's like every what time. What are you doing so, with it? Yeah, every time. So you, you feel like this dude's going to do like a dive roll or something like <laughs> super hardcore. And what what is it like? What does a gun do when you turn it on its side? Like every single AR that they pick up, it's always... Oh well, that's it's the standard issue. That's, no, that's that's, that's the John Wick. They influence. pick that sucker yeah. up, and yeah. it's yeah. always that's Keanu. Yeah, yeah. you gotta yeah. roll that's, it on its side, and that's some theatrics. And then yeah. you're like, dude, I, and then I, I end up just walking out and not buying <laughs> yeah. anything. Well, and you know, it's interesting that we're we're having this talk because when I were I worked in a gun store in college, right? And before I worked, this is no crap. Before I worked in the gun store, I was clean shaven every day. I promise you, people talk down to me every single day. I was clean shaven. So one day. I decided, or one one day I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just let it grow. And I had a beard before. And it only grows I, here, then, huh? No, no, I had a, be- I had a, I had a pretty, I had a pretty bitch and beard, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I and I promise you, people would overlook older people to me to come ask me oh, questions. That dude's got a beard; he knows and what he's talking I'm about. I'm like, yeah. dude, y'all are so stupid, you know. And I'm just like, you know, I knew the same amount yesterday, you know, today, and. It's one of those things like just from being a young gun owner and we've kind of talked about, you know, you kind of mentioned when you were younger, that's not common these days. Like a lot of young gun owners have to take it on their, on their, uh, their own, their self to really learn about this stuff. Because but you are learning by purchasing too. That shit's expensive. Like you don't learn. Well, like those younger gun, gun owners don't learn right. from a guy that's like, hey, right. if you've got X amount of dollars, I'm going to tell you the best bang for your buck is this, this, this isn't because of this. Now you make your own decision. I'm just telling you the differences between these. Or just try to get your money as fast as they fucking can, right. and then you're like, "Well, this didn't do anything like I thought it was going to do." This you know, is this that, is the beauty, and I, I, I'm going to actually be nice to you for a second here. This is the beauty of what Eli's doing. There's a lot of other younger Gen Z. I'm, I'm a millennial, but the Gen an old one. The I'm an elder millennial. Like I'm like the first millennial, like Grandpa Millennial. But <laughs> what Gen Z these guys are doing to to bring this knowledge in a way that they respect that the younger gun owners can actually you know have access to it because i'm gonna be honest i go into a gun shop and it's like the worst part of my day (laughs) okay (laughs) going into a gun shop is 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 unbelievably unpleasant going to a range because i'm just like oh god i I try not to do it i I try i try to so fucking hardcore no the problem is they're they're hardcore but they don't really know what they don't know and they just have 
all kinds of complexes. So the, the traditional gun store model is actually, uh, thankfully, going out of vogue to where it's not really as popular to have those guys that are kind of assholes behind the counter that make you feel like shit. Because mm -hmm. it's all about customer service now yeah. in the day and age that where millennials and Gen Z are the purchasing power to where if you don't have good customer service at a gun store, yeah. you're not going to do so good. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not going to do so good. And, and so people like Eli and we've got, you know, other guys that are really bringing the nostalgia and, and the knowledge of, of these platforms to social media where it's accessible for younger people. I see my, my son, my son is 12 years old and I see him watching, uh, you know, YouTube shorts and YouTube stuff. And he's watching, you know, Grantham, Mike Jones, he's yeah. watching all these guys that, you know, and you know, Mike's my age or a little bit younger than me, but like having this knowledge accessible because of social media is changing the the experience that we had to go through to where my first gun was a spring I shouldn't say their name was an XDS. Yeah, we can't use that. Name. I can't use that name. In 45? No. 9? It no. was in 380. It was in, it no. was in the Devil's Cow. It was in 40. But, but because the reason I bought it, okay, so it was 2003. Okay. And it was the first gun that I, I could was five. Yeah, it was the first gun that I could legally purchase in California. And at the time, I got a 40 caliber Glock in 2003. Well, because all the police departments were using yeah. 40 cal 40 Smith and Wesson at the time because of the FBI 10 millimeter, all this bullshit. This was still 10, 10 round mags. Well, yes. Well, it's, it's still 10 round mags well, in, in California. California now. So, yeah, it was 10 round mags, but 40 Smith and Wesson. It was a 40. Yeah, 40, 40 XDSC. It was a, a piece of shit. I, I, I think I shot it like nine times i think so it's a brick too it's a 10 it's a 10 gun. round mag i shot it nine times i go i hate this and you know i just put it in my my little safe at the time but we didn't have the knowledge to be able to go through that it was it was other people at the range that would be educating you and these are all older guys and they would just look at what the police departments were doing and if the cops are doing it if the military is doing it that's probably the right thing and it's not mm -mm. like it, it, when it when it's you know military contract or you know military quality what's the term What's the, the, the technical term? Like you don't, what you don't, like, like military uh, mil quality. Spec. Mil, spec. mil spec means yeah. cheapest, 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 cheapest contract. Yeah, cheapest yeah. contract. Yeah. You see, you see mil Lowest spec. Bidder. Yeah, you see mil spec and you go, oh, that's, it, yeah, it, it'll work. And, and to that <laughs> but, point, you know, to that point, we, you know, my, my personal Instagram has really, yeah, I, I, it, I struggle to talk about like, you know, my personal stuff like this, but it's because you show your thighs on there a lot. Yeah, I like short shorts. You know, he wears cool. he wears really like a six inch inseam or five. Baby. five oh. I'm kind of yeah. short, so you know yeah. you gotta gotta kind of do that. But um, I actually got some four inch inseams. Those are, those you are you two are connecting on a different yeah. level right here. <laughs> <laughs> see, I mean he's a good looking dude, man. I'm just kind of calling it where I'm I see it. No, it yeah, but you know the you, you want us all to leave? Yeah, yeah I mean we can we can make the room. Well, listen, we can make a lot of money with them cameras rolling. You know what I'm saying? But the world do anything for money. But you know the the. Big, one of the biggest questions, and especially because I've kind of been known as like the young 1911 guy, and that makes me a little more approachable, right? Especially for people around my age. So a lot of times I get questions constantly almost uh, about, hey, you know, I've got a budget of, you know, $1,500. What 1911 do you suggest? And I really try to, to, to steer people to guns that are really a lot of bang for the buck. And, and I'm pretty objective when I come to it now, if they say, Hey, I got 4,500, I'm gonna say, listen right now, son, alchemy custom weapon, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you need. But I've, I've been blessed to be able to work with so many different brands before I started working with alchemy and be able to put so many different guns in my hand fit on that. And, you know, I can really give a pretty objective idea. And, and there, there are some definitely things like I really try to avoid a, a foreign made gun. You know, I just do. Um, T sauce actually, they do a pretty good job, and they're Turkish made. They do a good job for the price point. They're super cheap, and they're not awful. Um, but they make guns when all the permits, Turkish guns. Yeah, yeah, of course. Just so you know, and, we, and uh, you know, yeah, but they're super cheap. And and the biggest here's here's where I really think about it, right? So I used to take the perspective of, oh shit, you ain't carrying a custom nineteen eleven. What the fuck? You know, who are you? Don't right. talk to me. Uh, don't talk to me poor person uh, you know, I know I just, I just, I'm so <laughs> mad I'm so mad I am so poor so uh, anyways no I'm the just fit, playing the fit on that with like it's a lot looser lockup like the other one, but yeah. you start looking at the fit of everything oh, yeah, else Damascus. well so yeah that that's the zebra gonna, Damascus we so we've made 27 of those since 2019 and we're gonna have uh, 10 more next year how many rounds that gun had to put through it 
I don't actually know. So so that was we shot it a couple days. Yeah, ago. we shot. Yeah, we shot it yesterday. Oh yeah. Um, but it it, it was the that was the dem the 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 hero oh, gun, awesome. if you will. So that was the hero gun that we make. So when we make guns, we typically make an extra one mm. for limited edition. So we have one to take f- photos of and put into our vault. Um, so that's the hero gun, the first zebra Damascus, and in that. So when we're okay, getting into like Damascus steel, we're gonna go on a tangent now. I know you had like a thing that you wanted to do, but Damascus steel. He's been drinking. Yeah. He's gonna get on a tangent. Yeah, I'm gonna go on a tangent. That, so that shirt's about to it. come unbuttoned. Yeah. Hang one on. more. Pop one more. Pop Let's one, go. One, one more. more button. There we go. No, but the, the so when it comes to Damascus steel, the the more layers of steel, the more complicated it is to machine. Because if you look at, I mean, you you have you've got a pretty good machine shop back here. You have tool wear, you've got your feeds and speeds, and you understand that over a certain amount of time, as this tool is going down the path, it's going the tool is going to wear by a thousandth of a thousandth. So the machine has to calibrate as you're going down the process. Well, when you look at uh, having Damascus steel, every layer that's in it is another layer of steel that's a different hardness. It's a different material. It's going to make chips at a different level. So something, a tool that may last you 100 parts, now with that many layers of steel, might last you one or two. So when you have something that's a tight twist pattern like that, it's going to be more difficult to machine, more difficult than to finish and actually make a functional part out of that's going to have longevity to it as well. So Damascus steel takes machining and takes finishing to a whole nother level of, of capability that is, is pretty, it's pretty incredible to see. How long on average does it take for a slide fit job? Well, on a Cabot, yeah, that's done on the machine. No way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Be- I'll be honest. If we handed, and I wish, dang it, we should have brought the the defective sliding frame. I should. We have, have a that. defective. That's all we, done on the machine. We have a defect- no hand fit after the fact. I mean, there's there's well, okay, there's so, hand so lapping, there's right? Hand, well, there's well, hand blending. No, there's not hand lapping. No. So yeah. so what happened? So so frame slide fit is done, and, and it, but there's different ways to machine fit a frame slide fit. Okay. So you, what what some companies will do. And, and this is a great way of going about it is is they'll they'll machine the slide and then they'll machine the frame. And then what they do is they measure the frame rails and they go back and remachine the slide to whatever that frame was. Well, we're not doing that small of quantity to be able to do that on every single frame and slide. So we machine every frame and slide to a certain spec, every single one, so that you can in theory and in actuality take a, a slide off of one gun and put it on to another gun and have a very tight fit and still have it function. And I I did it on a video where I took a commander and a full a full size gun because our commanders, the Cabot commanders full like cycle. like that 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 apocalypse right there. It's it's a full stroke gun. It's a full cycle gun. It's all still, the strokes. All the strokes. All the strokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all all the vinegar. All the way strokes. in. All the way out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so it's you could take the slide in theory and in actuality like I I put these little caveats on there because I don't want our customers to hear this and be like, hey, I'm just going to sw- you know, do look a frame the, slide swap. Don't do that. It, it, so look at the frame and how the, the, the slide fit. Well, right? okay. So, you so, know, that's, that, so the frame, but also the ejector. We, the, mach- the ejector is machined on the frame. So we don't have ejectors that we pin. It's that little like step part. If you look at the back of the gun, look at the part on the uh, left side that looks like a little step. That's your ejector. Yes. So that that part is machined on the frame. We put it on there and then we machine the ejector to our spec Pretty to bad fit ass. in that slide. That's why it's so tight. So Holy every gun, shit. every gun, when you look at the back of it, it's going to be gapless. Well, and and I, if we would have brought you our defective sliding frame that, that we, t- we have, like yeah. it, it did not pass our quality control. I promise you, you would not have known. It is so slick, it's not even funny. It feels like those guns. Now, on the Alchemy, <laughs> that is a whole well, different story. <laughs> Completely different process. It, well, and, th- and this is this is a good point to make on, on that, like different things like ejectors, okay? So the ejector, you have the extractor that's going to pull the round out, but the ejector actually boinks it. Yeah. It's the boinking mechanism that pushes the round yeah, out. Yeah, the technical term. The boinker. That is, that is our, it's, our it's, technical It's the term. boinker, but... The boinker. Yeah, it's the boinker. But, you know, there's there's so many different things, and, and y'all being machining know that tolerance stacking is a thing. Well, when you have different parts that are made oversized, there's certain places so cool where one. you're going to have... I know you do. You're going to have some gaps, and so, you know, ejectors sometimes are, but on the Cabot... We pin the ejector, and then we pin it, we stake it, and then we laser weld it, and then we machine it. 
Right. So that ejector lives on that gun, and it was made for that specific gun. But you can take a, a frame and a slide, and you can swap. Like I, I say, in theory, you can swap them. But Customers but the do is, not do this. Customers do not do this, even though I did it on a YouTube video, and I've shown you. I said do not do it then, do not do it now. But the reason, and the reason I say that is because, firm. well, it, it, no, it's because, so there's other things. We thing, try to be pretty firm. But there's the barrel. So the barrel, we still hand fit the barrels because there's certain parts of, of upper lug contact. There's going to be your lower lugs where it comes into contact with the slide stop. The, 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 um, the barrel bushing, like there's so many points of contact. Yeah. You do want to have that a little oversized because the tolerance stacking, you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, com seven components. And with tolerance stacking, it's better to be safe than sorry on that. Right. So barrels are going to be hand fit. Everything's hand blended on a cabot too. So you'll get a slide and frame together and then you'll blend that you'll fit the barrel. And depending on the barrel fit, you'll have a little bit more or a little bit less overhang from the slide to the frame. So everything has to be yeah. hand blended. So there, there is still a lot of handwork that goes into a cabot. And like the, the, the Damascus pattern there takes days to finish because yeah. people think of Damascus knives. When you see a Damascus knife, you, they go, okay, I took a knife. I dunked it in acid, brought it out, clear coat that bitch, and then I'm going to put my edge on They can't feel the ridges, though, like that. They can't feel the ridges. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's stainless Damascus. So what we have to do is we have to mask the internals, the breech face, the rails, all the things that have to have the proper tolerances, okay? And then we put it in acid, and the acid actually eats it away so that you feel the ridges on it. We have to finish the whole gun three times. So the acid eats away the softer metal. Is that correct? The way it works. Pull it's, it all the way it, back and do a slide lock, and then look at your like your frame rails. It's ribbed for your pleasure. Yes, ribbed for your pleasure. Yeah, dude, this thing is sick. Yeah, yeah. So those we make a max of ten a year. We have not been able to hit that. You're not getting one. I keep coming I back. What to he's this getting one. at? I love that you do. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm kind of partial to I'm alchemy. Getting, honest. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah ten, that's 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 ten a year, and is it always? Is it the same or is everything? Coming? It's a little different every year. And so like the first year we had um, mammoth tusk grips and the mammoth tusk, we did cross uh, side profile mammoth tusk. And those are very difficult to get and have be matched up. So we this year coming up in 2024, that's the 2024 mock up. Um, it's it's going to have uh, those zebra carbon fiber grips so i have a strange suspicion that right now it's like i'm in the ferrari dealership and i'm like oh yeah i'm interested like uh, I well unfortunately <laughs> no, probably, uh, probably gonna be well, a buyer except like for, <laughs> except for we ain't damn italians so we're a whole lot cooler. actually our, this fuck, our founder this has italian expensive. heritage yeah. so you know we have a lot of we have a lot of ferrari-esque things right. that we do but, but my point being is this this is an expensive ass fucking pistol right? those are I don't know if we can say, can we say price? We can say price. Yeah, because we're not selling them. So those uh, normally start at 12500 and we'll we'll see what happens for 24. It might, it's probably going to be more because everything's gone up due yeah. to Bidenomics. I've got, I got something I want to get to with you, but while we're talking about this, the normal yes. transition, you you do have something, the gun club, right? The gun of the month club? Oh, oh the yeah. gun of the month club. You you haven't Sounds even, cool. you knew about this and you didn't talk to me about it. No, 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 I no. I did no. not. You Until now. The gun of the month club. Yes. You have to uh, kind of have a little uh, bit of... It, so, this is, first of all, I don't know if you guys know about this. This is fucking phenomenal idea. It's crazy. Um, So, go ahead. Tell us about the gun of the month right club. Away. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can tell you without, you know, shutting off the podcast and turning off all oh. the cameras. It's, that it's like inside. It's that no, I'm just, I'm joking. You have to give us your bank statement. It's, it's that, that exclusive. No, well, there, there were certain <laughs> things. There were certain things that we, we couldn't do on a, on a singular pistol because it would be so unbelievably expensive that it, it did, it didn't make sense. And like there's unbelievable, we do a lot of things that are unbelievably expensive, but to do, yes. you know, different finishes and, you know, we we're looking at it and we had a lot of people that wanted to collect our pistols. And so, you know, I was looking at the number of people that were contacting and the, the, the requests that they had. And so I went to, to our founder and I said, hey, you know, why don't we do a, a, a program where we create these limited edition pistols that are all serialized. And it, it's an exclusive club where people get it in like there's no options because we get to spec everything and it's limited to a certain number number of people. So this was in 2019. And uh, we're like, well, let's let's see how this goes, see how the market reacts to it, because no one's ever done it. It's 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 jelly of the month club, but for men. And it's fucking rad. Well, hold on. Okay. Jelly of the month. It's pretty bitching. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't be shit talking jelly of the month. OK, 
Okay. Okay. Like, we, look, you're stra- moving stra- up to an XL, so you like jelly. Stra- in the month strawberry, month. strawberry <laughs> Smuckers, man. Like yeah. that—that's my jam. Okay. I'm with you but, there. But, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Smuckers is the shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but Especially anyway, a strawberry. A fuck strawberry. The, fuck the grape. No, the grape sucks. Yeah. No, because no, grape is like cough syrup, and yeah, it, it tastes like bubble. No, what's the the fruit by the foot grape? Nah, it's not my yeah. jam. No. So the gun of the month. It's uh, <laughs> well, you he, believe he's the boss. <laughs> I can really can. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on in my mind right now. No. So uh, the gun of the month, we were looking at it and saying, how can we do this and, and make it very exclusive, but be the ultimate collector's pistol set. And so in, in 2019, we opened it up for 20 spots for 2020 and it sold out immediately. And what happens is people become club members. So they have a membership fee and then there's a monthly fee that's associated with it. And it adds up to a total yearly yearly spend. And every month we deliver a, a, a limited edition serialized pistol that we only make for gun of the month. You cannot call us yep. no matter how much money you give us. Yep. And people call and ask all the time to and, say, can I get that gun? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. That's only for gun of the month members. Ooh. Yeah. And, and they offer a lot of money. They offer substantially more than the gun's worth. A yeah, lot they, of times. They offer... Well, it, but but worth worth well, it. Right, worth, but worth but is it, kind it, of subjective. It, it, that's, that's, that's how much the gun's worth. Yeah, that's how much, yeah. Exactly what they're what they're willing to offer is how much it's worth. But yeah. so this is the thing: these these gun of the month members they they get very exclusive pieces that we will not redo. We it, to our detriment, we will not redo these. And it was it started with twenty spots in twenty twenty, and then in twenty twenty one we added one yeah, spot 21. in in twenty one. So twenty two. So up until so next year's twenty four. So there'll be 24 spots, but people from the previous month, they're club members or for the previous year, they're club members already. So they have first option to roll over their membership for that serial series to the next year. So it's, they get the same number. Every yes. Year, so they're always, yes, they're in that spot and whatever. they're in that spot and number. Yeah. And that's in the, the six figures. Yes. That is a six figure club. Okay. And, and we just, we ship them and we, we have had a very good on-time delivery because we we deliver on them one a month, and for the things that we do, to that's be fucking cool. Well, awesome. yeah, and they they show up, and we have there's the the members have some very special perks that we never share. So oh they, yeah, so only yeah. they know they get really cool things that that they get as part of this club membership, and uh, it's it's been a very successful program. And can pe- you police the fact of them not selling? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it is. It is it is as positive. However, you want to look at it, it is a very Ferrari esque model. Mm-hmm. Where if we see secondary work going on, Go we we you have can a, you can not be a member just as fast as you yes. became a member. Yes, we, and, and it's yes. it's because this is not this is not done for the money because we so I did we did have one pistol that reached gun broker at one point, and this one pistol from one year's collection went for $39,000. I believe it was. It, it was it was 30 30 to 40,000. What it was as an overall percentage of the collection was much smaller value wise than that. So this person made a good amount of money and that's fine. Like that's their prerogative, but that's not the purpose of this. The, no. the the purpose of this is not it's not just pure profit and pure, you know, turning things over. It's it's doing cool shit yeah. that we can't I love do. It. That That's we can't cool. do one at a time. If you called us and said, "Hey, can you can you do you know a Damascus gun and then you know blue PVD and then do this and add this mag oh, catch. elephant foreskin grips?" Yes, and- I mean, well, elephant foreskin has second, it has a very expensive market. It's the second it's, time elephant foreskins come up on this podcast. Is it yeah. fetishes, man? Yeah, you can't shame them. No, you can't. yeah. <laughs> this is twenty twenty three. This is twenty twenty three, man. You. you if you're into it, you're into it. You're I, into think force. I think that's amazing. But but it, it's things that we can't do on a one-off basis and 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 do it, but we can do it on a limited run, but we don't want to do it all the time. It, it's it's a in-between where we get to really experiment. You're still making 20 custom guns every month. Yeah. 23 custom guns. Yeah, this year it's 23. I mean, and next year, next year we're gonna do some shit that's ne- like uh, it's funny. We say well, you've never seen this before. Next year. No one's ever fucking seen. I would assume you've got a, a fairly long waiting list for that extra spot every year. Yes, it is. There are a lot of people that are on that waiting list, so it it does not become publicly available. And I, I don't want to say we pre-screen, but we pre-screen, meaning it's if you've already purchased a Cabot and we know you're into the brand, that's the first step. 
because the one thing we don't want is people to purchase and flip. Yeah. yeah. That is not what we want. Right. We don't want this to be become a, a money making scheme sure. for for people and, and to to take the brand and turn it That's into a commodity. It's important for the brand. Yeah. Well, it's important for the brand, but it's also it's not it's not about us as much as it is about our customers that have bought into the brand that have that have spent their money on what we do and especially earlier customers that kind of took a flying leap on us. Yeah, they're trusting you not they're trusting to fuck us it up. Not to fuck up the brand, and not, not to water fuck, it down. Not water it down. So it is a very big responsibility to to work with these customers that have trusted us with their money to make something that's different and to keep it that way right. and to not get enticed by dollar signs. Cause it's very easy to do. And it, it's it's a struggle for me constantly to like you know, if we did this and if we, you know, cut a corner here, we could really do good. But, you know, to to go back to the philosophy of making things in America and, and from, you know, American parts, American steel on our machines with our people to the highest degree of accuracy and to not to not really follow what's going on out there in the market. But to say, here's what we want to do. It's not always it, it's it's never, in fact, the financially smart decision. But it is, it is the cool thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah the cool thing. Never it's the cool really thing. Yeah. correlates with the, the f- solid financial decision. But when, Everywhere I look ever. on this gun, I find something else cool. That that's the fucking gun. Oh yeah. What's your and that's take? Oh well. Okay. Actually, can we, can Compared we compare to this? Dude? Oh yeah. No, no. Can we pause real <laughs> yeah, quick? Yeah. yeah this, you know, let's pause. And this is not a pause, like a hard pause. But yeah. this is like let's talk about this gun, because what you're what you're pointing at right there is not out yet. This gun? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the ones we're going to release. Yes. Oh, shit. Yes. I mean, it's cool. We're okay. I'm no, okay no, 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 don't, just, no, no, keep, yeah, 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 yeah this, of course. This, so that's the I Quantico. Don't, so this is, this is dropping, like, soon. Soon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's Quantico Carry. And so a lot of people want to do a commander with a rail, um, as they should, because weapon lights are, you know, pretty dope. I, I like having a weapon light on my gun. Um, I, I would like to say, too, a weapon light does not uh, replace you having a handheld light, though. So you always need to have a handheld light, because sometimes you just don't want to point your pistol at stuff you don't know, right? So sometimes it's not smart to use stop, your handheld stop light. Stop fucking around in the dark all the time. Right, well, it's sometimes, you know, it's not... <laughs> just go to bed when the sun goes down. <laughs> but I would be lying, I would be lying so you to you carry, if I said... You carry a light. Hell yeah. I know. Well, I also oh, have an old car. So and when you have a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've actually <laughs> used my weapon light as a light one time. I gotta get you. I gotta get you a better light. That's fine. I got which we, one we is got, that? We got some new That's guys. My Surefire. We got some. Sh- Surefire makes some. Surefire uh, gave me that for free. So well, I'm gonna get. You, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. I'm gonna get you a better light for free. I appreciate that. We got some. We got some guys coming on. We got, I appreciate we, that. Cloud defensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I know. Oh, no. I know. Braden. Oh, they're yeah. They're, oh, yeah. So yeah got, no, they make, we got Matt and Sean coming on. Yeah, no, Sean, yeah, Sean yeah, is good. good. Like, so when when you're talking about the industry, there's really cool people. Yeah, Sean is cool people, and you another know, company that says, "Fuck it, I'll meet. I'll oh yeah, I'll march the, to my own." Beach. Well, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, the ATF wanted to order it." And we're like, "Fuck that." Would you we're say not gonna- that he's a shining light in the industry? Man, <laughs> <laughs> man, dad jokes. <laughs> yes, that's badass. That was that, that was, was pretty great. good actually. That was great. No, I, I love cloud defensive. I lo- I run yeah. a lot of cloud defensive products. I, I w- I'm running more in the future now that they have better pressure switch integration uh, on their rifle oh, lights. Yeah, you mean the Unity Tactical stuff? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Or, yeah. So, so because like, I dude, love- you're like a you're a hardcore shooter. Yeah. This man. this guy knows his shit. I know, I know, I know, I know, this guy knows so, his shit. So, I, in seriousness, like when people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm into guns," I'm gonna be straight up with you. I, I almost, don't think I they almost do. always. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to talk. We were you. talking about this yeah, on the way. Like, no, we talk about that on yeah. car I'm shit. Sure that's the same no, my, yeah. I'm sure when I walked up here and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a car guy. You're like, fuck you. Sure. Yeah. Oh, the hat. Yeah, I'm telling you, the hat, the hat yeah, started it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, we did our due diligence on you. And I'm like, oh, dude's got a fucking badass fucking ride. And I'm like, yeah. Badass. Thank got you. Some low rider Thank style, which I, yeah. it's very eclectic. And I dig it. Thank you. It's unique. I'm with you. I understand exactly what you're saying. But Josh is. He's legit. No, you are. You are. Oh, no. Your, yeah. Your gun room. I want to hear this. No, no. no we're, you we're haven't shared your gun room. I thought we were friends. I haven't. I haven't. Dude, I don't share my gun room with a lot of it people. Is I'm going to really give you a deal it's on not, alchemy, it's man. Not that big, it's not that big of a deal. Well, it's going to have room, an alchemy in it. The room. That's, that's cool. And that's a cabin. That's a, and a cabin. You don't have a picture of that? 
I don't know if I have a picture. Really? That's all. Maybe lie. Some <laughs> people don't. Some people don't take pictures of their guns. I get it. Yeah, I, just the room. Just, oh I mean, yeah, the guns the are mostly yeah. put away. Well, the, yeah, the, the room is more of a. We we enjoy the right. space. We I I did. I don't know. Probably three years ago, we moved into this house. I don't know. Six years ago, we were doing. It was a remodel deal, right? So making the wife happy, making the kids happy, we're doing this deal, making doing the house, uh, doing the bedrooms, doing stuff. Finally, got to a point we were about three quarters of the way done. I said. I'm tired of all my shit being in bags and in totes and stuff like that. I'm doing the room. Man, so right. yeah. did the, did the room, small little room down in the basement, you know, and uh, down at the foot of the steps and, and did it just put the, put a few chairs in there, put some whiskey in there, put the stereo in there. But then I was able to do, you know, two of the walls and, and nice. got Gangster. a good workbench, yeah. got storage. I got, hell yeah. I've got two. I mean, like all of us, we've got too many fucking things. I mean, there's, totes yeah. and totes of magazines and yeah. then you got to have another whole wall for ammo and you got to have you know yep. all that kind of shit right oh, so yeah. but it's we've had a good time down there we, it's it's a great place to hang it's a great place i like you said the cars you you're living this world and it's your hobby it's yeah. something that you fucking love and you Absolutely. live it and you wouldn't trade it for anything no nope. i as well we as well every now and then you need that yeah i got to do something else yeah, gotta do something oh, oh yeah. yeah so yeah for right. me it's flying um, okay but, oh, it's flying yeah. Have a plane. <laughs> hey, 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 do you, do you yes. know? Yes, you peasants. You, uh, you, you really. Plane. Do you, do you, <laughs> hey, do you, Y'all two are fucking similar in a lot of fucking uh, ways. Do, do you know? Do you know how you. It's the same relationship. It is exactly <laughs> the same. Well, do you know how you know someone's a pilot? They tell you. They tell it. you. They yeah. tell you. They tell you. So I was waiting for the right opportunity. It took fucking an hour and 15 minutes and like. Yeah, a lot of or, a lot of bourbon. You into CrossFit? Too? <laughs> yeah, the cro- yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah. CrossFitters and vegans. Oh no, no, no. He he. If he was in a CrossFit, he wouldn't go up to that XL that he you got you had to give him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Oh, you know, I, I stay in a large because you know I'm trying to lose weight and that's motivation." I went, "Buddy, listen, it's a bad look for the company if you stay in a large. Get, get an XL." <laughs> He yeah. didn't say that. He didn't say that at all because he was afraid. Oh yeah. When it comes <laughs> when it comes time for annual reviews, are you it's just? And it's how, dude, large looks. Are you in charge good, of that? Buddy? Large looks no, great. No, annual reviews. I don't know. I like. Is Actually, that a thing I we do? I don't. I mean, it's or, coming it's up gonna, on a year. It's, it's yeah, gonna come my up year on. is coming up. And well, so, I think he's doing a great job. Yeah. You think he's doing a great job? Yeah, all right, well, pretty solid that's hire. That's uh, that's my man right there. Yep. Yeah, he yeah. got y'all on a like. Oh, this is a huge podcast. Yeah, one of the, like, one of the yeah, there's right, probably if there's not Rogan was on this podcast. If there's not teens listening. I, There's at least dozens. Yeah. Oh, well, and, 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 <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and to that point, you know, it is kind of a weird thing. Like they they came to me from my Instagram, which when I tell they're like, "How'd you you know get in the gun industry?" And I'm like, "Instagram." And that's, what and that's how everything when, when, when happened young, for us. When young yeah. people like young people get that, like you could tell that to a 24. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But you tell that to like an older person like yourselves, and yeah. uh, <laughs> they're like, "What the fuck? How? What do you mean?" When I tell you that. When they talk to me, they almost never like, and not just them, you know, the, the gun industry interviews that I've had, they will one, one company actually had my Instagram pulled up on a projector. They never once like at old school projector. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, slide yeah. projector. <laughs> and uh, they never, they never once asked me about my college, which made me feel really stupid for going to college. And yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, it was college stupid. That's a whole other vendetta I've got. But uh, they never asked me about college. They never asked me about my prior. They really never asked me about prior employment. They're asking they, about engagement. Yeah, they're uh, asking me about this and their and and you know, luckily, especially with 1911s, I've built such a brand around that pistol, which is all. I mean, I do not give a shit about other guns. Like, I mean, I do. I have other guns. I like other guns. But like as far as handguns go, like I told you, I don't know if we were actually live when I said it, but I own two automatic pistols, and that's an old way of saying semi-automatic, but two automatic pistols that are not 1911s, and both of them were given to me by companies. I didn't. And hold on. I'm going to guess what they are. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, you're, bat, you're betting. Oh, man. This is going to be good. Oh, okay. I'm excited. I, I forgot. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah. All right. Let's, that was a win, by the let's way. Let's go. He told me about it. Huge win. Impressive. Huge win. Holy shit. We'll get into that. Don't All right. Uh, He's stalking your. They Instagram were given. Though. No, I, I haven't. They were given to you by companies. No existing. Well, one one of them was one of them. I one. Of, it's funny. I, I I was talking to my buddy, and if if you're watching company that I'm about to talk about, when you guess you purchased one of them, one uh, of them. Oh, it's a Canic. 
Absolutely. Oh, are God. you what no. are you talking what about? I, I hope that's not your guess. I ho- okay. It's, it's 20 <laughs> questions. That's I wanted to, I wanted to find God, <laughs> They are not I'll give you a hint. They're not plastic. And uh they, no, there was this company that's that's watching and I, my buddy sold it to me. He knew I wanted one and he knew that it because it was a 1911 I wouldn't go out and buy it. And uh he's like I'll give it to you for a deal and I said, "Watch. I will use that gun and I will get another gun from them for nothing. I promise you. Watch it." Guess what? I did. But you can go ahead and, and guess. All right. So you it's all all metal. Both of them, yeah. Forty five. Nope. Nine. Yeah, I won't have a forty five and another gun other than nineteen eleven. I just feel like you're cheating. Yeah. I don't, do that <laughs> I don't cheat on my gal and I won't cheat on my gun. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty locked in there. Uh, I know they're all metal. Hmm. I mean you're a gun guy, I I'm expecting some good stuff here. I know. I'm just thinking. I gotta think of all of the things that are out there. It's pretty stereotypical of a nineteen. Like when you when you hear them, you'll be like, "Oh yeah," because 1911 guys, if they go, do vary from the from the path of John Moses Browning, the they don't go far. Well, I don't consider 2011s because I have a few 2011. I don't really consider that like Any different? a different gun. You know, it's just a double stack version. And yeah, I mean, people will want to do that, but I feel like it's stupid. Just they're they're basically the same gun. So a Beretta, one of them is, but it's it's not just a Beretta. <laughs> it's a Langdon. Okay. LTT. All right. And they are uh, such a badass company. I love them so much. But what's your second? 226. No, actually, I'm not a fan of the 22 series of six. Really? Yeah. I just, they don't fit my hand ergonomically. Oh, okay. Stupid uh, guess. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, idiot. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, do you want to guess again or you want me to reveal Hold on. So you're not Brad and I think. Sig. New or old? Um, or? It is an older design, but it is a newer made gun. I know that probably didn't help, but it, it is an older design, newer made gun. FN high power. You know what? That's a good guess. I'm actually, that's pretty, actually a really I'm, good I'm guess. actually, that's a great guess, yeah, but I've had a bunch good. of high powers and it's, and I'm sure everyone's going to lose their mind because oh, you know, Browning's last design was a high power. First of all, let me go on a little bit of a tangent. It. John Brown's Browning <laughs> didn't finish the high power. Yep. Number one. Number two, it was made by a foreigner whose name I can't pronounce. He did actually come up with the FAL, which is a bitching gun, but the high power was kind of one of his first deals. And three, it was hindered by not only a European contract, but a French contract at that. And what are they good at? How how did that Food. how'd that sleepover back in 19, 1940 work with when your buddies from Germany came over. <laughs> Bunch of Frenchmen, I hate you. And so, uh, yeah, no, it's... It, I it, love it, this so much. The, high, the Browning High Power is, a, is a, a good combat pistol for people that aren't refined at guns. Um, but when you look at that gun, it's a single-action gun that has the trigger that is just awful. Atrocious. Atrocious. Um, but there are some good things that make it a good combat pistol. But... It's way too European influenced, and I'm saying that as the two guns that I own are actually the two non-Browning guns, are actually uh, mm-hmm. European guns. But when you get like European influenced, you know, weird stuff happens. I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. It is a CZ A01 SDOR custom you shop. Fucking yeah, hipster. Yeah. Well, it's a, you wear that dr- you hipster go just to go down the coffee shop. I guess. Well, and here's but here's the thing <laughs> is it's it's like toast. it's like the it's like the king hip because like it's a bit it's a custom shop gun, you know it's not a standard seventy five. It's a, why did I not? It's a CZ A O one S D O R, which is a terrible name by the way. CZ. Yeah, sorry, do you remember all that, <laughs> man. It's just one of those things. I, Aut- I can, autism. I can tell you about every gun that I own, which is I actually. For, for my age, and, and again, this would not be possible. I tell people all the time, like, you know, I have I have kids my age or buddies my age, and I say kids my kids age. Kids oh your God. age. God, the 1911. You're so, you're so pretentious. No, but, you know, I have people my age, and they're like, oh, you know, I wish I had the guns you do. And I'm like, dude, listen, I did not pay for, like, half of my guns. And and that that's like the, the gods on the street. Instagram people will not talk about that. I love talking about it because it pisses them off. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're getting that shit for free. You know, and and I really try to be objective about the shit that I get. Like, I remember when Spring, uh, the company we won't talk about, um, I used to do a lot of work with them. And I basically told them straight up, I was like, don't send me a plastic gun. I promise you, you will hate the response. Guess what? They kept sending me plastic guns. I kept saying, this is stupid. This is shit. I wouldn't buy it. Buy a 1911. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, listen, I don't give a shit about plastic guns. They're stupid. I wouldn't buy them, and I wouldn't tell someone else to buy them. But, uh, you know, you get into these guns, and these companies will send you guns, and they, and, and I really made the brand that I have on Instagram. Oh, that's so pretentious. But yes, I just, I put that I in made the brand. I made the brand 
only really nice gun. So like, for instance, the Langdon, that was the gun that I bought for my buddy. And he, I said, listen, I'll, I'll get a gun from them. And I really like them. And the people at Langdon are fantastic. Like to me, a company that where, when the company people, the people in the company are shooters, it makes me, I love that because there's so many people in the gun industry. And when you really break them down, they have no clue about guns and they don't care about them. They've just found a way to make money. It's I get a niche, you. And they don't really care. But the, the people at Langdon are fantastic. They are awesome people. And he's working on a third gun, ain't he? Well, no, no <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. I, well, he, yeah, no, he, yeah, he, we, no we, Langdon actually, I, I the, the one gun I got from Langdon is the only other gun that I wanted because they do Glocks and HK stuff. And, you know, that's plastic. I think he's working up to an airplane. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, I don't want to fly when I can drive. Have you seen a low rider, baby? I, don't, yeah. I ain't worried yeah, about high flying. Level, I'm worried about low three riding. Wheel, three wheeling. Baby, come yeah. on now. I wish I had <laughs> hydraulics, but I have airbags. But I feel like that accent really doesn't flow out of Dude, let me tell window you. Window of a low rider. Oh, I've, it, it's what I've said for fucking years. Dude. What's that? Oh. What have you said? I want. That's what all I wanted to do. He listens to to gin and juice in it but i wanted to i wanted to pop three wheel like oh, in yeah, a g body yeah nobody listens to so, my in, 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 david allen, in david allen co or whatever so, like, so oh he, that'd be so, legit so, i love g body you like, know that's, that's that's the a, thing is about my car and like i love talking about my car so i apologize i'm probably no, get on, a, on a tangent like my car is so important to me like it is it is literally like I, it's starting to become almost fighting 1911s for my attention. It really is. I, I'm obsessed with it, but I love cars. And here's the craziest part. Like growing up, I like I'm learning all this stuff about cars. Like no one really taught me. Like I worked at a race shop a little bit, but a lot That's of why stuff. That's you're excited. A lot. Yeah. Because sure. you're no, I'm, I'm, I'm not being. A oh, dick. oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's you're consuming that knowledge. Right. You and then, like, and I, I worked in a race shop, but, like, a lot of the stuff I did didn't really translate to, like, a street car, right? And it sure as hell didn't translate to a 63 Galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a lot of this stuff, like, I'm sitting there, and I've got a – I am so blessed. I have, like, the coolest buddy from, from California. He used to daily drive a freaking 53 Lincoln. That was – and, like, hot rodded out, like, like, that was his daily driver. Um, he's had Buick – oh, no, it was a Buick. Um, okay. that he, that he daily drove. And then he had a Lincoln and then he had a uh, few Cadillacs and he had a 59, uh, galaxy 500. I and had a 59 galaxy five. They're bitching cars. Green yeah. on air ride, silver oh, roof. Dude. They're bad. They're bad. And like, I became obsessed yeah. after, after my trip to San Diego, I became obsessed with that SoCal, that Barris custom, which no one my age knows who that is. That Larry Watson, which my car is kind of... Hey, the Wat Watson flames are the shit. Yeah. Yeah, nobody likes, like, nobody emulates that flame style. Everybody wants, like, those long, like, the lake, Halloween the hot legs. Yeah. Legs, but but, yeah, the, the crab claws. claws. My, my car cool. has that Watson crab yeah. claw. And, and uh, you know, it, it's... Re and like I said, you know, I'm learning all this Bellflower, stuff. Bellflower Boulevard shit. Right? I'm getting... Yeah. Uh, funny you mentioned Bellflower that. Bellflower tips. Bellflower I'm getting them. Oh, because yeah. my exhaust comes out into... It. That car originally, I found some pictures of it when it was first painted. It had uh, fender skirts, which I... Yeah. I, I think fender skirts are the most bitching thing ever. And especially on an air ride car, because mm -hmm. when you drop it in the back, it looks like it's floating and that's the coolest thing yeah. ever. But this car, for whatever reason now does not have them. And it's, it's a been a hand, it's a hand painted car. So it's not like you can, you can't really match that. I well, mean, we'll hook you up with some guys. Maybe you can. can. We'll <laughs> hook you up with some guys. That can. I didn't have that resource. So my thought now is to go to Bellflower exhaust. And I think that's a really cool. Oh one. yeah. That's perfect. Um, Especially but, for anything that's got, that's got a big fat C pillar. You yeah. Get it. Yep. I agree. And it does. It has yeah. that. Is that really like a 59? Really yeah. Yep. And you got like Supremes on that thing or what do you run it? What kind of wheels? Shoot, it's, it's just got regular, like five, five spoke. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't remember the name of them. I think they are. They're, they're, they're Supremes. They're Astros, aren't they? I th they, they are Astros. Yeah. All right, Astros. Oh, Supremes. actually, I don't know yeah. the brand. I'm, sa I'm saying I don't what know that if that's yeah. The, yeah the yeah. brand. I don't. Just I can't tell you look. the brand because I got them with it. I actually, um, I I was gonna keep. I'm like back and forth on keeping them, but I saw the True Spokes, dude, and True they have spoke, True Spokes step step you up they, just a they, little bit of more street cred because it's. They're so expensive. hardcore. God, they're expensive. But oh, yeah. they have these. Oh, and I'm obsessed with the original Ford logo, like the crest. Um, because my first hot rod was a 50. Well, I got a hot rod. That's not really the correct term. But my first car was a 51 Ford um, shoebox. Shoe and it actually got <laughs> the reason that I even have my car I have now is I had just got that car from a shop, which I'll never send another car to a shop like that. But it, they they ripped me off and a lot of other stuff. And 
it's a long story, but I just got it back, but I was having to go back through a lot of the stuff and basically fix a lot of things they did wrong. And I just got the carburetor tuned up. I just, they, they, the alternator was really loose. So I had to tighten that up and I'm like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym, head on down the gym. This car is straight headers. It's a 350, but I didn't put the headers on cause I was putting lake pipes on it. Um, which no one around where I'm at, like where I'm from, the style of cars I like, you don't, that's right. not what you like. Right. And so yeah, they're squatting trucks. Yeah. Right? The, it got, squat. I'm telling you right now, North Carolina, for the most part, and I love the state, but for the most part, the people have awful taste in cars. And y'all have done some fucked up shit. That's yeah, oh, sure. I, I will agree. <laughs> on cars. I'm trying to fix that. But you know, I was, I was at a stoplight and some old dude, old dude just absolutely plowed me in the rear. And of course, like I didn't have the connections to fix the car and the insurance didn't want to fix the car and they want to charge me a lot to keep the car. Cause I was like, Oh, well maybe I'll take the insurance money. And I'll go. And, I, and then I was like, cause I was super excited. I was like, this is my chance to barris custom this thing, you know, four inch yeah. cokers, sure. uh, you know, drop it, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And then it came back and they, they gave me way less than what it was worth. And I was trying to fight him, but you, I'm sure, you know how that is. Yep. And eventually they gave me some money and I went to go look at another new car. I actually wanted another shoe box. I actually wanted a Merc, but you like Wait, y'all everybody, have, down everybody there. knows, oh, yeah, yeah. everybody Merc, knows what the prices are on Mercs. Right. So. Mercs are my, like, uh, like, and not to sound unoriginal, but the Hero Hata Merc is, is one of my, yeah. One of my top three favorite cars. It's, it's funny because my... You, you seen the movie Cobra? Yeah. You like that Merc? Oh, yeah. It's fucking awesome. Dude, Mer but Mercs <laughs> are just so cool. You know, and like I said, like the, the Hero Hot Merc is probably my second favorite car. It's, it's funny. It's my first cool. favorite car is a muscle car, which is normal. That which is what? A 69 Dodge Charger Daytona. Hmm. I'm kind of wild, hmm. and that car is kind of wild. It, it, it's, it's a, a big, it's it's a wild a big car. NASCAR well, that's a big, that's, that's 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 a big influence right on yeah. it because Hickory, Hickory is the hometown of Bobby Isaac. Bobby Isaac won the 70 or 71, 70 uh, NASCAR championship in a Dodge Charger Daytona, then took it to the Salt Flats Listen, and he, broke, the, broke the record. All you guys up there in Hickory think you know everything about NASCAR and all that stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> y'all y'all, y'all know nothing about the Allison brothers. You don't know nothing about. Oh, you're talking about. Oh, oh yes, yeah. I do. See, that's where I'm from. Oh yeah! Oh, you really? Oh yeah! Yeah, sure. that, the the Alabama game. From, oh yeah! Oh, streets, I'm about man. that. That's oh, yeah. pretty badass. I'm pretty dude, sure, dude. So the Allison brothers, that Charger, his yeah. uh, Bobby Allison's um, Bobby and Donnie, and then his his number. Davy 20? Allison was that was my that was oh, my man. Yeah, he was the, first of all, he had the baddest looking NASCAR that there ever was. Which one? Oh, right the, the white Texco with the chrome wheels on it. No, oh, that's, that's an not Allison. The, that yeah. is Bobby's yeah, uh, '69 Charger Daytona Coca Coca Cola car. Yeah. And now that, that car, that's, that's what we know about down in Alabama about how to make oh good God. looking so, shit. Hey, <laughs> good looking shit. Hey, but did you break the the Lance Pre? No, record? we didn't. Yeah, that's no, what I thought. But no, no I love. I, it's funny because like when it comes to like cars, like muscle cars are cool, and I will always love muscle cars. It's, you can't. You're American. Come on now. We won two World Wars, so we could love muscle cars. Yep. With, and with these, right? Yeah, how many, how many right. world wars have we lost? Zero, Zero. baby. Yeah. You know how many Europe's lost? <laughs> <laughs> and, both of them, yeah, both of them. And so, you know, it's funny because, like, I, I like this big, wild NASCAR muscle car, and then it goes straight into like customs, you know, custom low, slow okay, cruising, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. like a Cadillac. Like there's a there's actually a Cadillac. I uh, can I show something? Is yeah, well, tell me what you look it up. I can so, look it up. like, let me show you. you I saw what, this. You know what he would dig. What was the uh, that car we picked uh, for the Builder's Choice at Columbus? Oh, that yeah, the Buick. The is a forty nine. Yeah, what was the dude's name? Man, that was that so fucking that car is was sweet. So rad. Yeah. So there's this that Cadillac that was day. just finished. I actually don't know if it was just finished. I just may have just found it. Who built it? Um, I'm about to pull it up. So this is the girl who took the pictures. Shelby Gould Imaging. Here's it. Here it is. So you don't have to. It's on Instagram. I don't know if that works for you, but yeah, I can do that. It's Hold a on. green Cadillac, and like these cars, I I can't explain it because no one around where I'm from likes these cars, and I just cannot. Like I love the SoCal culture so freaking much, um, and I'll get into a funny story about that too because people are really mistaken with SoCal cu customs, uh, and it's funny because they always. And I'm not trying to get like you know political or anything, but like they're really oh yeah oh there look it at is. that Cadillac. I don't even care about the girl. Look at that Cadillac. Yeah, thanks. 
fucking sweet. Dude, yeah. And like when you go, you. there's one picture, like they brought the, the work into the door panels. Like if you go to this picture right here, I'm, yeah, look at that. Oh. I mean, that right there, it's That's like building cool. an alchemy, man. When all that's done, it's done by, it's done by hand and, and that you just have to appreciate. And the, and the way they kept the lines and also I freaking hate big wheels on cars. I mean, y'all actually are the first people to do big wheels in a way that I think is actually attractive, like the Buick, the the Grand National. Yeah. That is perfect. Thanks. Like, that is how you do a big Thanks. wheel. But when people put big wheels on that thing right there, they're idiots, yeah, in my opinion. And I think you need white walls, which no one in the South agrees with. Oh, right. my gosh. There's some people in the South that still like white walls. Well, from my area, when I, like... What, I, they, what do they call those? That's a Vogue? Vogue. 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 Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, I I just love cars like that. So that would probably not be pretty high up there. That's sweet. I picture you in like a 76 Lincoln <laughs> with that mustache. Oh, yeah. You know, well, in, in talking about looks like and, and expecting what you what you, you know, like, oh, you don't expect someone to look like me and drive that car. So I'm driving down. We got this road right there actually in front of the speedway called 70. Well, that's the name of the red book. You go down and, and on Fridays and Saturday nights, and that's kind of when the kids get out their cars. Most of the time, they're one of two, one of three things. Squatted trucks, which are awful. New muscle cars, which are sometimes cool. Very often, they're awful. And then shit boxes, right? And so, I come down the road in an, a 63 hand-painted Galaxy 500. And I kind of keep it up when I'm going, when I'm driving, and I'll pull up. And they all stack up because the reason they do this is there's a few stoplights, and you stack up at them, right? And the first cars are usually racing, but the rest of the time, you're kind of talking. It's really cool. You know, you're kind of talking to everyone, and everyone's kind of a car person in that sense. And so, uh, you know, I'll be talking. I'll be pulling up, and I've got, you know, the the, the hat on, the mustache. And I, there was a group of, of African-American guys in a, in a Suburban with big wheels and all this. And they pull up. I pull up and they're freaking out when they see the car and they look in and they actually, cause the car's low, obviously. And they're bending down and they go, is that a white boy? <laughs> and I'm blaring, blaring. And it's not through the, actually the, the speaker system through the car doesn't work. So I have a big outdoor speaker in the back and I'm absolutely blaring Tupac. Which song? I don't remember what that one was, what I was doing then, but it was some, some, some Tupac song. California. And I get, and, and I look up at them and I reach over, and luckily I kind of know my switches. I reach over, I'm keeping, I don't even make it, I just, and drop the car. They freak oh. out. <laughs> they were like, that's the coolest white boy I've ever seen, you know? And they're like, that shit. That, <laughs> they, the actual word I heard was, that honk, it gets it. <laughs> you, have, you, ain't, you ain't seen my shoulder holstered in 1911. Oh, I, was, I was packing that. And, I, and you know what's even funnier, speaking about that, is, you know, we talked a little bit on, before we got on camera about, like, I get a lot of shit for saying words that a lot of our customer base doesn't like, like gangster. Like, that is my, like, if I were to see that car, I'd say, damn, that some bitch is gangster. You right. know what I'm saying? So, the my license plate is a is a 63 North Carolina license plate that says, I don't think I have a picture of it. I wish I did, but I don't. Uh, but it says, <laughs> gangster as fuck on the back. And that thing is, like, that far off the ground when the car isn't back you know all the way down in the rear and so you know i'm always packing I, I didn't have it on for that picture but you know yeah that's how i go out cruising <laughs> and that car is just it's you know it's funny like people are like you know oh you just want attention yeah, they're right like there. yeah the, people are like oh you just want attention i'm like fuck yeah i mean what are you talking who about? doesn't like dude you don't buy a car like that it's bad and that i was actually right there i'm i when i went out that night i didn't have a holster that worked with that belt because I'm kind of weird like that, and so I just stuck it in my waistband. You know, that's, you you look like you're fixing to give like a couple million dollars to the like the local cartel, uh, cartel or or something. He, to is, like, he is the cartel. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's he's about to give some million dollars to build some soccer fields down in the like city or whatever, so he can keep trafficking all of that fucking cocaine. Yeah, that's you know, what it, it, hey, hot rod ain't easy and it ain't cheap. You know, you got to do something. You got to do something. But uh, you saw this and that was a hiring decision. Yeah. This the, yeah, this was definitely a hiring decision, and it was it was a it was a gamble, but it was a it gamble. was a gamble. I mean, I'll give it to him. It's paid off. It's yeah. paid off. Great. It's paid off. Yeah. Well, well I appreciate we got a, a shit ton of stuff we got to still get into. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're like, no, I, I apologize, dude. We get, we're fine. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple. I got questions for both of you. All right. From all right. From your background, working in a gun shop, doing what you're doing. Say a guy comes. You said you you started going down this road a little bit. 
we got folks listening. We got folks that are been into guns forever that know way more about them than we do. You got guys that are brand new into it, right? Yeah. Forget if it's your brand, if it's Cabot. Yeah. If it, say a guy's got $800 yeah. to go and buy a gun, right? Not Don't tell him a brand. Don't tell him what to buy for it, whatever. What things should he be looking for? Well, are we talking handguns, rifles, shotguns? Handguns. Oh, handguns. Yeah, okay. Handguns are dope. So, you know, it it is really hard. And and, and I kind of touched on this when we first opened up. I keep moving this. I'm, I apologize. Move it all you I'm, want to. I'm, like, kind of weird like that. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, we touched on this a little bit earlier. It, it's so it's such a personal decision. A handgun. A gun that you are going to depend your life on. That you have to wake up every day. And, you know, if you got a family, you got to think about that, too. But you have to wake up every day and you got to look at that gun when you're putting it in your holster, you check in the chamber, whatever. And you got to say, I have to rely on that gun to, to save my life if something happens. And it's such a it's such a personal decision. It's so hard for me to 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 guide people. So the first thing is you just want to look at basic ergonomics. You know, put guns in your hands. One mistake that people make is that they'll... Buying them in Tiffany blue. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. First, Robin's yeah. egg blue. The, the first thing that people do is they, they do one of two things. They'll either take the first recommendation that's given to them by a counter guy who usually is extremely, as someone who was, as you might could tell, very biased, right? They'll take the first recommendation, they run with it, and it may not be the good gun for them. Or they will say, well, that gun's cool. They buy it, and that's not always the way to go. I mean, it is if it's a 1911, but, you know, other guns may not be the case because they're really actually not cool. They're just trying to be as cool as a 1911. And so you have to look that into uh, into consideration. The second thing is just doing your research, and that's something that I thought, found that a lot of people, you seem to be the exception um, from just talking to you. You seem to be extremely researched, extremely well-versed in a lot of this stuff, and that's really cool, but that's not the norm and, and that's not a bad thing. You know, like right. I, I would never think poorly of someone because they didn't know something about guns because, you know, I'm in the industry. I need to know, you know, and my job is to educate you. But what a lot of people do is they re they think, and this is going to piss off a lot of gun store people, they think that the gun store people are experts, and they're not, usually. There might be some that are, and if you have a good gun store, you need to stick to it. But they really put a lot of faith in those gun store clerks, and so they need the the – the failure there is that they don't do their own research. And the other thing is they don't do a lot of research. If they do do research, it, you do. I'm young. <laughs> I'm young. I can get away with that. Uh, if they do research, it is uh, it typically they pick like they get the first article or the first YouTube video. A lot of times those will be paid. The bi you know, the big articles and the big videos. What? Are, are oh, You're yeah. telling me that. I think yes, it's media, paid to, it's paid it's to media play. Media is, oh, is not you can't honest. Be serious. Yeah. And, you and you haven't you know, you watched any of them. They never say anything bad about I anything know. or help you make any type of decision. I definitely like That's, shit talking guns. Like it's it's a it's a very fun this is thing. A pile for me. of crap. Yeah, and I used to tell people that. And I actually I remember our we had um, a cig rep that used to come by and he would pull, wear plain clothes because you know he's being an asshole. And uh, he would come by and he would listen to us and he would sometimes pretend to be a customer until I figured out who he was. But I remember when SIG dropped their originally did the 320 with the M17 contract for yeah, the, the military. One, the, the one that one went that, off. The one that goes that off. That goes off yeah. when you don't want it to. Yeah. The, it, this gun literally would, would, uh, there's now picture or videos of these guns going off in holsters. I mean, it's crazy. Um, Bluetooth. <laughs> well, you know, guns have a mind on their own. Did you not know that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, that gun's not proven. And this is back in my early days, and the guy's like, I got, you know, 600 bucks, I need a good gun. And I, what I'm about to say will make me vomit. But I said, the gun's not proven. Glocks are. Spend that money on a Glock. Bye. <laughs> but, yeah, and I said, hey, listen, like, that's not a proven gun. There are issues that they're, that it's documented. You know, you can see all these videos that say, hey, this is a great gun. This is the next U.S. Army. That's also a super annoying thing when that's people are like, oh, well, that's what the military uses. And I'm like, are you military? Shut up. You have the advantage to not have to work on a government budget. Buy something cool. Right. You know, so that's uh, a good way of looking. Great at fucking point. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm like, do that. And this guy stepped, oh, I can't believe. And I was like, are these documented cases of these guns going off? Well, that, yeah, blah, blah, you're not. Don't talk to me. You know, like, and I try to be, I was much more respectful back then. <laughs> now I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I really try to be respectful. And, and, you know, one of the big things that he, brought me on for was customer service because you know he's nick the dick and i'm like i I'm, i promise you like i bend over backwards for our customers like i was talking to a customer on new year's eve there was 
there was fireworks going off and I, at 11:59 and I was on the phone with the customer helping him decide on the, his next alchemy. You know, like I don't care. I want to they these people are a part of our family. But you know, that kind of got into a big tangent, but really you just have to do your own research and and put guns in your hands and shoot them if you have the ability to do so at a range. Sorry for that taking so long. Yeah. Don't get mad. I'm not going like, to get mad. If I were you, like these guns like this, like they are such good base guns. And oh, what I mean awesome. by that, do you know what, do you know, do you kind of get what I'm saying by base? Yeah. It's, it's spec, think spec right. chassis, right? Sure. And there are so many good shops I can hook you up with that we, we don't do it. Unfortunately, we, I would love to, but you know, it's not really actually a great money maker, but it's a um, money loser, but there are some great, some fantastic shops like Mark three in uh, Linton, Vegas. And they can trick this gun up, dude, and have you a custom gun. And you still you still get to keep your your kind of sentimental attachment. Like sure. my gun I bought for my college graduation was a 1919 Colt government model. Okay. So built in 1919. And it wasn't correct. It wasn't original. Um, and I hot rotted that bastard up. And I sent it to, to Nighthawk Customs because they have a custom shop that accepts uh, yeah. accepts guns that aren't there. And we did a, a full hot rod build. So the whole gun on the inside is almost brand new. Like but the outside is made to look original. So it looks like an old Colt. From sure. Like it's if a, I was yeah. to lay it right here. It's a full-blown survivor build. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. If I was to lay it right yeah. there. Yeah, it, it is a, the survivor There, build. There yep. would be some small, if you were a 1911 guy, there'd be some small things you'd be like, hmm, that's weird. But you would probably, for, for the untrained eye, would be like, oh, that's an original. Obviously, pocket hammered Colts, like, it's so funny. Jesus Christ, um, they're so cool. So I know, they are. It's, that's it's, the coolest gun. Someone pull one up, I don't know what we're talking about All right, about so it's so funny because I'm so... We should have brought so, one, because I've got two. I'm so anti, like, compact gun. Like, right? Like, I hate them. Like, I'm like, if you carry a compact gun, you are you are not a male. And if you're a female, you know, hey, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But if you're a male carrying a compact gun, you need to check yourself. Hmm. These compact guns are gangster as shit. No, no, so no, no. The, not, yeah, that no. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He's a guy. He's a gun guy. And so that yes. is a 1908 pocket oh, hammerless. That is actually the second design of that gun built by John Moses Browning. The first one was the Colt 1903 pocket okay. hammerless. And fun fact, it is That's actually cool, yeah. got a hammer. Uh, it's just being it's covered. Just, it's shrouded. Right. And so here's the even cooler part. When John Dillinger and I, I really try not to. To like glorify crime, but come on, John Dillinger. John Dillinger, bad bad fucking ass. Yeah. Come on. He actually had one of those in his pocket and was reaching for it when he got shot in the back of the head, leaving um leaving the, the theater. The theater yeah. yeah. And so that's so cool. I mean, that's not cool, but you know, it it's, is cool. it's got some got some history there. It's so gangster. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In my opinion, the ultimate pocket gun, with exception of one feature, was made right there. Okay. That is the ultimate pocket gun. And I love the 32 version as well. The problem with that is the ammunition is a little harder to find and it's a little anemic. But the 380 is up there. So I actually have a 1908 um, that was built in 1926 and it is at Mark III Firearms right now. And he he kind of is the guy who I say, other people would be like, ah, no, nah, I'm not going to take that project. And he's like, fuck it. You know, like he is, ta dude, if you ever meet him, which I, if when you would go to Vegas, or if you're ever in Vegas and I'm in Vegas, I'll meet, I'll introduce We're going to do it at Seaman then. Yeah, oh, we'll yeah, yeah. And so I'll introduce you. He is the most, like, he has, he's bald, tattooed from head to toe. I mean, he's just one of the most badass dudes. And so he's like, I'm going to do it. Well, um, he's working on that project. So it's going to be a, mo a li slightly modernized. I won't l let him do anything that like would take away from the aesthetic. Right. But interestingly enough, it's funny you bring that up. I actually just bought one of them, two. There's only two ever made. Yep. A Novak Custom. You can look it up. Actually. You can see the gun I bought because it's kind of famous. Right. So I bought the 1903 Novak Custom Pocket Hammerless. And the reason that this is Novak cool, from the Novak sites yes, fame. Yes, yes. And he actually is a bitch in gunsmith. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got a rat. Yeah, he, do, he does some cool shit. And so... Uh, let me see if I see it. Is that one? No, it's no, not that. Uh, the top left. No, that's 1908, oh, actually. Right, yeah. So mine's an 03. It's the one. It's the four, magazine. Can yeah. you see the one in the magazine? Actually, that yeah, but that's it. The one on the magazine. So here's the deal. And, and again, I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm just, I want to explain this. Yeah. So the reasons an 03s sort of went out of favor and the 08s and a lot of the early John Browning stuff is because at the time he used a European style. Fuck a European. 
European <laughs> style uh, <laughs> magazine release, right? So it's a heel magazine release. So if you look at our 1911 here, you'll notice that the magazine is a push button. The magazine release is a push button on the side. It You push it, drop, magazine drops out. These guns actually have this latch on the bottom of them where you have to push the latch back and pull the magazine out. You can't just, you can't what's, just hit. What's the button on the side? Well, I'm getting to that. Okay. Yeah. Well, Come on. Go, go on. Get it out. You ruined the story. <laughs> is this, is this the all in whispy, uh, whiskey Paul podcast or is this the Josh. Eli preaches about John Moses Browning podcast? <laughs> no, it's, um, that is one of two. So Novak kind of understood that that is a bitch and carry gun and they decided to do something about it. So they welded up the bottom of the gun and added, the, again, two guns exist that I know of, this one, and then Wayne Novak actually built another one. He did a couple of 08s and 380, and they were a little more popular because 380 is more popular. But the, as far as the 03s and 32, this is one of only two that I know of. God, that's a good-looking gun. And it is. this gun it's has so the 1911 style magazine release, so you can drop that mag just like a 1911. And to me, if that gun... Wink, wink. And that gun came out in our day and age with that right there. No other pocket gun could compete because they shoot so freaking good. You're telling so, so I, I, why couldn't good. you bear, why couldn't you barrel up and do a, a 1908 and nine miller? Well, yeah, there's the, car, not the cartridge material. length. There, the the cartridge length is an issue too. Yeah, but also the barrel. Like there's yeah, a lot there's of there's the, the chamber material. pressure. So so 1903s are 32 ACP. 1908s are 380. Nine millimeter has such a range of barrel pressure of chamber pressures. You'd be blowing out chambers. Left well, right. if you're start if you're starting from fairly scratch, right? But no, the, but the, 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 it's the, guns the, 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 the the wall of the barrel of the of doesn't the give you from 380 to nine millimeter. No, no, the yeah. Well, what you're working with from that gun's design, yeah. and the other issue is the the actual length of the cartridge. So, 380 is actually nine by 17. If you're a European, that's what you call it, but I don't because I'm American. Right. So it's Nine by seventeen, right? And I mean, come on, they call it nine by seventeen millimeter. Millimeters didn't get you the fucking moon. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get. Have to you the seen moon. Ford versus Ferrari? Do you know how that ends? Yes, we yeah, win. That, that's cubic inches, right? Not <laughs> cubic Damn straight, <laughs> Damn straight, son. Uh, anyways, no, it's uh, so it's one of those things where um, the case length is different. So the nine by 19 millimeter is slightly bigger and that gun is kind of at the like that gun was designed for a 32 and so then they scale they didn't even they scale sh- it up they actually did not scale the gun up they just made it accept the 380 and going to a nine millimeter would really push what you have left in the gun in metallurgy like, and, like, and, and like the grip size and the magazine size like it really would kind of push it it would have to be a little bigger and you, you don't, that gun needs to be that size. It's perfect. So yeah. I, I've got a 1903 that uh, I put a threaded barrel on and then shoot it suppressed. So it's just yeah, like a, it's awesome. a, a oh, BB God. gun. It, it's, it's a it's, pop it's gun. I, I do backyard <laughs> pops and it's, it's amazing. Right into the grass. It's Mine are nicer than his though. So hey, Josh, <laughs> shame on you for this. I have what You are supposed to be my gun advisor and I come to you regularly for a... <laughs> carry like a quality uh, carry well in 1908 and never not, never once have you mentioned that not well one time have you well that's yeah in his defense like you should not carry this gun There's, unless you're ready for it, it's not for like when the modern aspect of gun fighting does not support like that gun it, it's got that, it's got a heel that, mag but i'm not a modern a, guy that's an awesome right. gun to own that that's not a gun for you to carry. That if you're if you're coming to me for like I got to have something new, fresh, with yeah. something cool, absolutely a 1908. You know that particular yes. gun would be absolutely you could totally carry that. But John just, Dillinger carried it. I can't carry it. I mean, what you know what? You know what? That, didn't end well. You know what? Fuck them. Yeah. Carry that damn. Yeah, carry it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. Okay, that gun. fuck them. Yeah. I you know I can't, I drive it's a, a carbureted. Sexy car. looking I drive gun. a carbureted <laughs> car. That's not smart. I don't give a shit. We yeah. You know, and so it's one of those things like. It's just you can't beat John Moses Browning, man. Talk about the champ, like Jesus Christ, dude. Yes, he, that, he's the man. Like, have you ever heard of the M two fifty caliber machine gun? The Meduse, oh, the yeah. Mod Deuce. Yep. That's who designed it. The same guy. He's a bad. The same guy who came up with the nineteen eleven. And honestly, that's just two of a plethora of guns that he designed or influenced. In every the, in, every tilt barrel gun yeah. comes from comes J- from JMB. Right. Yeah, so he, means, he yeah, had yeah, the original patent for so, it. So yeah, so every Glock comes from well, John Moses Browning. This this is going to be timely. So we did we started talking about this, but we never yeah. got to it. Sorry. Oh so, yeah, yeah. You want well, me to I'll take care of it. Well, this one's staying here, right? Oh no. <laughs> 
So there's another one coming. Yeah, yeah. I'll do all right, all right, cool. cool, cool. So Which ones are staying here then? Well, this, you this see, well, how none about of these this? had cereal. I, 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 we'll I was talk. looking at the numbers on these and like none of these are staying here. Hey, how, about, how about? So if you're listening to this right now, this is this is dropping. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. that, we should get to that. That yeah. and yeah. the gun. I. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. I was looking at my 9203, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait for that. All right, let's let's this clean gun, some stuff up. Yeah, so you can move my carry gun. That's the, the hard chrome one. You can move the yeah. five inch high cap there, right there. on yep. your side. Oh yeah, get rid of that. Yeah, cap. get rid of the suppressed gun. Um, there we go. So that gun, this is going to show, right? I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of being an idiot. So you yeah, see, did you see the little so, thing there? So yeah, I'm yeah. just yeah, I'm looking at it. All right, look um, at that. So if you look at, you can also look right there. That's a lot of looking. So I'm going to point. Oh, point. yeah. Get after that. Okay, grab, so grab this. Oh, look at this. This moves. Man, I'm kind of getting kind of <laughs> tangled in my dangle here. So this gun right here is the Quantico High Cap Commander. Or, yep. well, we can't use Commander. Yeah, we can't Cole. use Commander. Cole don't has don't that. sue us, Cole. Yeah, don't sue us, Cole. Quantico High Cap, which I think is carry. fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. So this and is the carry. I also would like it in a square trigger guard. We can do that. Yeah. All right. We can easy. That. And that's actually super easy. Um, actually, you're doing us a favor. Um, so, <laughs> no. so uh, you know, here's the thing is this gun is the Quantico High Cap Carry. These are both carry and what we call carry is a four and a quarter inch version of our five inch gun so that's the five inch gun you don't see it off camera and that's five inch gun just so your people here are understanding so these are four and a quarter inch guns with rails and the ability to do optics so the only difference between these two is that this one is a please don't sue us Takato 2011 style pistol yes and this one is a single stack night like a traditional 1911 yeah and so this one will be available in 45. And if you uh, are a little loose on the testosterone, nine millimeter. <laughs> and then this one is also in, this one's just in nine millimeter. So yeah, you got to There's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's okay. It's okay. You you know, I promise you. It was the first. Well, I remember my first. Well, no. It was the first purchase. Okay. <laughs> my well, first purchase was 40 Smith and Wesson. So I yeah. never make fun of anybody. And he will, yeah. yeah, he'll never find, he'll never recover. Walnut grips and square trigger guard on this as well? N unfortunately, no. You can't do, you can't do walnut grips. Like that one. Okay. Uh, but we do not do the square trigger guard on that gun. I can get you one without a rail and a five inch gun that's a square trigger guard. No, I'd rather take it like this. But yeah, you, flat, that is. Flat trigger. Yeah. And you can't do the flat trigger. Yep. And just like it sits. Yep. Uh, the SRO, Are you talking about the, the high cap? No. He's no, talking about the single stack. Okay. He's talking man, about this he's new one. 45. This, this new one. Yeah. Yeah. You want a 45? He wants a right? 45. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That's I was a man to, right there. I'd use some words, but my yeah. man. So, uh, <laughs> Denzel, gotta, your, your inner Denzel was about to right, come out. Right. Yeah. 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 I know what I'm compensating for. I no, got no, no. <laughs> and so, but here, you know, the nice thing is, is it gives you a, a, a slightly shorter barrel, which, you know, most of us here probably are used to. And you so can lovely. also put a, uh, you can also put a light on it, which is great. Um, because I, as we've, we've talked about, weapon mounted lights are a huge advantage. Right now, you're going to do a Surefire Ultra 300 until. Cloud Defensive comes out with their new weapon mounted light, right? And I'm, uh, which I mean, is coming. That's, that's maybe coming, maybe yeah. be launched here on this podcast here in that not too cool. long. That'd be great. But yeah, the two guns are essentially the same. You can you can spec them similarly. Uh, you know, red dot if you want on the on the on the high cap, and then without the red dot if you want. We just kind of threw these these two together um, for marketing, but they are super awesome. And a lot of people have been asking us for these guns, which is you know. I you can, you I, almost need to take them as a pair. They need they need to they need oh, somebody need to, to play with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, to, if you yeah, buy one, you got to get it a friend, and yeah. Well, you might as well buy the whole set, you know. So <laughs> then you have to put the two five inch guns. It's it's one of the it's our marketing ploy. You got to get different colors. Yeah. That's well, just, it, well, I actually hard chrome is my. Yeah, I, I is got my a, I got a hard chrome high cap. Yeah. Like the hard chrome is the way. To hard go. hard chrome is bitch, and it's an old finish. You've got yeah. a hard chrome high cap. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. So I have the first the first full matte hard chrome high cap. Yeah, with a red dot on it. It's and super that, that gun is bad. Well, I want a I want a hard chrome high high cap, and yes. I want this gun with walnut grips. We can do that. We yeah, can do that. That's no problem. Yeah. Walnuts in the in the high check, right? In the it'd be those grips right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your guys' thoughts on red dot versus big, red dot? Big fan, big, big fan. fan of red but I, I'll be honest with you. Like, of course, you see, this is one of my carry guns here. It's obviously iron sights because there is something about it's like it's like driving a it's like driving a manual. You know, like. It's a lot more effort, you know, it's old school way of doing things, but there is some kind of bit of, uh, what do you want to call it? Like, there's something about it that is cool, but I, red dots, man. It's like, so I, like I, docking a boat without a joystick. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a flex. Huh? Yeah. It, it is, it is. Well, in these day and ages, you know, and a lot of older folks, it's, it's super funny, you don't know about this yet, but a lot <laughs> of older folks 
are super apprehensive to red dots. And I, I mean, like, I'm really? telling you. Well, and they should technology. have red dots. It's technology, man. Like, they, they yeah, resist I know, it. But if you can shoot faster with irons, man, it's tough to go over to that red dot. And I have to well, learn every fucking time. Well, and so the, I, I can shoot way faster with red dots, but I can be way more accurate with irons on a slow fire. I don't. I don't follow that program. Oh, I get I get what you're saying. Yes. You could yeah. Shots down range in killable area. Way faster. Way faster red, red dot. In threat if, stopping. If, if you're if, punching if, paper. If I'm punching paper, it's iron. I'm with you right there irons. all day long. hundred percent. All day long. Josh yeah. had to teach me. I shoot good to be with the red dot over the target yeah. too with the red dot. Well, you're, you're target never... focused. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and it's very so both I, eyes open, target focused. I pretty much um, kind of tell people like it's like being the Terminator, you know, like and and I'm not I'm kind of being funny, but not. And the fact that like when you see the red dot on where you want, you good trick or squeeze, you're there. Um, you know, red dots take a lot of the guesswork out of trying to decide the plane of sight that you're trying to use and. And it really makes it easy for people. Like I picked up red dots almost immediately. Um, and I do like my next gun. I'm actually, we just started it yesterday, which is a hard chrome single stack 45 because, you know, two testosterone, wars. right? Yeah. yeah. And it's going to have a red dot on it because like a 45 with a red dot, dude, like we would have, World War II would have ended in 1941. <laughs> if we had a red dot. We, st- we didn't get into December 41, and it still would have ended. It would have ended the week before. That's how yeah. good that that, is, that combination is. You know, like. They probably wouldn't have bombed us. Well, well they didn't like when we returned the favor. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those things. Like, you know, you fuck with us, we're going we're gonna to go back. If, but, if you're listening to this right now, right, you can go to uh-huh. alchemycustomweaponry.com. Yes, and, Alchemy, and 1911. Alchemy 1911. Alchemy 1911. But if you Google that, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can place your order. Yes. Yeah. And this is just available, right? This isn't like a special edition. This no, it's not anything. limited it is, edition. It is built per order. Yes, so it's we, not. We have a, do have a lead time on What's guns? What's the lead time? Four to six months on a, on a hand-built gun. So, like, that gun, 100% hand-built. What's the lead time on something like this? A lot of years. Time. Um, he said a lot. Of well, time. If, uh, well, that particular gun, we probably would actually have those already in stock. Sometimes, no, they won't be in stock. Oh, okay. Well, no, so, so, so those mean? those are limited. Dude, edition. the sales guy just told me it's in stock. What do you mean? Well, <laughs> he's not the he's not the cabot sales guy. He's the alchemy sales guy. Yeah. He gets a little Wrong overzealous. Guy. Yeah, he's like, oh, that's fucking, totally in stock all the time. Fucking bullshit. This is, this is bullshit. No, I was no, told it was in stock. Yeah, no, it's it, it, well, it's right there. You know, I'll sell it to you. Damn, it'll it'll be done when it's done. How's about that? So, yeah, okay. Yeah, Listen, yeah, here at Alchemy Custom Weaponry, I'm gonna give you a late. But day. you've got to be you're you're twelve you're you're twelve months. Well, at least. Normally yeah. eighteen to twenty four yep. months, okay. but on limited editions, when because we have the material in stock, like specially ordered for that I gun. When we release it, that, it'll be about twelve. Gotta have. Months. I gotta separate. have. I gotta have both yeah. of those. No, I'm I'm happy that you really love. What's that? I love the apocalypse. The apocalypse is about eighteen to twenty four months because that to get the material for that and the finishing. Like people think the Damascus steel, you just dip it in acid and it's done. It, there's a lot to make a Damascus gun run and be reliable in the long term. I think but, we're placing orders, boys. Are we? I think we're placing <laughs> orders. Anyway, it's 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 eighteen months to two years. But yeah, those those two guns are going to be coming out. We're super excited um, to actually, you know. And and here's the thing: is you know a lot of people want to. They're like, oh, you need to do this and you do this. And it's so hard for a small company like ourselves. Like I keep telling people, like, you know, other companies will have more salespeople than we have people, you know. And it's one of those things, like, people don't realize that we're so small. And that's a good thing, right? You you don't want them to think, like, you're just a tiny shop. But we are a small shop. And so to do something requires a lot of effort. And so we, we did listen to people. They wanted these guns in a shorter configuration. And so we did. What's so. the price on this going to be? So those will start. Those will start out the same as the full the full size, right? Yeah, about thirty five hundred. Yeah. yeah. And what's the price on this? About thirty eight. Yeah. Yeah. Double stacks. Yeah. You. I'm. I'm it's the wuss tax you got to pay for having a nine millimeter. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but, but even if you get guns, a single stack, yeah, it's no, one hundred fifty bucks. I, I I have a high cap, so I you know I'm just playing. But we and we also call it thirty five ACP. We don't use millimeters around here. <laughs> Why is that? Fuck your. Fuck your. <laughs> All right, now we come to the standard is the standard question time. Oh Jesus right? Christ! No, it's it's rapid fire. Okay. All right, we got now we got both of you too. So, best car movie and why? Go, Eli. Oh shit! 
Yeah, he's not a car guy, so he's a good man. You weren't even old enough for Talladega Nights, were you? Actually, I was. It's pretty bitchy. Ricky Bobby, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm actually going to go with... he was describing his upbringing, I'm like, you're telling the Ricky Bobby story. (laughs) 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 No, I would have to go with... uh, I got one. Last American Hero, probably. Would be a good one, I would that's think. That's a first for the podcast. Really? Last yeah. No, I got I got one that's probably okay. I'm sorry. Last American Hero or Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Days of yeah. Thunder. Oh my gosh. Days of Thunder only. Like, but Days of Thunder on Laserdisc. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So I met I met Rob, Robert Duvall one time and Did he you was, really? Oh yeah, he was at a restaurant up in Northern California. He was eating dinner next to us. And we're like, Oh, Robert Duvall is oh hey, he, he's he's not acting. That is Robert Duvall. Yeah, he doesn't seem like it. No, he, yeah. no, he has never acted in his life. That's just wow. who, he is, who he is. He just looks up from his uh, dinner. Oh, hey. Days of Thunder all day. Like, yeah. Well, thunder. you know, um, Last American Hero, they feel part of that at Hickory Motor Speedway. What is Did Last they? American oh, yeah. Hero? It's an excellent movie. I don't know that I've ever Last seen it. It's about American the Last American Hero. Hero. Huh. It's, it, that, I would have thought Ricky Bobby and breaking what? out the This no, is no, America, no. I, We Speak America. I love, I love Ricky Bobby. Like that, but, but to me, I don't, I don't consider that a car movie. Like yeah. a real car movie. I mean, it has Jeff an epic, and it has a Smokey Eunuch Chevelle. Yeah. Which, I mean, how many 25-year-olds know about Smokey Eunuch? Oh, but Smokey Eunuch's badass, right? Um, but yeah, The Last American Hero is super gangster. You know, it's funny. I actually want, when I, I wanted my first car it's to be. Ripper car movies. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's the first that yeah that's a feather dude. in your cap concord with, radiator with well all the car guys that have been on here yeah. and, and that's a deep pull right there well you know I, i'm gonna have to go watch it it's excellent i mean it's definitely a, a a movie of the time but like you know i'm kind of like i said i'm old school like my, my favorite movie is blazing saddles you know so like mm. i'm i'm very, I'm no, very you know, old you know who that is yeah absolutely you know ju- and, and you know what's funny is i actually just saw the mist the the mystery car junior johnson's mystery car it's in rk motors in charlotte really i saw it in person actually i took pictures of it it was pretty badass also with the uh dan gurney gt40 is in the same room hmm. the 66 mark ii yeah dude jeff bridges looks fucking good there i'm gonna have to go check jeff last bridges american hero guy. He's kind of dead. What about you? Best so, car movie. Okay, it's not actually. So I have a couple car movies. We've got Back to the Future. There's a lot of like DeLoreans and all this shit. But the movie that really got me into cars, and this is really weird, is uh, My Science Project because he had a 69 GTO Judge that he wrecked in it. My Science Project. Oh, yeah. Google it. Google it. it. It's not a car movie, but it was the first movie that introduced me to the GTO Judge. Wasn't the Criteria favorite car movie? No, it's a favorite movie it's that introduced you to cars. A That's, lot of cars. It, well, what movie other cars. movie had a 69 GTO judge? There it is. That's the fucking judge from the movie. Oh, is this the one where they hit the switch and the blower turned on? Yes. I've seen it. Yes. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, they hit the... They hit a switch and, and, it, and all of a sudden the blower like starts spinning. Which, like Mad Max. It, well, it, it's it's like, spun, it spun, but it, sh- it shouldn't spin. Like, yeah, it, it spun, and my dad's like, "Yeah, that's not what a blower does." But anyway, like the the butterflies, they were supposed to just open. But yeah, the the the. G- <laughs> I mean, that is a rad car. Yeah, the '69 Judge. Yeah, that's okay. Good. I'm sorry. So that that was my first introduction White to Mopar. Balls. To <laughs> yeah. Mopar? You want to you want to hear a confession? To real Go Mopar. Ahead. Go ahead. I know this one's fixing to give me shit for it. Back to well, the f- if he's going to give you some, you better believe. Back to the future. To Back to the future. Okay. Now, I, will, I, I still want a DeLorean. Le- well, you. and this is where it goes south. I think I'm I'm with you on this one. Oh, no. Back to the future. The what? Toyota pickup. Yeah. The Toyota hey! pickup. Oh, the who, Toyota pickup truck made more of an oh, impact yeah. on me than it did yeah. the De- DeLorean. Yeah. I've set up a couple of it on Bring a Trailer. Those, yeah. That black. Oh, yeah, on Bring a Trailer? Yeah. Those are it does nothing. That's, that's crazy. That black Toyota pickup, <laughs> something about that movie and everything. I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. It well, just looked. The, yeah. It was at the end of the movie. Well, it was at the beginning. Yeah. But at the, the beginning, too. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, he ain't ever seen Back to the Future. I have to. Dude, I hate to say it. Because it's a Japanese pickup truck. Toyota I'm sorry. Was is that because it's a, I, well, no, no, I just, it I, was. I'm not really a pickup truck. Like, it's hilarious. I'm from cool. the, the land of pickup trucks. But like to be honest, like trucks just do not do it for me. Like I am a car guy. Like I just trucks. That's I fucking mean, awesome. Man. Like cars. I, I like trucks. So, so but, th- this you know. movie, my my dad introduced it to me at a formative time where I, you know, testosterone really started flowing, and I was like, <laughs> "There's a tack outside of the car." On so the the judges chicks would love that chicks would <laughs> love that yes chicks definitely want to te- attack on the yeah. hood outside that of the car I'm like that's fucking bad turns out chicks don't give a shit about gauges that much 
Or they, not, yeah, they don't give it. I used to put hey, gauges everywhere. And they who didn't cares? Care about it. Dude, they but they were cares. cool. They, I, they were, they were so I will cool. tell you, though, like when I got into cars, like I remember somebody was like, oh, you know, don't get in cars for chicks. And I'm right. And I got a shoebox. And of course, old dudes, right? The <laughs> low rider, totally different story. Really? Oh, I've been, I've had girls at stoplights like be like, pull over, like, you know, pull over. And I'm like, mm, can't, sorry. I'm They've taken, sorry. And I just like, gin and juice. <laughs> you're, you, know. you are missing the boat. Because you're bagging on pickup trucks over there. And if you want to pull chicks in North Carolina, anywhere in the United States of America, a square body Chevy pickup truck, the chicks, they throw their clothes at you. Well, you know, what's funny is and, I, and I've, I've seen you. that. But, you know, it's funny is like there's a Walmart. And this is so lame. There's a Walmart a where Walmart everyone like store. parks. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interested. There, in there's chicks. a Walmart where everyone parks and they all got pickups and there are some older and, and pickups. They, they there. park and their all rascals the, and all the chicks, all the chicks are there, you know, like con convoluting and all that stuff. Oh, and I remember <laughs> I rolled through there blaring like ain't nothing but a G thing. And course, all the girls right. were like lining the side of the parking lot. And I still had the car up and I got everybody's attention. I actually put it in neutral and revved it, not, you know, whatever. I revved it and put it back in the drive. And then I hit the bags and they literally lost their shit. And there was actually dudes that were like following me out. And they're like, don't come back. I'm like, yeah, you're trying to take our women. I, I ain't trying <laughs> don't to be trying to come here and take our women. You can, you keep, took that, my you, germ. You can keep them livestock. Son. I'm okay. Dude, I'm telling you, though. It's the square box. Square it, you got to have, have a bed to haul them that. panties around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, okay, I'm okay with with just having the one girl. There's, they're enough trouble. Out of so. 69 Camaro growing up, and I thought that I pictured in my mind that that was going to be the thing that pulled all the chicks. Being lied to. I had a 68 Camaro. They were not interested in it at all. It smelled like gas. Stunk. Nothing. Yeah. Not in the least bit interested. But you cruise around in a square body, slammed, lifted anything. Yeah. yeah. Really, there, there are, never good had trucks. so many people. I mean, granted, it's been like elderly women. <laughs> you know, you don't know how they get down. Curiosity. <laughs> they, they, they take out their dentures, Curiosity. and then you know. Oh my God! No. <laughs> You're so disgusting. <laughs> uh, best piece of advice you've ever received. Uh, hmm. It's a. I, you know what? I watch these podcasts and everyone gets this. And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's like I typically don't listen to advice. So like, It's true. That's it's also, really a, that's also it's an really, answer. It's really hard for me. But like, uh, you, know what, you know what it's going to be? Don't buy an old car. And do you know why? Because they, they tell you all these reasons. Don't buy an old car. But what they don't tell you is just the obsessive nature that it makes it. And I would never trade that for the world. But I didn't understand. Like, I figured, oh, I'd really, really be into my car. But, like, it's like, you know, me and my chick are looking at a house. And, like, she's like, well, what are you looking for? I was like, I don't care. I need a garage. garage. <laughs> yeah. and I you could put a cot in the corner. I don't yeah. care. Garage. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's so it, I've become so obsessed with it. I'm just in, so in love with it. Like, it sometimes causes me not to be productive. That's awesome. But at the end of the day, I'm so happy I did not listen to that person. Because that is the coolest thing I've ever done. It is the, it is the epitome of my life so far, which is kind of weird, but hey, whatever. What about you? Uh, mine's gonna be way more old, well, but well, you are old. I'm 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 substantially older, but other people's opinion opinion of you is none of your business. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, I we took that, that to heart. Way. Yeah, we took that to heart. Yeah, we took that to heart. Like what people think of you is none of your business. That's that's a reflection of them. So don't care what other people think. You know, people could say, you know, my my dad could have said, you know, don't care what other people think. But he literally said someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. That's a totally different way of putting it that I've never heard before. Yeah. And once I heard that, I was like, oh, shit, that is none of my business. So like when someone would say, you nick know, the oh, dick. nick the dick or whatever, whatever it was, I'm like, that's fine. That's none of my business. That's not a reflection of me. That's a reflection of your interpretation of me. That's not my problem. So oh, anyway. that's really good. Yeah. If you weren't doing what you're doing right now for a living, what would you be doing? I, you know, I'm not just saying this because we're here. I would 100% want to be marketing for a car company or a car business. Like, I just really get down with that. Like, if it isn't going to be guns, it's going to be cars. And like, you know, like like I mentioned, like I'm not like I'm very new to cars. Like I did not grow up with a dad who taught me everything about cars. Like I am 100 percent got YouTube and my buddy on speed dial. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? 
but there is I've never felt a feeling like when you have a bitchin' ass ride. Like yeah. there's just nothing yep. fucking like it, you know. So I, I would really like to be in the car industry if I wasn't in the gun industry. What about you? I don't want to say it. Only fans. <laughs> no, only only hands. <laughs> only only hands. hands. Hand model. Only oh yeah, man, you I, make I'm, shit I'm, ton of money. Oh man, I'm not, I'm not one of those face and face and body jockeys. Oh, you, I'm a, I'm a hand know. model right here. <laughs> you fucking brought that up. Didn't you? Was it hands or feet? Feet. Now yeah, feet yeah. on the chicks, man. Chicks make shit just, tons of money on the feet. Pans. Yeah, but I'm, I'm it's just different. <laughs> only hands. <laughs> only it's just different cooking pans. <laughs> <laughs> only pans. <laughs> <laughs> like damn, look at that walk. <laughs> That's a good griddle. I want. What would it be? Pilot? I'd fly. Honestly, like, pe- people ask about that that's, all the time. That's two in a row we've had, by the way. Well, no. So that's not nothing bad. No, like, w- once you once you break yeah. the earthly bounds of gravity, <laughs> like, no, seriously. No, I know, but you just say stuff, and I'm like, I know you. You're talking weird. I'm talking normal. You, you're just weird. I'm, I, I. But it, it, it changes your perspective on things, and, like, there's a lot of shit that can happen where you just, you're dead. But, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. But but it's it, it's it's a, a a fun thing to do, and it's it's a skill. It's a skill that takes a lot of thought. For me, I think about a lot of things every second. So to be able to channel all of that into keeping myself and other people alive would be a really good thing. When we went up, he I, took me up in his plane, and yeah. it was like I was watching him, and it was you know talk about probably the the when I most admired my boss. Like I was like. There's this a is lot. Awesome. There's this I, is awesome. And I get you where you're coming from. I respect. I've I've flown air yeah. quotes right um, about three times. Right. Oh, I have you've flown. I have. I've, I've flown. So I've I've never <laughs> I've never landed or you've taken literally off. Literally never flown. I ha- I have. So uh, <laughs> I it's a, this is a good story, right? Yeah. So um, years and years ago, I was in land development uh, project manager. We did subdivisions and shit like oh, that shit, over I in the southeast. That right. Yeah. So uh, the bosses, they went together. They bought a plane, yep. right? So they had a place down in Destin. So we go. So I drove, I drove and delivered a vehicle down there and hopped in with the pilot, right? They dropped them off. So it's me and the pilot. We're coming back, right? So we take off. We go up over the ocean and stuff. It's just me and him, right? And he's yep. bored. He's like, he's like, you want to learn how to fly? And I was like, fuck yeah, that'd be cool, right? Be so we, we get up in the air, right? And he's like, all right, grab the stick. So he starts doing it. So I'm flying. He's, and he you know, gives me like the five-minute, like, Watch this line, watch this line, watch this, blah, 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 right? So he's like, all right, now where that line goes, you, you're putting the little wings on it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm flying with whatever gauge that is, right? I'm, I'm stupid, right? So I'm doing what he's doing. He's like, so turn around. So we turn over the ocean. We're flying back, right? We're flying back to Birmingham. It's like probably an hour, 15-minute flight, right? So we're, we're flying. So then we're probably into it 20 minutes, whatever. He's like, all right, you're doing a good job. Right. So he starts flipping switches off. He's like, all right, that gauge doesn't work anymore. Now what are you going to do? Like, fuck, I don't know. This is, we're literally 10 minutes into flying, right? Yeah. He's like, all right, now you're going to look at this. You're going to do that. So we fly a little bit more. Then he flips that off. He goes, the next thing, now what are you going to do, right? And you get like, think third or fourth thing, whatever. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do anymore. He's like, yeah, you're just going to have to look out the fucking window. Look out the window. And make sure you're flying. VFR, yep. All right. Seat of the pants flying. Yeah. Yep. I was like, like, fuck. Like anything else you drive. Right. Well, yes and no, no. There's so so well, flying. Wow. Flying is there are great consequences. So then yeah. well, and we come back, right? We come back. He turns everything back on. He's like, "All right, fly from this, right?" So and Can't we're going back to lights or hit anything while we're, you're up there. We're going back to the lines, right? Yeah. And you've got your lines there, so line this, so you're flying. And it's it's what's wild is very minute adjustments. Yes, like the smallest adjustments smallest right? input equals a big change over distance so we're flying and we go like 30 minutes whatever and he's like yeah you're doing a really good job and i was like oh it's, you know seems like it's like once you get the hang of it i mean i know i'm not putting your job down but it seems like fairly easy whatever he's like you just cost connor twenty five hundred dollars because like, you went that far off route <laughs> went that far yeah. off route and he said the whole time you're going this yep right and you should be flying this because I'm overcorrecting, right? Yep. So I'm flying this. He said, do this and stretch that string out and see how long it fucking took and what we flew and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the whole point of that was you're doing it and it there's a lot to it. It there is something about like I could just make a small little fucking adjustment and it could be fucking done. And you're are you're in the fucking air. Like yeah. I'll I'll say this about flying, right? I've heard a lot of people that I would never in a million years get in a fucking car with 
They're like, I got my pilot license. <laughs> oh, no. Like, those people. Like, oh, you did. Oh, no, yeah. those, like, those, I've been those, taking pilot lessons. <laughs> those people take 100 hours to go and solo. And then they go get their license and like they pass by the skin of their teeth. And then you hear about them on the NTSB at some point. But like some it's, experimental gonna, aircraft. Went well, down. I have experimental yeah, it's aircraft. It's, it's 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 an interesting place. But the, but pilots, the thing that I love about being in the 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 flying community and the gun community and the car community, they're mostly the same people. They they like the same things and they hate the same things, which is namely the government. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. yeah, the F the FAA. Well, the, yeah, it did take a turn, but it's legit. The FAA, the ATF, and the frogs gay. Oh man, they, they're totally <laughs> turning. But them frogs is super gay. But it's uh, you know, it, yeah, yeah, flying. If I could do anything, I'd, it's I'd a go freedom. Fly. It's a freedom thing. Though. It's a freedom mm. thing, but it's it's also a. It, it takes so much concentration. Your mind doesn't do other things. Like sure. you're so focused on a, a one singular task that if you aren't focused in on it, bad things are going to happen to you and whoever's with you. So it's it. it it's kind of like a, you know, a ADHD. Yeah. Help. I just coming from like the automotive ground world and the amount of times that things just stop working that shouldn't. Yeah. Well, and it's your dirt bike, you know, side by side cars and you just coast to the side of the road. Versus, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Coast no, so, yeah. so, no, this is the other thing. So when you fly, when you're flying small planes, you're always looking for your next out. So as you're flying, you're looking for the next like for the next field, the next field for you to land. And when your engine goes out, because if you fly enough times in general aviation over a thousand hours, the odds are you're going to have an engine out and off airport landing. Fuck. It just is yeah. what it is. But you're OK, because the airplanes that we fly don't really land at that high of a speed. You don't need that much space. What's the distance when you just land something like that on 200 feet? Now that, that, that someone, but you've got to you've got to you've got you to pull up and 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 slow down at the last second. No, right? no, okay, you, no, you have to slip it in, so you have to keep your airspeed right, and then you have to lose all this potential energy if you have, you know, like buildings and whatnot on either end. So you can't just if you nose down, you're going to gain too much kinetic energy that then you pull up and you're going to take five six hundred feet to land. So you have to learn how to manage energy. It's energy management. Huh. Science. It's science. It is science. Right. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Lot I'd of fun. rather just let United Airlines science that shit right to the <laughs> landing. Yeah. I'm very happy low riding over high fly. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, the last but not least, I'd say to, to empty your pockets, but it seems like we've got like everything, yeah, you got everything. in your I pockets. Can, well, oh, I do have my knife. knife. There, what are you what are you what are you ripping? That's a Sandrine Torino. Oh, that is, that is that is so we actually we actually cool. um we actually import those. From Itali. From, from, <laughs> everyone makes fun so that's, of that. So that's, that's how I say a, that. That's not American. Then? No, well, it's so it that blade. You want to go on it? I don't want to talk about it. It's All not right. American. <laughs> Here's the thing about the Italians, though. They got good. They got good food. So I kind of give them a pass. The Italians are great people. So yeah, that is I like that it. is. So that blade is 100 percent tungsten carbide. No, what it's it? how's the lock on? It's a recoil. Oh, lock. right here. So um, this little red part right here, and it's super sketch the first time you do it, but you know. Once you're a pro, such as I. No, I'm just kidding. You just pull back on this, and it drops down. Oh, you're pulling back. Yeah, you're yeah, not you're pressing pulling down. down. You push it down, so it's called the recoil. You lock. see, so like the you more you the goes. more you yeah. push yeah, yeah, in yeah. on it, the the more solid it's going to be. But that blade is 100 tungsten carbide. It's a tungsten carbide cobalt matrix. Let me see that. So yeah. it is that blade. Uh, that blade is 71 on the Rockwell scale. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So very hard, and it retains an edge very, very well, but it still has a little bit of uh, ability to bend. So it's not super brittle. We're just going to, yeah, just it's, shatter. It's, it's not going to shatter like normal tungsten carbon. And I, I absolutely abuse you know, that. Yeah, knife. he abuses the shit That's out of That's a good-looking knife. Yeah, and oh. so th those, are, those are available on Blade HQ. Really? Yeah. Really? But, uh, yeah, and so... We also... We don't have them, them right now. We They're also sell them direct but when we have them, but, of course, they are pretty... Highly they're, sought after. I mean, a lot of people hard like them. That's so a we, great we, daily carrier. Yeah, no, it's great. And and like the price, and I'm kind of conscious of that. Um, this is my favorite. This the price is, is actually knife. not terrible on them, and so that actually makes it pretty good daily, daily knife. Like, like you don't feel goes. like, uh, you know, and it's it's kind of that same concept with the guns. Like you know, you're carrying a four thousand dollar gun, you know, and th then you have people who carry like a, a 
thousand some dollar knife. I'm actually not really a knife guy. So like to me, a knife is just a tool, just as I'm sure there's gun people who like aren't like, ah, you know, I don't care what, what gun I have. Sure. Um, I don't associate with those people, but, um, <laughs> just, I'm just playing. Um, uh, I'm so playing, but what was that 350, 400 bucks, um, 400 bucks, 400 bucks. Yeah. Yep. And then we have the Mons. We have a, we have a whole line of them. Um, that's so just, that's we, just, we, so here. they make one that has full zirconium handles and that's badass. Yeah. Such, such big words. But, well, zirconium, zirconium, like ounce by ounce, is extremely expensive because that's what they use yeah. to shield nuclear reactors from radiation yeah, and course. all that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else would we do? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's just are that's just what we do. we do. No, no yeah, yeah, we have, we we did make a meteor <laughs> knife from. And them, you're yeah. you're carrying a flipper? Is that this is actually I don't know what is that? It's yeah, a our, master our sand, our sand dream sales guy. It's like a little chub. Like the, well, doesn't okay. Have the Sandrine on so it. this thing has stayed extremely, like, ultimately sharp. That's not a knife. That's a knife. That's a knife. That's a knife. Yeah. That's 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 a, that's a great that. little pocket knife. Well, where's yeah, you can see it's, yeah, yeah. So it's like a slip joint. It's cool. Essentially, no, it's not a flipper. That's a, yeah, that's a good little box knife. It's, it's a like, great yeah, box knife. Daily. That, yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. what I. I mean, I really Slice don't use a knife for much more. Yeah. You Open know? Amazon packages. Or, right. Yeah. I feel like such a suburban knife. Right. Right. Like I'm like, gosh, yeah, I gotta pull out my knife to cut out my. No, I'm not. I, I, it's not a fighting <laughs> knife. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like you, you can do that, but what do you that's have, really that's really cool. What do you guys care? You haven't you haven't rolled out a knife in quite some time. I, I'm I'm at the old faithful man. I'm at the the big pro tech. Are you? Yeah. Folk. That is big. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not a knife. That's yeah, a knife. A that's knife. a knife. You get so that, that's, that's yeah. probably zirconium Surprising. on that finish. That's. I like that handle. Like, that is just a good smooth, looking. Just let me, let me see that. That, that mm. looks like. Yeah. That's a good looking handle. ka Oh, no. That's, a, things got that's just rose gold, like yeah, PBD. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, uh, I don't want to say brass, but it's a copper PVD. It's rose gold. He said it was rose gold. I said it was rose gold. Just yeah, it's rose yeah, gold PVD. Go, That's how they market it. it. It's abs- It's what I bought was rose gold PVD. All right. So yeah, it's absolutely. That's not rose gold. Yeah, look, at that, <clears throat> look at that unit. Now you've you bring cool. in the bangers. That's a new guy. That's really cool. You know, he only brings up knives and like presents it to see what you're carrying. Hey, does anybody else have a knife? I just it's was wanted to see what anybody else has in their pocket. <laughs> oh, well, well, if hey, we're pulling out hey, knives, hey, yeah. What, do we have what here? is that? <laughs> That's a heretic. Oh yeah, yeah. Gosh, is it cool. any chance Josh, I could look at that? Josh turned me onto that because he gifted yeah. one to me, and that Dude. was actually gifted from my mother-in-law. That's gangsters. This is gangsters. Fuck. It's a sweet knife. Yeah, a little free. automatic you just push it up. Fortieth birthday present. That's oh, a, look at that! Look at the Damascus pattern. That's that. a that's Marfione from uh, Microtech. That's yeah. his son that yeah. started this company, Heretic. Yeah. 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 Every time I see knives like this, I'm like, Hey, give me your money. You know, <laughs> go good but it, for it, you want to talk about a great, <laughs> yeah. like a great yeah. carry. Oh, that's, that's a, awesome! No, that is super cool. Little, uh, little, yeah, yeah, glass breaker. Me a little glass you, breaker. I tell you what, I, have, I, I if I had a nickel for every time I needed a glass breaker. You'd have zero uh, yeah. nickels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'd be broke. <laughs> I'm yet to yeah. have to break a piece of glass. But you never man, know. Man, when the day comes. But when the day comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hey, the day um, you'll be carrying. Real this quick. Phil's, this is the PGS. This is Phil Gerber it's special. Yeah, it's, it's got it's, it's got 250,000 miles on it. <laughs> that You know what's you know what's hilarious? So two, <laughs> so two it's, things. It's like the Toyota. When Once you hit 200,000 miles, they give you a sticker. That's what you fucking breaks in. That bottle opener looks more used than the knife itself. Yeah, they're both pretty heavily used. <laughs> that well, thing is fully patinaed because of, of real. That's not fake patina. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to pull my headphones off and just step aside to take a picture of this table. Oh, yeah. Right Look at this table. Go ahead and go ahead. <laughs> hey, real fun fact off. that y'all will appreciate. The original 1911A1 with lanyard ring, you can actually use it as a bottle opener. Yeah. So the lanyard ring, you pop the magazine like partly out, and you can pop it open on the lanyard ring. Super gangster. You strike me as a guy who can open a bottle with just about anything. Dude, you know what? How hilarious that is. Like I, he didn't, he I don't, I don't, he, I have never drank. Never had a drop. I've of never alcohol. drank. And I'm just like, hand me all of your pop offs, and I'm just like cracking them, cracking. Them. <laughs> and what? Like one day we were like out, um, out for this other company. I had my uh, Daniel Defense AR15. Um, my quad. It's a quad rail, right? And my buddy was quad cracking. rail or no rail. Yeah, absolutely. M lock is. Yeah. Was his. Um, <laughs> so I was like, he cracked up. He had a Corona or some, something, and it was a twist off too. Like I, I, I was just determined. 
And uh, I was like, give me that thing. And I laid my quad rail across my lap and popped it off the, the, on, the, on the quad rail. And I was like, here you go. And he's like, why? Why not? I could have just twisted it off. I was like, that's for quitters. <laughs> Mama didn't I figured you'd be a, like a carry handle Colt guy. I got one. How many digit serial number? Uh, well, let me rephrase. So the upper is Colt. Um, the problem with it is like at my age, I'm not at the advantage to be able to buy a lot of old Colts. Um, just because the prices are pretty insane. I say that as a market four thousand dollar guns. But um <laughs> they are pretty high. For I what do, they are, it, it's actually Yeah, it's pretty high. It's so weird. I have a they seven, are super high. I got a four digit serial number, all Colt. Yeah. I have a seven thirty three um clone on a Brownells retro lower. Um seven thirty three, if you don't know, that is the gun that was used in Heat. The best oh. movie ever. Yeah, the best gun movie. Heat's ever. a good movie. Best gun movie for all guns. You want an FAL? You got yeah, you, you got want it. a Colt? Yeah. You want a 1911? Like, do have a 1911 in it. We've got, we've got the badass FAL guys right here in town. The DS We're, Arms guys. I've got they two do, of them. They're like I've got a 10 S- minutes I've down got the road. SBR, I've got an SBR OSW, and I have a 21-inch Rhodesian. I, I guess. Just so everyone knows, like people have stopped watching this. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, 30 time. minutes ago. We're, we're just going. We're just doing our Yeah, thing. we're just hanging if they, out now. If they make it this far. <laughs> right. you know, if they hey, made it this far. It's, yeah, yeah, it's well. worth filming. You know, But I have a 21-inch FAL that's painted Rhodesian. Camouflage? Of course. Come on. Of course. Yeah, you got to have it. Yeah. We just talk about short shorts, right? right? I've got two pairs of like roadie camo short shorts. Come on now. <laughs> like that's the only reason I work my legs. It's just Tell you what, so, that so Warrior what, Camo Company, whatever, they make some like yeah. cool drops. Yeah. yeah. So when those guys in uh, South Africa were yelling like kill the boars, they're calling that him. Like it was, it was, it was him they were singing about. That's okay. I'm cool with that. I'm just, I, I own I, it. But hey, what, uh, what about, you talk about movies, we we're talking about Karn, but what's the best Gun movie. So oh, I, there's I, so many. I really think there's it's so heat, many. Though. I really <laughs> no, think no. It's heat really is because heat yeah. brings in heat brings in so FALs. Epic. It brings in AR pattern rifles. It ha- it still has the Seagal press check, which is the, oh, <laughs> which Seagal is. press check. But on, but man. oh god this damn. Right so he hates when I do this because technically I don't lawyers, hate it. No, I don't hate it at all. Hate this, but that's I'm not a, a lawyer. No, and it's super old school and a lot of. You know, I don't, don't I don't hate it at all. I just make you put that little asterisk down at the bottom. Disclaimer. There's a disclaimer. But no, he is he, the best. Was, no matter no matter what, what press checks that. That's, that's the, the, Wick, well, John the John Wick. Wick that's the John Wick. Yeah, the John Wick. John so, Wick. Yeah. So John Wick, The Matrix, all these gun movies, they don't have the range that Heat does. Or realism. Or realism. Like, have you watched what's the newest one that just on Netflix? John Wick Four. I've never. No, watched. No, 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 no. On Netflix. Netflix. Oh, extraction, good looking. Two. Extraction, oh, two. extraction two. Extraction two. Yeah. Tell me they didn't do a really good job. They, they did a great job with on sounds on both extractions. Yes. So both extractions, my son and I, we watch those. We enjoy them. But I, I've I've had him watch. So my my kids, they understand that the best movie ever is Die Hard. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah. So hundred percent. So any any yes. any any movie. That we watch that has gunplay in it, they measure it against by die, die hard. hard. Yeah, they measure it by die hard. They're like, how many nine, you know, 92s or P7s or MP5s 92s. are in it? Like, 92s, like, yeah. like, like, how many are in it? Like, well, this ain't a real gun movie if it don't got John McClane in a vent with a lighter. Ah, yep. oh, fuck. You know, Ooh. so it, it's that's that's how we measure our gun movies is based on die hard one. But that being said, Extraction 1 was very good, and Extraction 2 was also very good. The way they had the camera work around him. They did it. I, they, they did, did an they amazing did, they job. Did an amazing all, job. It seemed like all sounds were really good. and The sound work. Yeah, they did a really good job. Oh, God. Well, you, audio, the that's audio. when we had, when we had Hoot and Young guys on, yeah. the, uh, he said that you know some of his Army Ranger guys, like they helped on on that set or whatever, which made sense because... Uh, on the audio work? Yeah. The oh, well, on, the, on the gun work and how they well, did the, it. Yeah, was, the, yeah the gun, I don't want to say gun play, but like the gun play, the gun work. Like that's, yeah. that's a real big deal is to watch... When you watch a movie and you're like, I wouldn't have that light. Like I wouldn't have an enforce on my gun ever, you know? And, and yep. it, you know, it's in... Chinese or, and office. I mean, on, honestly, sounds... For, the for sound, whatever reason. The sounds make a real sounds difference. are big to me yeah. on yeah. what the sound is that things are yeah. doing and stuff like that and what it sounds like shooting yeah. and then well it's I, like when you have a Glock and someone pulls out a Glock and you hear a hammer cock. No. And you're like that that's not because it's plastic. Well, it's it's, it's a striker fired gun. It has no so hammer. it has no there is no, no hammer yeah. and yeah. there's there's no c- And talking about realism, I think a lot of people, you know, don't know if you're not into guns, like heat 
is was used the re, the retreat under fire scene when they leave the bank. Um, you know what I'm talking about like after the bank. Oh, hundred percent. Well, first of all, heat was made twice, just so everyone knows. And heat heat is good for one reason because it's when are you going to get Pacino and De Niro? Oh yeah, together. Yeah. So it's awesome. forget everything else. But it's Pacino and De Niro together. The, yes. The retreat, yeah, that, that's great. The retreat under fire scene was actually used by the Marine Corps for for years as the a way to teach them how to retreat under fire. I mean, that's a crazy cool thing. Really? And there was actually one there. they really the, as far as that goes, there's only one and I'm nitpicking so hard. Wait, what was one, Pacino's gun when he was retreating? Uh, he had an FN, F, uh, FNC. Yeah. The FNC. And that yeah. Was which fun. is a gangster gun, but it's he, a gangster gun, but he it's wouldn't a have had that gun in yeah. the position he was in, but who gives a, you know, who gives a shit, but the retreat under fire scene, there is one scene where, um, Val actually, does a reload and it's a great reload right and actually you know what i have a reproduction vest that has all the magazines on it it's gangster movie quality oh yeah i mean actually it's a little better <laughs> yeah, movie, movie quality Ooh. is like mil spec well and so Ooh. and so you know he does a reload the all and i mean from I, the vest uh yes and i am nitpicking so hard like just being just being a gun guy when you reload on ar-15 you do it with your thumb up and you'll hit the the uh, uh -huh. the button uh -huh. right but he actually reloads and then slaps aside which works and a lot of people hap happen to do it but it's just not the correct way but i also if i was getting shot at by like all of lapd i would he, slap he, it he comes up and slaps yeah yeah so he mm -hmm. he's got it up he reloads and then he slaps aside which is very like of that time period right like you got to think this gun yeah. this movie came out before a lot of modern gun fighting really took yeah, that, that, this was the this was the quintessential gun fighting yeah movie it, i mean it, it, yeah it, it, it changed from the 90s, everything it, it changed cinematography yeah it changed epic epic, epic yeah. movie. That, that was that's the movie. you're gonna have to give heat a heat a watch it, it is long but we're, we're totally worth i feel it. like i've seen it but for me it's war dogs when <laughs> dude, <laughs> when he go, go when he goes when, when he goes back, yeah. he goes back to the 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 the, the trunk yeah. Like, you're, brr, yeah. Hey, you cool now, a, homie? Yeah, Where are you going? Right. Where are you that going? Yeah. yeah, that shit's that's a, yeah. it, Honestly, that is a great fucking movie for so many reasons because yeah. they do get technical enough when they're talking about, you know, two million rounds or however many rounds. Yeah. I mean, and they buy that shitty ass that's like fucking 762 ammo that's all. What 762 by 39 isn't shitty? Yet. Oh, right. God. AK 47s are awful. Man. They're, they're I mean, they're terrible. They work, but it's a tool. Are, but it's a tool. 100%. It, it, you don't, it, it, you don't have one no, just in case? Exactly. Fucking yeah. No, that's not an American gun. It's not. It, uh, you got to fucking have it. You have to have it because when, if, if shit yeah. goes down, you uh -huh. better be ready. Hey, you know what's Pick funny? up them drop mags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually said something about that in a gun store. Like, and I did my, I broke my golden rule by actually talking about guns in a gun store. Um, and I was with Pops when he was picking up that mil spec. And uh, I said something about an AK, and they were like, well, you know, you got to have them. And I was like, well, here's the deal. <laughs> They're 762, and most of our enemies use 545, and they really don't use 762 anymore. So if that was the case, I would actually need an AK 74 or variant, and I don't have that. I have two AK 47s, so they're kind of useless. China uses 545 now? I think they, I don't, I, I don't know if the Chinese I, do, but I know almost every other company that, or company, uh, yes. a country that adopted the uh, AK platform has moved to 545. It wouldn't surprise me if the Chinese have, but they're kind of weird about, like, you know, what we know about them as far as so, civilians. No, the, the Chinese like to copy our shit, but like try to make it look like they're not copying it. So, well, yeah, yeah. I see the Chinese coming up with all MP7s. That's just nothing yeah. but MP7s. In the heat of battle, you got to grab an AR and AK. What are you grabbing? AR-15. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, and then the AR-15 is really not my favorite rifle either. It's just it is the combat rifle. It like, is my favorite. It, yeah, but it's the combat rifle though. Like if you had to pick a combat rifle, that that's it. So so it's a weapon of war. Is yes, what well, you're saying. I mean, yes, it is. Fuck, yeah, it, it is. That's it, exactly it is. what it it's, is. It's a weapon. Yeah. Of it was war designed and, for it. And the Second Amendment was designed for us as individuals to be able to own weapons of war to make sure that we can overthrow our government when and if we need to. They had war. They had civilian-owned warships. They had civilian-owned cannons. Yeah. yeah, like there's warships. There's, there's, yeah. There's, that's like me owning the USS North Carolina, which I have tried to buy. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Like we put putting a big. Check. You imagine yeah, the USS big North check, yeah. Carolina with the three on it. Hey, the and, big, and oh, the, big and my, the big the big Dale or three. I paint it like do my low rider. Oh. I paint it like my low rider with some metal flake. 
And some hey. scouts. It's like I say, hey, can you can you pinstripe a battleship? I bet you Junior would love that. Oh, if you yeah. bought the USS North Carolina, put a big, big three on three. it, and the front Damn flamed. Right. Mm. Imagine sending that fucker into World War Three. <laughs> <They'd be scared. laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know. We're the best country's ever ever seen a lot of that. Talk about Intimidator. You roll up at that. <laughs> oh, the Intimidator. <laughs> yeah, with a big old hologram of fucking Dale Sr. On the hook. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's like the Those pirate ships. Had, yeah, damn. it's like the pirate ships that had the the uh, mermaids in the front. I've yeah. just got yeah. a big ass Dale. picture. Dale. Dale. I mean, yeah. come on. Have you seen yeah. the bus He's right epic, there? dude. Like, yeah, the, the mustache. Yeah. Look, right here. Like, yeah, I saw it. I, think I saw would, it when I walked I in. I think they would Did you pray to him, though? I did. Oh, they'd be like, we don't, no moss. No moss. <laughs> All right, fellas. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, <laughs> dude, we went way. I apologize, yeah, we, yeah, dude. You're you're fucking fine. I think we're gonna go to the hit. We gotta leave early so we can hit the range. Well, wait. You gotta hit this because we. Oh, we do have. We, we didn't did. do the whiskey review the last yeah, time. We did. We skipped it. And so we this old this Forester. Game. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Dude, we've saved this old Forester all through season one. It's been sitting in the corner of the collection amongst the high end bourbons. Uh, that's a Dave Garfield. Uh, Supplied from uh, Garfield's Beverage Warehouse and Liquor Emporium. Fucking A, you hit it. Yeah, bam. Nailed right, it. Right out of the gate. That is a super rare Old Forester 150th anniversary batch proof. Josh said you wanted high proof. I like barrel proof. 126.5. So it's, it's almost it. there. Fire. I loved it. That yeah. is that is awesome. That has a that has a great nose. And the finish on it, like I've, I've drank a lot of it, so I don't really remember the finish. But like I'm going to say... <laughs> What I remember of what I remember of the finish. No, it's it's a good, long, sustainable, enjoyable finish. It's got legs. It's got some well, viscosity. Well, because sometimes you get finishes that are only based on the proof. Mm -hmm. And this ain't based on the proof. This is based on flavor. the flavor. The flavor profile sticks with you. It does. That's some good shit right yeah. there. It's good shit. Yeah. Dude, the scent hits you. You don't <laughs> want to hear the response. Oh, you know you're drinking. Well, you know this refreshy man. water. You know it's just got a real. It's got a real <laughs> batch taste. You know, it, and the arms on this thing. You know, are just, the arms on it. <laughs> are just out of this world. You know, I really the nose is just perfect. The finish. Uh, it finished quick, um, much like myself. And, uh, you know, I just, I really think this batch proof, I'm so glad you saved this Finish for se quick. season one uh, because this this batch is just phenomenal. They're very, very <laughs> stiff water. Dude, I'll tell you What this. do you give it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, say this right now because what are you if you're looking me? to procure yourself a bottle of this. Can't. I scored a bottle of that when it first came out for retail. Mm -hmm. And retail was what, 120 Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a hundred and twenty dollar so bottle of holy so, shit. So but if you I try to buy that, that bottle right now. Well, it's it's probably five hundred on the second on the market. on the interweb, it's yeah. between eight ninety nine. Oh well, Jesus between, Christ. Between six hundred and eight ninety nine. Holy shit. It's yeah. Aren't you glad I brought you? You got to drink expensive whiskey. It's not <laughs> but at the same time, it's not. That's the thing about whiskey. Yeah, it's, 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 it's worth that on the secondary right. market. And it's it's enjoyable. It's super it's like, enjoyable. It's a it's a very easy drink. Right. But very you, easy but drink. It, is it worth anything over 200 bucks? Yes. No. Well, I wouldn't yes. pay over 200 bucks. I wouldn't pay over 200 bucks. No. But is it worth over 200 bucks? Maybe. Yes. Because okay. there's somebody out here who has no. paid over 200 bucks and it's totally worth that shit. <laughs> but like, I wouldn't pay that. No. Zero to ten. What's your what's your I'm number? It eight oh. Yeah. Oh fuck! That was what I was. Yeah, I liked All it. Right. I liked it quite a bit. I liked it. For Bill, proof. I'm going seven five. Oh, was a little little burn for me on the backside. I'm going eight oh as well. Nick, what are you giving it? Uh, no, that's a that's a nine. And and the reason I'm saying it's a nine. Ooh. No, Ooh. The reason, no, the Ooh. reason. Fan. No, the reason I'm saying it's a nine is because a lot of things on the back end, like they're relying on the burn of the proof to make that happen. And the proof is good. But it wasn't about the proof. Like there was a lot of like, there was a lot of honey notes on the nose. Like there was a lot of things that made this a very interesting bottle that I would just drink all day long. Y'all are using English. I I know that y'all are using English. I promise y'all <laughs> don't have a clue what you're well, saying. Now you're right, dude. It's got. I mean, it's got so much flavor. It's got a lot of flavor. Got a lot of honey notes on the nose, and and the the finish is not based on proof at all. I've had a lot of things that are proof based that give you a long finish you're like oh this is really good and you're like you're going that fucking sucks yeah. but like you're you're thinking it's good just because it has a lot of burn for a long time that doesn't have that that's a that's a great bottle like what'd you what'd you think of this binder stash i i don't rate that as high because it's yeah. okay i'm with you man it's 
it, it just doesn't have it doesn't have the legs. It doesn't have as much complexity. I have, what does that mean? The legs. I mean, it's a bottle of whiskey. Visc- the legs. viscosity, yeah. the yeah, thickness yeah, in yeah, your yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the it, thickness. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. linger. Yeah. Yeah. Are you wanting more thick? Yeah. Are you? Is the thickness? A I'm positive telling you what. You, thing? <laughs> thickness in your mouth is always a positive thing. When it comes that's, to whiskey, that's what she I, said. I couldn't get past the cinnamon notes. Yeah, it, I like no, it. No, no. See, that's the I thing. Really like, I, I like it, but I don't like it as much, even yeah. close. Like that's a that's a six. Yeah. That's a six. That's a that's a nine. Eight point five nine. Yeah, you could tell that's that's a much more sophisticated. Yes. Sophisticated. Sophisticated. Good stuff. All right, Cabot. Go ahead, give us a website. I can't do it. You're going to have to do Cabot it. It's cabotguns.com. I don't even know how long we've been here. And what about Alchemy? Alchemy1911.com. Alchemy. And what about Instagram? Same. Yeah. Check it out. Just delete.com. And then 1776. 1776 underscore duck. If you, if, you, if you go there, you're going to look at short That's shorts and like, you know, full and on. 1911. Yeah. Don't sell it too hard. Dude, that was the one that sold me on the brand. I Well, y'all got yourselves a little Thank bit you. of a <laughs> man crush. <laughs> I, yeah. Thanks for listening to Oil & Whiskey Podcast with the Roadster Shop and Ironclad Original. If you like the show, be sure to leave us a rating review, but let's face it, three hours in, you ain't listening anyway. Jesus this Christ. Is great. That is great. Yeah, if, if, if you are here, I will give you a discount code. Email me. Oh, Nick. yeah. For no, 10 cents. No, I, no, no I, I, will, I will do something. Nick, N-I-C-K, at cabotguns.com. You know, reference the Roadster Shop. If you've gotten this long, you fucking deserve something. Yeah, yeah and, you so, in there. and if you want an alchemy, if you want an alchemy, it... Email, Eli, email, Eli. Eli at gmail.com. No, I'm just going to give him a fake not, email. Just, you ain't going to get shit. <laughs> it's Eli, E-L-I at cabotguns.com, but it, I do the alchemy side. So, you know, hey, we'll do that. I'm, I'm actually was wanted to ask you because you're a boss, right? If we could do that. But I well, think we, as a reward for people for sitting people sitting bullshit. For three sitting here. hours. If, yeah. if someone has made it this long, Jesus Christ. Yeah, email me, reference the Roadster Shop, and tell me what your favorite car is. Let's do it. If it's foreign, though, you're not getting the discount. <laughs> I promise. If you, if you tell me a foreign car, you're out. Holy shit. Desk pop. <laughs> All right. We'll see you again next week.